I am ready. Come on. Okay, okay. Starting. Uh, okay. Are you ready? We shall start. Yeah. Hello, hello. How are you? We start, we load, and we go. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna do a short stream and then I'm gonna go to the clinic because there's still a lot to do when it comes to the... Okay, I forgot what I was supposed to do. Mm. Oh, I remember now, maybe. I think. Okay, let's go use the tent. Come on! Okay, okay. <laughs> Alright, nice. Okay, we do save. And then we go to the ship. Let's go. <gasps> Where are we? Where is this place? Can I fall? No. Uh, some more. Alright. Destroy! Yeah, yeah, yeah! It's me! It's me! Come on! We do Final Fantasy for today. Maybe I will react to something. Really? How are you today? How is everybody? Maybe after this, I take a bath. And that bath. Look at this. Do you like Final Fantasy V? <gasps> okay, let's go here. A lot of random encounters in this game. But I have the good job, so it's okay. Aim. Sing. Uh-huh. Hungry? Eat their breakfast. Maybe we could do like a history thing. Some more? What is this? What happened? It's Final Fantasy. Hello, Brina. Hello. Booster. Come on. Boosters are good. All right. Let's go here. Oh, invisible. Invisible. Are you seeing this? Uh, what is the ability? What job has it? Tell me. Tell me. I don't know where the ability is. I don't know. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Don't 
please respect me. Oh, programmer, it's okay, it's okay then. Okay, let's go. Mm. But I ate my bar now, so... I might have to... Change the job to Black Mage again. Invisible! Destroy you! Ah, okay. Golden armor! Who can use? Can you? Can you? <gasps> ah, golden armor! Come on! The brute! This is Final Fantasy V, yeah. It's true. Um, let me see. Where is the... This is like a maze. Amazing. Where do I go now? Same. Cura. Alright. Some more. Yeah. Play Final Fantasy 14 and 11. Final Fantasy 11 and 14 have job systems, okay? Come on! Actually, Final Fantasy 11 has almost exactly this job system. You can combine jobs in Final Fantasy XI. You know? Did you know this? Did you know my dark secrets? <coughs> what can I do for you? What can I do for you? He's like this. I destroy my enemies. This is the perfect opportunity for us to chat, chat. So if you have any questions for the Daki, I will answer all the quacky questions, okay? Kura! Let's see what answer to all of your questions now. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? And if you want, I can react to some recent content. If you want me to do a reaction, then tell me and I will. I will do an analysis. It's true. Would you like to see me analyze the thing? Some more? Wait a minute. Um. All right. Where is the? Mm. Oh. I don't see. Wait, what happened? Oh, here. Okay. Um, I don't know. What has been happening recently in the drama thing? Is there being something exciting going on?
บูตส์ได้บูตส์ถูกไหมบูตส์เดซิร์ฟส์ตัวได้บูตส์จะเป็นเวอร์ยูเดซิร์ฟตัวได้บูตส์มั้งไทม์แมจจีเลเวลสิสเลเวลสิสไทม์แมจจีเลเวลสิสเอ็มดิฉันรู้ว่าเด็กว้าวนั่นสุดที่น่าสนใจพอลันก็ใช้เทคส์ดัตพอลันเทคส์ส์ดิฟเฟอร์นซ์สตาดิจิพอลันเซ็ตดัตเดอร์เอเรียนพอลันเซ็ตดัตเดอร์เอเรียนยูเนียนลอว์ส์อาร์อันคอนสติทูชันัลโอเค The s a n t i s If you have something interesting for me to comment on, then you should like DM it to me or link it to me. You should do it. You know. You should do this. Let's do this. And we will have a grand time. Hi. Um. Do you are you on the giggle card? Are you not on the Giggle card? Are you not on my Discord? Run away! Chiki 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 chiki. Come on! All right. Um. Whoa. DM me the drama. You're not on the Giga Car? I cannot believe you. Join it. Come on. Join the Giga Car. I have to pause and I have to give you the link. Come on. Me. This card is here. <gasps> you are in pain. Can you come on? Don't be in pain. It is forbidden. Pain is forbidden. Pain is bad. Yes, a mom. Let me. Let me see. Let me see. Oh no, I miss. Okay. All right. So. As we are on our crusade to defeat every single Final Fantasy game in existence, 
I am also looking for content to react to. I think I've got a few candidates. Let me see. Let us turn on the browser while we're like uh, watching. What is the? I might as well show you my Instagram. This is my Instagram with my artwork on it. Do you like my Instagram? Do you like the Lucy has a experience? on the Instagram but now we go to YouTube the Mick hey team and we make the game a little bit less loud and then we go and go to the main page on YouTube this is me Why does everybody do manifesto lately? Everybody just does manifestos lately. Have you noticed? And we're going to react to Demon Mama because I heard that reaction streams are great for everybody all around. So they're going to be great for me, they're going to be great for Mama, and they're going to allow us to grow into big, 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 big glass. Come on. Are you ready? You have proposed this to me. Donald Trump calls for the end of the Constitution. Pierogi! Yeah, you should eat pierogi. Pierogi are really nice. My lovely, lovely imps. Hello. Donald Trump. Hello, mother. You should all go and... Well, I know you are all already, like... Um, I subscribe, but, you know, yeah, I will link it anyway, you know? You should all be... Dime Mama is the uh, imps. Trump. Yeah! Yeah! Whoa! Yeah. There you go. That's the segment. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's not the segment. Donald Trump uh, oh is gosh. probably going to run for president almost assuredly in 2024. He already announced that he would be running for president uh, under a very strange uh, new... Uh, Slogan? Yeah, <laughs> slogan. New slogan for mm -hmm. Donald Trump 2024. What is it? Is make America great and glorious again. Oh, you see? Oh, my that God. That seems kind of off-brand for Donald Trump. It seems cringe. Uh, it, first of all, it's not really off-brand for Donald Trump, but it is a little bit weird. It's Donald cringe. Trump uh, has always been like the business type. He's always been like, you yes. know, America business. I'm a businessman. American businesses. Well, that ship has they're sailed. They're stealing our, they're taking our jobs. They're shipping them to China. You know, he's been doing all that stuff. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, that has That's not worked sort of out, so. Um, but he's decided now, and this has been going on for a while. He's been slowly creeping, uh, increasingly, I'm just going to be blunt, white nationalist rhetoric. Uh, directly into his speeches. Um, some of you will recall that earlier this year we were reacting to uh, uh, some of his earlier speeches. Um, he... The funny thing is, despite it all, if Trump and DeSantis debate, Trump will make him cry because he's better at being mean. <laughs> oh, no. He does a lot of speeches, and only a few of them actually oh, no. get enough attention um, that they become relevant. And one of the ones that we were reacting to, which was one of his biggest crowds, was him just straight up going on about how, uh, how 
the left and LGBTQ people and immigrants have stolen the bright future from the children. Oh my uh, gosh. From the, the, you know, from the good, proper American children, which is white nationalist rhetoric. It is. This is so ridiculous, but of course, like it's a thing that, like I always say, this is a thing that inevitably comes from the nation state rhetoric, okay? Creating the one proper nation. And everybody is that not that does not fit the criteria of being part of the nation becomes an outsider, an enemy, something that needs to be gotten rid of in order to make the nation pure. This is just like the natural rhetoric of the nation state, which is why I am not a big fan of the nation state. It has one too many words. Make America great and glorious rolls of the tongue much better than make America great and glorious again. I wish, I wish people would stop pretending that investing in the same as being good at running a company. Right. And also, like, people should really realize that those things, rabid nationalism, this sort of exclusion, I would even um, argue that white nationalism, those are all natural, logical conclusions of the nation-state project, okay? We will make whole videos about that topic. And now, you know? his official motto is make America great and glorious again. Right. This is very minor. It's a very minor change in comparison to what we are about to talk about but I think it's important to take note of. I think it's important to notice even small changes in the way that Donald Trump is is pitching himself yeah. to uh, his base. And one of the things that has been most consistent in Donald Trump's uh, current campaigning and his current planning for the future is that he's leaning more and more on blood and soil. He's leaning more and more on explicit white nationalism. And he's even starting to lean... So basically, people are, as I call it, 19th century brained because, of course, all of these ideas are basically inventions of the 19th century. It's not something that existed before. Lean into explicit Blood and fascism. Soil. Some people are going to hear me say that and they're going to roll their eyes, but... I would like you to, uh, if you're one of those people who hears that and goes, ah, come on, wait a second and see what I'm talking about I won't. and hear my case first, for real. Um, it is, uh, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the actual reason we're here today. We're not here to talk about MAGA, -ga, I guess, make America glorious and great again or whatever. Like, this is... Exactly. Patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel. Actually, patriotism, this is actually very interesting because patriotism and nationalism, uh, as much as people would li like you to believe this, nationalism and patriotism are actually not the same thing, if that makes sense. Would you like me to explain? Like, uh, for example, in the past during the country that I focus on mostly during my um, history endeavor, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the patriotism came from belonging to a certain class because it was a class-based society. But during that time, you still had basically free movements between the country. So people could move into from country to country uh, freely they were not super closed borders because super closed borders are also inventions of the nation state because in order to uh, keep the nation quote unquote pure you had to really start controlling the borders of a country okay and nationalism is very tied to the notions of nation and nation-state. Nationalism will glorify the idea of, well, a nation. There are many, like, 
From 19th century onwards, first of all, history has been rewritten in order to make a narrative of all countries, quote-unquote, naturally heading towards creating a nation-state, which is false. And second of all, many cultural events have been tailored in order to fit the nation-state narrative. Take note every time, any time when you use language like we have defeated France in the game of, you have defeated us, etc. When it comes to sports events, this is nothing more than nation-state language. We, the nation, have defeated your nation in the game of football, etc. Does that make sense? Like, it might be subtle, but functionally, it is what it is. That is what it is, you know? Does that make sense? This is how we sort of unintentionally take part in those sort of systems. Does that make... Am I making sense to you? Do you understand? My emotions? Um, though that's an important thing to notice. We're not here to talk about the yay stuff, although that's certainly a part of it. What we're here to talk about is something that just happened earlier today. If you are watching this live, um, this happened uh, approximately... Let me just see here. Let me get the exact time. Four hours ago. Four hours ago was when this stuff started uh, with, let's see, uh, another tweet having been made about 12 hours ago earlier this morning. And uh, It is innocuous, though, but keep in mind uh, why you use language such as we defeated you when talking about uh, teams that represent nations, you know? Or I should say not a tweet. It's, a, it's on Truth Social. It's the same thing. It's all part of creating a narrative in which nations are the natural way of things, in which nations have basically existed since forever, you know? It creates... It is a deliberately done thing to make people basically believe that nations were a thing uh, since forever, basically. And that is what people believe. People believe that nations uh, and nation states are mm, basically things that are the natural state of the world. Keep in mind, for example, like when political creators such as Baram Penada, because they have been um, I have had interactions with Baram Panada lately, um, says things like, critiques a demon mama video and says that she dislikes nation states and he says that her alternative must be anarchism and no state, which means that he is finding it difficult to imagine any form of a state that would not be a nation state. Boots deserves to die. Boots. Boots deserves to die because he has a silly name. So yeah. People think that the alternative to the nation state is no state at all. Which is of course incorrect. Does that make sense? So yeah. Let's take a look at it, shall we? This was the first one, okay? Donald Trump on Truth Social this morning uh, uh, about uh, at, at 4 a.m. Apparently he's an early riser. This is what he tweeted, okay? So, with the revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception... Between the, between the jokes and the strange comments... I do see the actual arguments and I do notice what they sort of tell me about the people that make them, okay? It 
It is, but um, I would say that's a, that's a separate argument. Like wanting no state is a bit of a separate argument because you can want no state, but it is important to understand that there are other forms of state than the nation state, that it's not a binary choice between a no state and a nation state, you know? Even if we want to get rid of the state altogether, I think it is important to understand what our options actually are, you know? In working closely with big tech companies and the DNC, the Democratic Party, do you, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner, or do you have a new election? A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and there articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our great founders did not want and would not condone I see. a false and fraudulent election. Or, sorry, false and fraudulent elections. I see. And then he followed it up with this. He tweeted, retweeted a couple of things. The world is laughing at the United States of America and its corrupt and rigged presidential election of 2020. No. Unprecedented Maybe Poland, but... requires an unprecedented cure. Wow. Shouldn't he be in jail or something? For the January 6th? Now, all of us know that Donald Trump has been uh, whining and complaining about uh, the fact... Are you maybe speaking of like uh, something like a uh, land of fire? Konoha Gakure? Yeah, it's true. We should all be go for a ninja academy. ...that he lost the election in 2020. And when I say that he lost the election in 2020... Uh, I say this from the position of a leftist, okay? I am not a big fan of American electoral democracy, quote-unquote. I think that True. American electoral democracy electoral, is current form. Electoral college is cringe. The interests of the most rich. Electoral college is so cringe. It's like really bad. Citizens United is a perfect example of this. So keep in mind, I am not some kind of liberal, soy-facing, you know, oh my god, right. elections are so poggers. I know there's... Also keep in mind that Poland, for example, has a thing called... Um, uh, Poland has a thing called electoral silence period. Do you know what it is? Do you know what the electoral silence period is? Press right yes or no if you know what the electoral silence period is. Electoral silence period means that on the day of the voting itself, it is forbidden to do any form of propagandizing, any form of um, campaigning. You cannot talk about it. You cannot. It's just about voting that day. You cannot try to persuade people anymore uh, in any way. You cannot try to persuade people's vote in any way during that period, okay? It is forbidden by law. Hence, it is called the silence period, okay? Someone's calling me. I will be right back, okay? I will be right back and then we'll continue, okay? My mom is probably calling me from the clinic. I will be right back.
Okay, there you go. I am back. Mom called me. Yeah. So we have like this silence period that you cannot try to persuade anyone to vote in a thing. Like during that day, during that silence period, the assumption is that people have made their mind uh, on who to vote for, okay? There was a long time of, um, you know, uh, campaigning, etc. So people have made their mind. Today people just want to vote on the people that they have already decided on and that they cannot be pestered and tried to vote otherwise. But then again, the Polish government is trying to... I don't think there are limits. I, could, I, would, I need to look that up, but I don't think there are limits. Like... Poland is actually trying to pass a very dangerous law about voting, okay? Like, the Polish far-right government wants to create a law in which there would be a special commission that would read every single individual vote and the, com the commission would know who the vote is for. That's the crucial part. Uh, they would read the vote and read who, it, who it's for and then the commission would decide if the vote is valid or not. And I think you can see why this sort of law is very, very dangerous there's problems with the american election electoral system okay but none of the things that donald trump is claiming is you know? wrong with the electoral system are things that are actually wrong with the electoral system you see donald trump just lost no ifs ands or buts about it he got creamed and not only did he just get creamed, get creamed. he took it to court he took it to court literally dozens of times and he got creamed there too because it turns out that oh, all no. of the things that he's been claiming about the election fraud are just made up. There is no evidence of any of the things that he was talking about. And this is an important distinction to be made because there is tons and tons and tons of room to be criticizing the democratic process in the United States. Right. It's very, very... Electoral college is like... There is a, a decent amount of corruption involved. In the I think the Electoral College is like one of the bigger offenders, right? ...democratic process in the United States. However, what Donald Trump is claiming is that there was a secret conspiracy by unknown deep state agents to fake the election so that Donald Trump, the true of president, course. would lose. It is an insane conspiracy theory, and it does only one thing, which is undermine any sort of legitimacy of the currently existing apparatus in Donald Trump's favor. It's not an actual critique. Yeah. It's not for the people. Yeah, of it course. It's simply a, uh, a, a, a mind-bogglingly large lie that is being pushed forward so that Donald Trump can create a reality in which he is the God Emperor. Yeah. And he's going even harder. Donald Trump has been not surprising this fraud for a long time. He's gotten clapped on it, like I just said. But now he's actively advocating for unprecedented cures. I want us to read this one last time just so that right. we can take in everything that he's saying here. One more time. Unprecedented cures. So with the cures. revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception in working closely with big tech companies, the DNC and the Democratic Party, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner? Or do you have a new election? A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our great founders did not want and would not condone false and fraudulent elections. Donald Trump. This is actually very interesting. That always happens within the U.S. politics, you know? It is not hard to notice that Donald Trump is also invoking the mythos of the founding found, founding fathers. This is like something that is often done in the U.S. politics, I've noticed. The mythos of the founding fathers, saying what they would have wanted, what they would have done, even though their situation was totally different, 
they are interesting as like historical figures. We can learn something from their mistakes. But saying, like trying to take what they would want then and to apply it to now is very strange. It's sort of like a mythological, um, you know, genesis legend of the country, of those uh, ubermensch that people should always listen to, always think about what they would do, etc. You know? Like, they did some bad things as well, no? Like, they did some things that we would not want to be implemented right now as well, no? Is signaling directly into the ears of his supporters that none of it matters. None of the rules, none of the regulations, none of the constitution matters. You got cheated. It's just about power now. That's why I said that he's been leaning into explicitly It's always been just about rhetoric. power. Fascists are strong believers in the idea that might makes right. Fascism is about the power of those who have strength and the weakness of those who do not have strength. Ew, ew, yes. True. That's what fascism is all about. Donald Trump is giving a blanket, no mask on, no couched, dissolve the constitution if necessary, I must be your leader. The, the, the founders desire, would, the founders would be on my side. You should terminate and ignore all laws, all articles, and even the constitution because you've been stolen from. And this is an unbelievable acceleration in rhetoric. Laughing, I'm laughing at all the constitutionalists that support Trump right now. They were never constitutionalists. They only use the Constitution insofar as it helps them jockey for power. This is something that is, um, that is sort of part and parcel of conservatism. Because conservatives have such a deep-seated belief that might makes right, um, they don't respect, uh, they don't respect agreements, they don't respect, uh, rule of law. Not that I particularly yeah. think there's incredible value in rule of law, but they might claim to. They do all the time. Republicans claim to be all about law and order. They claim to be, oh, my Second Amendment, the Constitution, I got my pocket Constitution. They will throw it away the literal moment that it becomes convenient because what they yeah, of really course. believe in, deep down, what they really believe in is that God wants them to be in power. True. And yes, this is true even for secular right-wingers. Secular right-wingers, you'll notice that they always hang out with a bunch of Christian fundamentalists. We saw that ourselves watching... Secular right-wingers will replace God with nature, basically. They will say that is the nature of the world, that it's human nature. Like, to a secular right-winger, human nature is their God. That's the truth, you know? They will just repeat it like a mantra. It is what it is. It is human nature. It is natural for this to be like this. You know? It is natural for the strong to rule the weak. It is that, etc., etc. In nature, um, survival of the fittest, etc. You know? Yay, pray, and all of that stuff in the presence of a bunch of, of a completely mixed bag of people on uh, Alex Jones who have varying degrees of devotion to Christianity. Um, it, even secular right-wingers ultimately do believe that there is some sort of, uh, whether it's a cultural or Human a legal nature. or, a, uh, or a, um, a philosophical call to power, that their way of being is the way that should rule the whole world, yep. that they are the rightful hierarchs. They should be on the top. And it, again, it's especially strong in Christianity. I've talked on this channel recently a lot about the rise of Christian nationalism and how uh, uh, these, these fundamentalists... And even if they won't talk about human nature, they will talk about the Judeo-Christian values, you know? They will speak in those terms that they may not believe in the religion aspect, but they do believe that the 
Judeo-Christian values are, like the best values or something. They will speak of the culture. So it's always something like that. Christian beliefs. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's are, true. Are, are, are sort of teeing the entire Republican Party up uh, to it's true. essentially have a holy war. And that's what we're looking at today. Donald Trump going whole hog. Now, I've been talking about in the last few weeks, basically constantly, the idea that the right is accelerating its rhetoric. And I think this is the this is the the real nail in the coffin for that uh, uh, for anybody who is disagreeing with me on that. Um, some people have been saying, "Nah, right wingers are right wingers are always really loud. They're always really dramatic," and that is true. They are always very loud and they are always very dramatic. But the types of rhetoric that they choose to employ is very telling. Conservatives uh, are. Let's talk about far the far right, the most far right people. The oh, most yeah. far right people use a term called mask on. They say, oh, you got to you got to go mask off sometimes. You got to put your mask on. You need to. Some people know, have heard this term hide your power level. It's incredibly common on the far right. And the reason for this is because they they correctly conclude that um, that people won't like them True. if they come out and say what they really believe. This is deeply, deeply entrenched. I don't like the term either. And belief. Um, however, once they become convinced that they are safe enough doing so, they will peel off the mask. They will reveal their power level. Donald Trump is doing literally exactly that. Unprecedented fraud requires unprecedented cure. What do you all think he means by unprecedented cure? Especially when he just said... That his followers well, he said it above. To terminate all laws, articles, and even portions. He already of the stated it outright. So long as it puts him in power. Donald Trump is calling for a right-wing revolution. True. Right now. Come on, I, hello, Shakespeare. I want you to notice that it comes after an absolutely insane acceleration of anti-LGBT rhetoric. True. A absurd worldwide news breaking uh 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 uh, uh acceleration of anti-semitic rhetoric we just watched the video is going to be up tomorrow for uh any of you who are subscribers on the channel please make sure you go check it out it's really important that we keep our eyes on this but uh we're just about to publish my live reaction to the yay alex jones nick fuentes conversation which was viewed by True. millions of people the biggest platform that most of these people have ever seen in their lives and all across social media we have been seeing a unbelievable uptick in anti-trans rhetoric in anti-semitic rhetoric and in racist rhetoric i am talking the acceleration is unbelievable it's showing up in my comments it's showing up uh, all over social media. I, I even, oh my God, I even saved an article that talks about exactly this, that dives in and analyzes the rise in hate speech on across all of social media right now. There is an activation happening. And this is the, the and it loudest will, ultimate. And it will spill all over the world. Like already the Polish far-right government has been openly um, copying what the U.S. far right is doing, the Polish president during his campaign visited Trump. The Polish government has openly spoken about the um, election being stolen and how weak Biden is. To make a confirmation of exactly what I'm talking about, Donald Trump is the most important cultural uh, figure on the entirety of the right. He is their god emperor. You guys know what it was like to live through fucking 2016 Somebody. to 2020 under Donald Trump. How unbelievable the personality cult is. And this guy is now saying it's time to dissolve or it's time to consider terminating the constitution. I don't know how to tell you that that's literally exactly Weimar, Germany. Oh my gosh. Maybe I said that wrong. Weimar. Weimar? Weimar. He did? When? When was it's it? It's the same shit. 
Yeah. When did that happen? Do you mean the newest one? Because there was like a really fascistic uh, pride, white pride march this year. Extremely fascistic. Did it happen this year? Like the Molly New crying tears of joy, etc. That's cringe. He had a failed coup attempt, just like Hitler had a failed uh, a coup attempt with the beer hall putsch. True. And now there is an explicit call to overthrow the system and reinstate Donald Trump as president. Now, a lot of conservatives are just going to sit there and stand by. And they're just going to basically be, you know, sandbags. They're basically going to be, you know, human sandbags, which is all that they need. You know, they only need they only need people to obfuscate because yeah. they have a core. The right has a core of people, whether it's the three percenters, the proud boys, whether it's these uh, the Patriot prayer, the Patriot front, uh, all of these. And it's very similar in Poland, mind you. This is very similar in Poland. These these plethora of right wing, far right militias, extremist militias that explode. Like, the U.S. has the Proud Boys, Poland has the Polish Youth. Yes, it's literally called the Polish Youth. You know? ...want and would not condone false and fraudulent elections. Donald Trump is signaling directly into the ears of his supporters that none of it matters. On ...across all of social media right now. There is an activation happening. A stream. Uh, uh, we watched him go, all right, everybody, now, uh, I'm gonna need you all to go and get together, your wonderful people, and let's march it on down to the Capitol and show them what's what. Yeah. And then it happened. That's what he's trying to do right now. Now, to be fair, this is on Truth Social. So... This is not going to be picked up by the majority of his followers. Although I will say there's a lot of eyes on it. Truth yeah. Social is not a big website. And it got almost 10,000 retweets. But the popular media will pick it up and they will spread it, you know. And almost 30,000 likes. This is what Trump is counting on, Truth on. Social. And Truth Social is not exactly the biggest platform. But keep in mind that this is only the first wave. This True. is, an, this is a, a signal of what he's going to start doing on television, on what he's going to start doing yeah. in his speeches. This is him sending out to his most loyal followers, his followers on his literally custom-made uh, uh, Twitter clone. This video shows what you were saying about these people is 100% correct. Let's take a look here. A prayer declaration? Flashpoint Live. The Watchman Decree. All right, yeah, you know what? I don't know what this is. Let's react to it. Let's see. Oh, reaction to a reaction. A prayer declaration. Let's take a look here. Let's get some info about this. Flashpoint Live in Atlanta, Georgia. The Watchmen. Okay, the, I know the Watchmen. Aren't these people a... Uh, this is like a, a militia, right? Let me double check on this. Okay, so this is a Republican... This is a Republican uh, 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 gathering. Oh, shit. This got crazy views. Holy shit. Looking on Twitter, this went crazy on Twitter. All right, let's watch this. Let's react to this. Let's see. All right, go ahead. All right, Dutch, lead us. So we'll read it together, okay? As a patriot of faith. I'm oh my gosh. My this is like prayer. And foremost to the Literally prayer. And the Great Commission. Oh. Secondly, I agree to be a watchman over our nation concerning its people and their rights for life, liberty, and the... This is literally like a prayer. Whereas we, the church, are God's governing body on the earth. Oh my gosh. Are they praying? I said Christian nationalism is on the rise? I wasn't... Yeah. Kidding. I've been talking about this for a really long time. It's huge. Let's continue. Whereas we have been given legal power from heaven... From I heaven. literally just said that. <laughs> Literal power. Oh my gosh. From heaven. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sending me this, uh, this fucking Republican event. 
I was just talking about how oh, we're from even heaven. secular Republicans buy into the idea that they have been given power from above. Whether they literally believe in God or whether God is just a useful tool for them, that's what they believe. They are telling you. And now exercise our authority, whereas we are God's ambassadors and spokespeople over the earth, whereas through the power of God, we are the world influencers, whereas... The world influencers? What? Because of our agreement with God, we are equipped and delegated, ordered by God, to destroy every attempted advance of the enemy. Who do you think they believe the enemy is? Huh? Um. We know the who woke. The, enemy is. the woke. Destroy every Wokeness. Notice that this part comes second to the first part. Honor God first. They believe that the government's job oh, is to no. serve God. Yeah! We Except the Green Lantern thing is less creepy, you know? Beware the Green Lantern's light, the whole shtick is less creepy than this. Congress should only write laws that are righteous. God's laws. They want holy law. We decree that our judicial system will issue rulings that are biblical. Biblical? They want a biblical... Hello, Ellen. Do you guys remember... Wait, do you guys remember uh, when we were watching that yay on Alex Jones thing? Remember how they were talking... Ellen, are you seeing this? Oh, I should actually... Link the video on maybe on the uh, President Sunday. Where is the um, where is the where is the uh, orbiters thing? Oh yeah, there you go. Okay. <gasps> you have made it? Nice. 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 Very nice, Ellen. The general. Like, Ellen, is it really like this in the US when people are like praying, like doing big prayers to the. This is so strange. Yeah, so and so. Ellen, have you seen my reaction to Sun Soul's content? Have you seen it? Ellen, are you the famous Ellen that has sparked the drama between president and the, uh, what do you call, uh, poly people? Are you that famous, Ellen? Oh, where am I going? <sighs> I'm just using a shorthand. You like the Arch Prince Ferdinand that was assassinated before World War One? You have been assassinated and it caused the war. You know? At least your character was assassinated and then it caused the war. Yeah, they are enemies now. It's a long story and it's really strange, okay? Like, uh, oh my gosh. Do we want to go through the... What the heck? Do you want to go through that drama? Oh no, I fell. I fell. 
Pelead. Do we want to go through that drama? Press 1 if you want me to go through that drama after the Demon Mama video and press 2 if you think it's not worth going over. 1 if it's worth, 2 if it's not. It's true. So tell me. No, 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 no! It's like there is no greed. He's not greed, I just deserve what I deserve, okay? <gasps> yeah, come on! Talk about it with me, yeah, let's go, talk about it. Like, this is the best choice, okay. Okay, okay, now come on and talk about it and I will make it a juicy segment. Do you have me on the Discord? You can friend me on the Discord. Come on. Wait, I will pause and see if you are friending me on the Discord. <gasps> oh, calling me! Hello? Hello, how do I sound? You sound like a real giggler. Okay. Giggler gang. Yeah. Alright, um... Explain yeah. to us. Explain okay. to us. But so, first, uh, first, uh, do the usual. Like, tell me your pronoun and tell me uh, who uh, you are. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres, I am he, him. I'm just an ally that loves puns. Um... I I uh, just made affiliate on Twitch, um, and really I also nice. plan on doing YouTube streams too. I might do cozy if I feel like you know um, arguing with Nazis, but cozy it, TV. Yeah, just uh, argue. I'm, I feel like I'm small enough that it doesn't like matter, and that I can go farm content off of chuds. Yeah. But um, if I got bigger, I obviously wouldn't keep going. Do it. Um, but yeah, the it seemed to come from the whole uh, James situation, which honestly has worked out for me. Like I'm kind of glad it happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. Like, t I, I, I took my undeserved lashings, and now I have affiliate, so it worked out for me. Nice. Did you tell about me about it from the start, from zero? Okay, from zero. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Um. Somebody was pretending to be me, or no, was has had a name, Kaya Pole, and they were being particularly unhinged, uh, very cringe, and uh, they released a dox of James from the Internet's wife. Uh, like oh, who is James? James from the Internet. He is he's a triple digit streamer, um, and that uh, um, he is. Uh, broadly anarchist, but he, he does news streams and stuff like that. And so he was on the warpath, obviously. You know, if somebody, I, I don't imagine you'd be too happy if someone doxed your partner. True. Or something like that. And um, people around him pointed at me as a possible person that could have been Kaya Lynn. Be, uh, I think the way that he dis he went about it was figuring out. He asked about all the people that they were like trying to ban by like brigading them with reports. Asked all the people who they thought it was, and apparently I came up on a lot of them because I was still fresh in people's mind from no when I from uh, when I uh, did the thing to Sansol because ah. Sansol started the narrative that I was purposely trying to get him banned. Which, one, even if I was, like, you're stupid for falling for it, and two, that's not what True. I True. Mean. You mean the quote thing, right? Yeah. Like, um, I think it was pretty obvious that I was setting up a switcheroo. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know why he didn't see that coming. And then, you know, I didn't... Double down on it, I'm not sure. That's fire yeah. baffles me. I don't know. Yeah, it just, you know, it, well, I, it doesn't, it, it and if you understand men and their inability to admit when they're wrong, it completely makes sense. It's, um, it's just a, a goofy goober thing to do. Hey. And, um, so, uh, anyway, uh, James starts, uh, talking about bringing up lawyers, lighten me up for like two hours. Um, because he got it convinced that it was me that did it, that I was the account. Right. And President Sunday decides to come in and be like, um, hey, what's your evidence? What's tying Ellen to this? And then, uh, the evidence kind of sucked. Right. And then, um, and then President Sunday got mad and indignant and yelled at him, was like, dude, you've been... Lighting up this person for two hours, a bunch of communities for like two hours on very spurious evidence. This is fucked up, whatever. And Polly took issue with the fact that uh, Sunday yelled at James, and uh, they got into a comment little spat or whatever. And I think Sunday set, wanted to do this privately. For, like kind of obvious reasons and honestly i think he was proven right with considering the whole loner box is back on his bullshit and is using the fact that they fought as a way to uh, try and split them apart right um so and then um they got into a heated argument on stream and now um they are not cool and polly has been streaming about sunday off and on for quite a while, and um, Sunday's now cut all ties. So, did that explain everything, Sir Yvain? Right. And now we go, what is your opinion on the whole situation? Uh, fucking pick your battles. Uh, like, it's the same uh, criticism I have towards Lonerbox with this whole trans genocide thing. Even if you don't be ostensibly believe that it's happened that you could call it that or something like that um you know um then you should at least move the argument to something like if you don't like the way a marginalized group is describing their treatment the better thing is to focus on the marginalization rather than right you your uh, problems with the way they the express language. it. And honestly, I don't think there is a lot of... Uh, I don't think there's negative utility to expanding um, genocide to, like, concept... Like, I would, I would like there to be, like, concepts of, like... Like, we have negligent homicide, right? Right. Why, why can't we have negligent genocide? As a yeah, kid? I think so, right? Like, people often also try to call many horrible things in history not genocide because, technically speaking, it might not fit. People argue over the great hunger in Ukraine, the whole of the more, you know? Yeah. And I just don't think it should be the case. Especially, you know, like, if, yeah? if you're willing to call, like, you know, um, like, it, it's not like the... Like, denying gender-affirming uh, care to people who are more likely to kill themselves if they don't get it. I, if the only reason people aren't calling it that is because it uh, um, it doesn't fit in their worldview. Even though, colloquially, we use the word genocide to de describe um, uh, just not giving people things. Like, um, right. to, to you would have to bite the bullet. If not giving somebody care they need... Um, isn't a genocide, then you would have to, like, say that, like, the treatment of, um, like, the Bengalis during World War II, like, with man-made fa famines in there, you would have to bite the bullet and say that those aren't, those man-made famines aren't genocides, even though uh, most uh, experts on the issue would agree that it is. Yeah, or that the closing of the ghetto was not uh, part of the genocide. Also... Also, the other part is is that it's 
people keep on oscillating between whether it's an optical consideration. Like, okay, they'll be like, I ostensibly agree that these, uh, you know, X policies could be called this or whatever but Mm -hmm. i think it will either they say it will either make normies be incredulous and not want to deal with it or it will make um trans people too scared or or, um will compel them to violence which i don't think is true i don't think trans militias are going to be an issue i've met quite a few trans people um seem more like out of a lot of groups, uh, I, I just don't see you as bomb makers. Um. And plus, like, uh, it's not like many Jewish people saw the writing on the wall in the 30s, and they did mm-hmm. not jump to violence. They left Germany, like Einstein yeah, oh, did. That, that, that actually, like, legitimately makes me angry when people pull, be like, oh, well, if it's a genocide, then why aren't you Minecrafting people? It's like, oh, so you're just saying that every Jewish person in Nazi Germany who didn't pick up a gun is, like, morally culpable. It's kind of yeah. like the worst form of victim blaming. Exactly. Although, um, when put to the most desperate situation after the closing of the ghetto, do you know about the closing of the ghetto? Are you talking about, like, the Warsaw Uprising, or...? The Ghetto Uprising. Um, Because there were two major uprisings during... In Warsaw, during World War II. The Warsaw Uprising and the Jewish Ghetto Uprising, you know? Uh, You you can inform me more about... I'm actually, uh, right now, reading up... um, I've been uh, telling my uh, stream to read Black Earth, The Holocaust as History and Warning by Timothy Snyder. Yeah, so, yeah with, I, I would like to know more about we've it. We've talked about it a bit with President Sunday on stream once. Like, it's basically, at one point, the ghetto has been totally... You know what the ghetto was, right? Um, that's, like, where they, like, basically uh, put the Jews, like, in, like, certain neighborhoods, right? Yeah, but there is a bit more to it because uh, it was all surrounded by a wall, you know? Oh, okay. They were closed in in a wall. The wall, Mm. the Jewish community was forced to um, fund the wall, which I always say reminds me of rhetoric of certain politicians in the U.S., you know? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) build the wall. Yeah, and make uh, ex-people fund it, you know? Yeah. And so at some point the ghetto was completely isolated, so no one, no food could come in, and people started starving and dying from starvation in the ghetto proper. And people started, of course, being taken away by trains to the camps, you know. And Jewish people saw what was going on and basically decided that if they were going to die, then... Uh, the community might as well decide to die in a fruitless battle against their uh, executioner to choose to die fighting rather than just to be led to the slaughter. And that is what led to the Jewish ghetto uprising, you know? That's interesting. Like, Jewish people started arming themselves and... Uh, they like uh, people living in there knew that uh, they stood no chance, but decided to fight anyway. You know. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, that's uh, it's a shitty situation to be in. Uh, that uh, that part of that like you know people talking about. Um, I guess we talk. Uh, everyone's talking about Nazi Germany these days. Did you catch the Yay interview on that with Alex Jones? I heard a lot about it, like uh, U.S. loving Hitler and stuff like that. One of um, the wor- I think one of the more disgusting things that I think flew under the radar because of how crazy Ye was being mm-hmm. uh, was um, Alex Jones um, f- uh, lambasting um, George Soros for being um, he. For George Soros was part uh, was like fourteen years old hey. uh, during during the whole thing or whatever, mm-hmm. and um, uh, it's just kind of like they were like you know saying that he was going around like carting the Jews off or what. I think he the what he did was he would go he would help like 
when they were seizing property from Jews after they had carted them away, he like basically like loaded trucks as a fourteen year old, hiding the fact that he was a Jew. And right. they were like like lasting Well when where some, did he live? Yeah. Uh, he in uh, Austria, in Vienna. Right, because there were people that it's like this is a part of history that some people fail to speak about and recognize. Many times uh, Germans had no way of telling which people were uh, Jewish and which people were not Jewish. And a lot of the time, Germans had to be, like, the Nazis had to be um, assisted in identifying Jewish people by local populations. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's not like, you know, it's not like they were born with the... If, if the Yellow Star was necessary, it was, like... Um, <laughs> that sounded bad. The yellow star was needed to let people know. The armband, yeah. Always obvious, yeah. And of it's course. Such a... But yeah, like I just like I'm like I just some I'm at so some fat rich American like Alex Jones like lambasting like what it was like to be a 14 year old Jew just trying to not survive. Get yeah. It's just like I'm not gonna fucking sit like and then he was mostly like talking about like um like george soros just like talking about that time of his life he was like it was fine for, it was a good time in my life but like mostly because i think it was mostly because he didn't understand what was going on right yeah it just like it's so weird that like uh like right wingers have this like this Double side where um, where George Soros single handedly not taking on the Nazis as a fourteen year old isn't enough, but Greta Thunberg is doing too much. Yeah, Which exactly. Like it's, an amount, it's an amount of cognitive dissonance. That's, that's because they don't really care about those things. They care about signaling some sort of form of uh, hypocrisy and mm -hmm. just uh, smugly then what, saying the, we are. What's correct. the Bosch quote? Uh, like conservative is mostly gesturing at. Um, at, uh, at a perceived, democracy. I think it's perceived or something, yeah, hypocrisy. Yeah. And of course, there's the video that I have uploaded. You should watch it if you haven't, okay? It's okay. a speech by an Auschwitz survivor mm -hmm. talking about it's called Do Not Be Indifferent. He made a speech at a anniversary of the, uh, I think it was an Auschwitz, uh, uh, you know, memorandum, you know. And he was speaking about, he said that he won't try to bore the young generation by what has happened to him, you know, that it's been a long time ago. And he said that what he would like to focus is today, you know. And yeah. that basically that, uh, from his perspective, the genocide, the steps that the Auschwitz did not fall from the sky, and that it all started from Jewish people being banned from going to the park, from going to the public pool, that Jewish children were told not to play with uh, other children, etc. And that Jewish people were like, you know, may... That may be inconvenient for me, but it is what it is, you know. I can sort of handle it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's not such a big deal. And that step by step, by this sort of normalizing the thing, that step by step, it led to the Auschwitz, you know? Yeah. And that we yeah. should not be indifferent, that... Uh, the death way by a thousand cuts. Yeah, yeah, that the way the minorities are treated right now are a thing that can lead to a new Auschwitz and that we cannot be indifferent to that. And that taking away the rights of minorities um, damage the fabric of our democracy itself. You know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, that was one thing that frustrated me is like, um, I was, when, like, when I was talking to Sansel, he was like, do you think black people were, like, he was, he was saying that chattel slavery was a genocide, and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? It, well, if that's not, if that is 
that nothing is. They right. seem to oscillate back and forth between them. Like, okay, so you think genocide is when on train heading to Auschwitz? And they're like, no, I'm, I never said that. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, where, where are these? Like, what's your threshold? Like, is chattel slavery? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, is, like, you know, is Der Sturmer like literally like these things are these things genocidal? No. Okay, then like, then where's your line? Because obviously. There's some cognitive dissonance happening here. If you don't believe it starts and ends at the boxcars, at Crystal Knox, and all that shit, then, like, even if you think of one, like, like genocide's like cancer. If you're you have one percent heading towards it, you still have, you know, early stage cancer is still cancer. Right. Yeah. And with the slavery, um, with the slavery example, right? I think it's a matter of people sort of failing to examine the underlying things that are sort of be uh, like that lie beneath the just the you know people being taken as slaves, you know? Yeah, I, like I, I, it's, I asked it's, him. I was like, why like, why do I have an English last name? Do I look like I'm English? Like, right, oh. because like it's um, it's. Uh, Ignoring, I don't know if it's on purpose or not, the fact that there were peoples uh, living in a place, parts of many different, very, um, what's diverse backgrounds, you know, from different yeah. cultures, and that people were just taken from those different backgrounds, different cultures, and, and just the history the was erased. The past was stolen from those people, you know. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely genocide, you know. When you take away a person's heritage, take away a person's history, and make them a blank stay slate, you only sort of to serve another person you know yeah like people yeah. just take this uh, oh they were they treated as slaves badly for a bit but it's all okay now but there is a lot more to this you know long yeah. and it's like it didn't even end like they were doing eugenics like uh, yeah like sterilizing people up until like the 70s um yeah like my um uh, and uh, oh yeah, he asked me like, oh like, um, like talking about ableist genocide, and I was like, absolutely, like, um, like it's kind of weird that, um, like I'm in a situation where even my white side doesn't really know much about where they're from because of, um, like my grandma's adopted, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, she had a teenage mother, and the prescription for the teenage mother was a lobotomy, oh. and then, and then um, they she didn't. And then, uh, you know, they lobotomized her too hard. She couldn't take care of my grandma, so then my grandma got adopted. Oh, yeah, lobotomy is a whole other topic, isn't it? And, yeah, and that, that was, you know, that's my grand. I literally saw my grandma today. Like, like that is, it's not, you know, people talk about it like it's so long ago. I'm like, they're like, oh, your ancestors. Like, my ancestors? You mean my grandma? Like... Yeah, exactly. Like, like it's not being, it is not being, people have really skewed perspective on time, you know? It was yeah. so long ago. Like, the things that the damage to the people that were taken in as slaves to the U.S., it's like, basically, it still affects people today, you know? Yeah. And usually yeah, right-wingers want to ignore that. They want to pretend there's, as if history is not a, yeah. you know, yeah. There's, yeah, there's compounding interest, and then there's the opposite of that. You know, um, you know, poverty charges interest, you know. Um, so all these things kind of stack on top of each other. The same way, like, priv privileges will, privilege will stack on top of each other to go further together. Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah, the opposite is also true. History is like a continuum, you know? It uh, things yeah. like, you cannot just say, since today we stop a hurtful law that has been uh, affecting this community for 300 years, it means that it's all fixed, you know? 
you need yeah. to build positive laws that will compound for that yeah, the, uh, the funny thing is like people talk about history well, the black and white income ga gap w was closing until reagan came in it was closing slowly too slowly but it was closing mm -hmm. and now it's exacerbated and it's been exacerbating since the 80s so like in terms of like relative position like where one group uh, like you know in terms of equity and equality like you know the idea that like one group is going to like event like black people are going to eventually like be on the same level as white people economically speaking that it's going uh, in the opposite direction. That's worrying. Yeah. Well, so this is a really good point in chat, you know, that a person just said, they will tell you to get over slavery while saying never forget 9-11. You know? Yeah. Which is pretty... Oh, yeah. Sur surveying, that's also, like, another terrible argument. Like, I, I even say that against, like, black separatists and stuff like that. Like, when people on Twitch poll are being a little sussy... On the, like, there, there's a, like, you know, they're getting a little too black Israelite, for my taste, and, um, because, like, you know, it, like, if you believe in black liberation, you have, you believe in giving power to black people, mm -hmm. which I do believe in, um, one of the consequences of giving power to any group of people, no matter who they are, is that they will have the ability to create their own, that, like, that's how we will know when when black people are on the same level as white people is when they can commit the same level of domination. And obviously that should never be used as a reason to not do it, but that means that, you know, in order to do those things, power and ideology both need to be, like the ideology can be there, and but if they don't have the power, they can't enact it. But if they have the power and they don't have the ideology, they're not going to enact it. So you need to, you need to fight the ideology while the group doesn't have the power right. so that those so you know because then it will be used as a reason to not give power in the future right and of course from what i'm uh, what i have been learning recently a lot of the things that have led to a lot of the horrible thing that we see today is tied to do the like I'm starting to believe that the 19th century was the worst century ever you know the cursed the century uh, the 1800s the yeah then the, the 19th century because it gave rise to the nation state and the nation yeah. and from that many many horrible ideas came forth you know yeah, a lot of it was bastardizations of those ideas. Um, one of the interesting things in the book I'm reading is about um, Hitler's philosophy that, like, struggle was virtue. Like, that's why he called it Mein Kampf. Right. And he would... So if you ask him a political question, he would ask... He would answer in naturalistic terms. And if you asked him a na naturalistic question he would answer it in political terms because it was a circle to him like right. his entire ideology was just about like being the biggest cat in the jungle right. and he, he thought that that was like that is what it is in any like thought process or trying to separate from nature was Jewish and bad yeah although many of the Nazi ideology was also sort of born in the 19th century during the formation of the German nation state, you know? The idea of uh, the unified German nation that had to be pure, the eugenics sprang forward also at the same time, basically, in the 19th century, and then the idea that Slavic people are people without culture, unlike the unified German nation, so they are the outsiders, the idea of the modern day anti-Semitism also was born from the rise of the nation state because Jewish people became the outsiders of the to the newly formed nation, you know. A lot yeah. of those harmful ideas were born from the idea that you can choose that a group of people can choose to be the nation that has the rightful claim over the part of a, ter of a territory 
and that a state represents that nation and that it must erect the very um, controlled borders and that all people that are not part of that nation must be thrown out and even worse are part of the enemy's nations and, are, and hence become the enemies to the nation that is here, you know? Yeah. And it became, it led to the 20th century and the First World War being a history of Europe-wide ethnic cleansings. When people that have lived in a country for hundreds of years were suddenly declared to be outsiders to the nation and that they all must be thrown out of the country, you know? Yeah, um, part of um, the, I think, uh, beyond the nation state, I think um, just the concept of, like, not the concept, but, like, um, I think mass media, as it becomes more intimate, it will be more able to create these things. And we're already seeing that with Facebook, uh, with, in regards to the Rohingyas in Myanmar. Um, and that, that, I think that's a scary prospect because, you know, like at least in the, I, I put it this way, every town had their own flavor of anti-Semitism right. and they didn't have marching orders, like from a top down hierarchical structure telling them what to think like they do now, like Fox news, like functions as just like, you know, um, the, the cowboy and, uh, leading the the herd where it was a lot more organic back then uh, i don't i'm i don't want to say better because that doesn't feel like the word uh, less dangerous because it, it wasn't able to organize on a state level right and there are many sort of interests in this is why like i'm finding myself interested in the polish Lithuanian commonwealth you know as yeah. a concept uh, what, what do you think about bureaucracy? Um, this is a point that was also made in the book. That um, so, do you know about like why the Polish Jews were safer than the French Jews, and and why even though they were both taken over by the Reich? Uh, I'm not sure. No. Um. So, um, I actually have the quote here. Um. <laughs> Uh, Although I'll, most I'll, of them ended up being, you know, the, most of Jewish people in Poland ended up being killed anyway, but... Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't even, uh, like, most of the deaths, um, I think, did not happen in camps. Uh, that's, uh, it was just, you know, like, slaughters. Um, but uh, this is part of the prologue on the book. Our intuitions fail, fail us. We rightly associate the Holocaust with Nazi ideology, but forget that many of the killers were not Nazis or ever even Germans. We think first of the German Jews, although almost all of the Jews killed in the Holocaust lived beyond Germany. We think of concentration camps, though few of the murdered Jews ever saw one. We fault the state, though murder was possible only where the state institutions were destroyed. We blame science and so endorse an important element of Hitler's worldview. We fault nations, indulging in simplica simplifications used by the Nazis themselves. So um, what Timothy Snyder means in this is that he talked about the relative safety that French Jews had compared to the Polish Jews because um, when the Germans, like, so Poland was a twice run over, like, destroyed country uh, when the Nazis took over because the USSR came in, destroyed all the Polish institutions. Uh, you know, and stuff like that. And then the Germans came in and destroyed all of the Soviet institutions. So it was twice destroyed mm -hmm. over. What, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like the legal systems, the... Uh, they but the Germans attacked everything. first and then Soviets joined. I'm, I'm talking about them being occupied. Okay, okay. And... Um, right, okay. So they were occupied and mm -hmm. stuff like that but the institutions basically like imagine if you took a bulldozer it got yeah. bulldozed in both directions this is why so, the uh, government became the underground government apparently it was the, a unique structure on the european scene the polish underground government yeah 
Um, but with France, they didn't do that. France's institutions were a lot more entrenched in, and you know, Germ the Germans were fighting a world war, so they didn't just destroy all of them. So th in the bureaucracy, there uh, they were able to um, seek refuge. You know, or were able to talk in certain ways. Like think about like what would happen if like the f wait, wait, wait oh yeah you're not American. Um, if the federal government like left Alabama or something right. like that, who would be the people that would take power? The, uh, the like the what do you call the local? Some the local sort of? churches. Oh. The churches. The churches would probably be um, the biggest part, and this is a big part of what happened in Iraq with ISIS. Right. Is that when institutions break down, you uh, the let's say that the barrier. Uh, the gate, the old institutional gatekeeping breaks down, which means the the um, the barrier to entry becomes a lot lower, and you get people that would have been kept out e j even just for optical sake, you know, like we're talking about your um, your David Dukes, your uh, uh, do you know who David Duke is? A more or less, but you can explain. Uh, uh, he was a Klansman that ran for governor in Louisiana All right. in, in the early nineties. Oh my 90s. gosh! Oh my gosh! Um, he almost won too. Um, oh no! Um, those are the people, and that's basically what they, uh, what Timothy Snyder posits about Poland is that the complete breakdown of the uh, the institutional structures that like gave people protection enabled the David Dukes of Poland to run wild and um, enabled a lot of uh, the Jewish murder that did not happen in France. Right. And keep in mind that in Poland there was like uh, in Warsaw, for example, uh, the plan was to turn Warsaw into a lake in the end game, you know. Uh, education know was totally banned, you know. Um, education became banned. Uh, young girls were forbidden from learning anything apart from sewing. So basically, people had to, when the Nazi soldiers were not around, the girls would hide their sewing materials and take out their textbooks and start learning, you know? And wow. in this underground illegal high school system, People would gain education, and after the war, this sort of illegal wartime education system was deemed to be legitimate, and people got their degrees based on that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, bad that they had to do that, but um, it's good that people were able to make the best of a bad situation. So it's like um, uh, it was a whole situation thing. And people don't, at least outside of... Um, Poland don't know much about the ghetto, you know, the history of the ghetto, how the ghetto was isolated and then locked and then people just must starve in the ghetto. There were people, dead bodies on the streets, you know. Yeah. Because people just starved. Um, yeah, I would like to go to Europe one day to like visit. I've never left, uh, no I've never left North America, so, um... Yeah, there are still uh, ghetto walls in Warsaw. There are still pre-World uh, pre War II buildings standing in Warsaw, you know, like the living monuments of history. Yeah. Um, I was uh, reading about they, they uh, leave a lot of memorials on the sidewalks in Vienna for um, the Jewish people that lived in the houses that are still standing. Uh, yeah. That were taken and away, I guess, you know... And because, uh, because like, uh, Jewish history is tied to this region, Poland, Ukraine, Lithuania, uh, mm -hmm. and other countries, like, Warsaw has still at least a few um, Jewish-based institutions, like Zich, the Jewish History Institute, the Jewish Theater, the Jewish community, the official community center, and of course the fairly newly built Pauline Museum. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, I, 
Um, so I'm from uh, Indiana, and um, we had a, a woman that would come. Uh, she would, I think, she would always uh, like do go to school. She was a Holocaust survivor oh. that lived in Terre Haute. Which is uh, Terre Haute is the home of Eugene Debs. I don't know if you know, you're familiar with Eugene Debs. Um, yeah. And uh, she came to my school at one point. And that's how I learned about the Holocaust. Was the fourth grader being sat down and being told that this nice old lady that was the real estate agent, um, like explaining her, she showed her number tattoos and stuff like that. Well, was it like taught in class? Yeah, it was like a it was like a assembly thing, and she would uh, she a big side. It was kind of like a side gig for her. She would um, she would go to schools and uh, just uh, like oh, when because my... like I think fourth grade in Indiana is when kids start to learn about the Holocaust, and um, she would come and you know just talk uh, like just answer questions, you know, and stuff like that. It was a really cool experience. I mean, maybe cool is not the word. You, it, right. Enlightening. Yeah. I guess it's a bit different to learn about it in the country when it all happened, you know? Yeah, it's all it's all very far from me, you know, it's it's distant. You know, I, I don't it's that it's it's different when it's thousands of miles away, you know. Right, but like my great having, grandfather yeah. was shot in the ghetto, you know. Oh wow. Like um uh, a very uh yeah, and I think that there was this specter of the war looming above people even when I was a child, you know? Yeah, I can't imagine that goes goes away. Um, that has to be a, um, you know, that, that has to be constantly looming. Yeah, and this is why the Polish far-right government uses it as a part of its rhetoric to say... Russia wants to conquer us by war now, you know? And Germany wants to conquer us through peaceful oh. means. Oh, so uh, you're you're from Poland then? Yeah, yeah, I am in Poland, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I was always wondering what your accent was. I could, I could never... Yeah, I'm like, uh, come on. <laughs> um, it's yeah, true. No, I, I, know, I know very little about the Polish people. Outside of um, World War Two. Yeah, like uh, I'm trying to teach about the falsehood of treating the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth basically as Poland. You know. Um. I. What is like? I. Damn. See. I. I don't even really know much about the Lithuanians either. I know that the USSR did some fucked up shit to them, but I don't have. Uh, I don't have a I, I don't have a I don't even have, have a Wikipedia grasp of So do you know what the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth was? My favorite no. subject that I keep talking about always. No, I have no idea what that is. So it was like a union between the Oh my gosh, I actually have okay, I will make you read this because I made the President Sunday read this as well, okay? Okay. Okay, it's like an excerpt from a good book. But not the Bible. Okay. <laughs> I don't consider that a good book. I mean, it is a uh, literature, no? Uh, Especially uh, like I, the, I, I, the Torah. I, look, uh, until Jesus gets on a broom and plays Quidditch, I'm not reading. Hey, uh, the Torah does not have Jesus, okay? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Let me uh, see. Until Abraham or Isaac, I don't know. Abraham? I, I, I I read I read the Bible when, when I was in juvenile, and, that, and that's about the only time I ever read it. Okay, I have to Google. Yeah. Juvenile? Uh, uh, like, uh, like juvenile detention. Why were you in the juvenile detention? Because I was a badass kid. You were a badass? I was just a bad kid. <laughs> I'm still... Uh, you were a badass. <laughs> Some might say. You were degenerate. <laughs> uh, not yet. That came later. Oh. Honestly, the, 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 I, I, mean, I... Oh, I have found it. I have found it, okay? I will send it okay. to you. Okay. 
This is very interesting, okay? This is a long... This is comes to the thing that I said, that to some people, it's hard to imagine for people to imagine a different type of state than the nation state, you know? Oh, yeah. People say, like I heard Madame Panada say, uh, criticize them and Mama and say, oh, so you don't like the nation state, so you just want no state at all, you know? Yeah. The, well, also they're an anarchist, so that's a dumb Yeah, but uh, it does not follow yeah. that na that it's either... Nation state nation or no state. state. Or nothing. Yeah, that, that's actually one of my biggest liberal criticisms is their inability to think outside of institutions. Look at this, okay? You can read it out loud. The history of Eastern Europe was dominated by the story of the rise of the Russian Empire, yet Russia only emerged as a major power after 1700. For 300 years, the greatest power in Eastern Europe was the union between the Kingdom of Poland and the Great Duchy of Lithuania, one of the longest lasting political unions in European history, yet because it ended in the late 18th century in what are misleadingly termed the partitions of Poland, it barely features in standard accounts of European history. The making of the Polish-Lithuanian Union, 1385 to 1569, tells the story of the formation of a consensual, decentralized, multinational, and religiously plural state built from below as much as above that was founded on by peaceful negotiation, not war and conquest. From its inception in 1385 to 6, a vision of political union was developed that proved attractive to Poles, Lithuanians, Ruthenians, and Germans, a union that was extended to include Prussia uh, in the 1450s and Livonia in the 1560s. Despite the often bitter disagreements over the nature of the union, these were nevertheless overcome by a republican vision of a union of peoples in one political community of citizens under an elected monarch. Robert Frost challenges interpretations of the Union informed by the idea that the emergence of the sovereign nation-state represents the essence of political modernity and represents the Polish-Lithuanian Union as a case study of a composite state. That's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, you know? Yeah. Very, very cool, you know? So it often, now the far-right Polish government uh, tries to create this narrative that actually it was... Uh, Poland, that Poland created the first European Union, which is ridiculous for many reasons, you know? Yeah. Because Poland, as we understand it, did not exist at the time, because there was no Polish national identity at the time, you know? Yeah, um, uh, I think I, I, I think I read or watched some geographic determinist, uh, perspective on, um, Poland that it was, like, it, it's been a battlefield because it's just isn't it like largely just flat land that's easy for military conquest to just roll through? It is a uh, flat because basically, Pole is a plain. Poland, uh, Poland, you know the the plain land, you know. <laughs> ah, okay, um, that's interesting. Uh, I know what that's like. Uh, the place I'm at is flattened by gl was flattened by glaciers, so it's uh, incredibly so it's flat like, here. Um, basically, yeah. But yeah, it, like it's a big misunderstanding of history, like maybe on purpose, you know, to say that it was basically just Poland, and it's being repeated many times by bad actors. The far right Polish. I, I've I've heard, I've I've not heard good things about the far right Polish. <laughs> no, not because that it's the worst, you know. Actually, I can tell you, like during you know, um, during the election of Trump, you know. Mm -hmm. The Polish foreign government openly endorsed Trump. I think it was one of the only European countries that openly endorsed Trump during yeah, the it election. Was him, it was him, Orban, and Lukashenko. You know. Yeah, you know, wh wh you know, when when they're having your back, you know. And it's then, like, if Lukashenko told me the sky was blue, I would look outside to check. And then, like. Uh, the Polish government also implied that the election was probably stolen when Trump oh lost. Oh, God. We're just yep. going to have to deal with that forever now, aren't we? Just fucking sore loser ass fucking... You know, you know, if the Democratic Party was smart, they would just call them cucks. Um, because, you know, what... Is there anything weaker than a sore loser? I, yeah, it's true. And also the Polish president that's also far right, you know? 
During the last days of his campaign, he left the country to meet with Daddy Trump. Yeah. You know? Uh, apparently that's easy to do these days. No, he did it when Trump was still president. Oh, okay. One moment, yeah. I will go to the toilet, okay? okay. Don't run away, fall okay? Alright, don't fall in. Okay, I will do my best, okay? I can swim, I'm a duck. Uh, true, true. Okay, I'll be right back. Don't run away, okay? Talk to the chat and the three people in the chat. Hello, three people in the chat. How are you guys doing? Go ahead and follow me at Ellen Degenerate on Twitch. Um, the E, it, the second E in my name is a three, but other than that, it's spelled the same. I also have a Twitter, uh, Punished underscore Ellen. Um, uh, you know, can I get a, can I get a one in chat? If you guys are, uh, if you guys approve of, uh, Ducky's Final Fantasy comp. Wait, what is she play Final Fantasy? Quackity quack. I have returned. Good, good, good. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Of all the things that have been happening, you know, with my mom and mm -hmm. stuff, uh, have you heard? I, I have not. I'm sorry if I haven't been keeping up. Oh, it's like um, my mom was um, hit by an elec electric scooter, you know? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, she has uh, had to have a uh, surgery. And I even, uh, like President Sunday has graciously um, decided to do like a stream on the US 11th, you know? Uh, on the on the 11th? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's With uh, Dima and Mama and uh, Ico Rules and Merrick, you know? That is awesome. I really hope... Uh it helps make things easier. Yeah, it's been like uh, a rough, so I have not been streaming for a long time, you know? Uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm probably, um, I did, I've been, um, my streaming stuff is really erratic that I've been doing. Yeah, same. I've, I don't, I, I don't like doing a schedule because I don't, because, um, Let's say I've got a lot of fuck it, you know, like I, I have a lot of that in me where I'll just be like, oh, I'm supposed to do something. But then I'll be like, uh, but this bed is so comfy. I don't want to do it now. But if you don't have a schedule, then we'll, um. I like being a surprise. Then will audiences tune in? Um, yeah, well, yeah, when will people know to tune in? Yeah, that's, that's the problem. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be a surprise. I'm gonna be the surprise streamer. Oh, you're right. never gonna know. You're, we have seven just... people now, so that's Ooh, good. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Cause... You guys enjoy, can I get, can I get some hype in chats? Can I get... Hype in chats? Oh. It's like, yeah, that's a Zanderhal thing. I have no idea. Uh, I, I'm just saying streamer lingo, not completely understanding it. I'm like a, I'm like a eight year old that like first like starts to learn curse words. Oh, not even sure what poggers means. 
Pog means something very different to me. Do you mean those little things? No, um, like Pog, those? Is acron- Pog is an acronym. Um, yeah, those little plastic things, right? No, I'm talking about P-A-W-G. Uh, it's an acronym that stands for Fat Ass White Girl. Oh, I thought you meant like um, <laughs> Pog, the, the thing that the James Stephanie Sterling shows sometimes. Oh, no. No, I, I'm not. I'm not old enough for the uh, for. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. <sighs> no. And, uh, have you? Did you ever see the discourse on that? People were trying to say that the term "pog" was racist. What? Uh, Why? Because having a big ass is cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it, it's the it's the same people that did the uh, Anne Frank had white privilege discourse. Oh my gosh. And Frank, I don't... Oh, no. <laughs> but why? Uh, oh, because somebody... Uh, a big lefty lady thing. She's really attractive, so I follow her. Uh, has the name Gaming Disorder Pog. <laughs> and oh uh, people were pretending like that was a micro <laughs> Oh, God. Wait, so why did she, why did she have a white privilege? Uh, what was it? she was it was a oh are you talking about Anne Frank or yeah. the, the poster? Well, n- not really. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I oh they called Anne Frank a colonizer. Yeah, the nine year the fucking teenage girl that got holocausted. Wait, 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 who did who who did she colonize? Exactly, exactly. Oh, uh, it's the Black Hammer group. There. Wait, 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 wait. Didn't she live in like Amsterdam? So they they were German. They were German, and then they fled to Amsterdam to try and get away so they could get to America. But then they then America was super anti-Semitic and was like, no. Wait. So what did she call on? Did she call on Amsterdam? I don't. Uh, yeah, it, you're you're trying to like reason. Uh, things out of people that, frankly, I think are just mentally ill cloud chasers. Oh. Because, yeah. like, of course, because people often misunderstand the nature of Jewishness, if that makes sense. Yeah. It, it's very misunderstood. For because, people. like, uh, Jewishness is not about, like, a race, you know? Like... The Jewish community, although I have heard bad uh, things from Shakespeare about uh, how it's, um, certain things go in practice, but um, Jewishness is not tied to a race, you know? The Jewish community yeah, is some, very there's like... There's Ashkenazi, uh, there's the Sephardic. Like yeah. they're very, very ethnically and quote-unquote race diverse, you know? There are uh, Jewish people that can be white, brown, black, like uh, any race, you know? Yeah. You know, where are the Asian Jews? That's what I want to know. I think there might be. Like, especially since, especially since, like, there's a conversion, you know, as well, you know? Um, yeah. I started going to those dinners, the Shabbat, like, I saw that it was, like, very diverse, you know? There were yeah, white I, people, brown people, black people, you know? It was very nice, and it was, like, very different types of songs were sung, it's, you know? Um, I don't have a lot of, um, I have one Jewish friend named Liz, she's cool, and then I had an ex-girlfriend that was half Jewish. Um, and her grandparents were very nice to me. Um, they made, they made me matzo balls. That's pretty much my, that, that's where my interactions with the Jewish communities, uh, start and stop. Just not a, just not a lot. Um, yeah, just, I, I don't interact. I, it's oh, not on purpose. Hassan. There's just not a lot here. Oh yeah, Hassan. Did what she colonize the attic? 
like as if the, the discussion about colonizing and colonizers can become really, really strange, you know? Ah, it's, well, it's part of the politics of just grievance. And I'm not a big fan of that for on multiple fronts. Um, this is why I was very much against uh, the whole Professor Flowers and her whole thing because, like, I I think uh, like black separatism, black Israelite, that kind of like rhetoric is being pushed mostly by black bourgeois at um, like non college ed educated black men, and you know fascism preys on grievance real and imagined true so uh, i'm kind of just like worried about that like uh, uh, there seems to be a reflex in um amongst certain groups of um uh like you know like black lives matter not black lives matter but like just black rights groups to like be reflexively oppression olympics things right and it uh it's just very not productive and for example like karasu so, but, yeah? yeah you know karasu it's, it's, kapka i am not familiar with them. wait wait oh that i think i yeah they're the ones that gave me the um i think they're the one no on the president else, sunday discord yeah i've i've seen who you're talking about yeah Karasu uh, Kapka like um, has pointed me to like the very interesting history of the Haiti uprising. You know about mm -hmm. it? Like the, during the Napoleon era, Napoleon went to subjugate Haiti. You know, and he sent Polish soldiers there. You know, mm. and at some point, Polish soldiers started because uh, the. Polish national identity was born basically at that point started being, you know, a thing, right? And Polish people wanted to sort of win a country, you know? Yeah. And wanted, ho had hoped that Napoleon would help uh, to create a country, right? Because uh, there was no Poland or Ukraine or any other of that region. The Commonwealth was no more, right? Right. And at some point, the Polish soldiers started realizing that the Haiti people are fighting for their freedom, you know. And Polish people felt that they were fighting for their freedom as well. So they started sort of admiring the Haiti soldiers, you know. Mm -hmm. And at some point, they switched sides and started fighting against the Napoleon soldiers with the Haiti people. And uh, Why did they switch? Because they felt sort of that they were fighting for their freedom and they felt that they were in the identical situation as them. Yeah, I'm always I've always never liked the whole like fighting for freedom because it feels like it's it's a half thing. Like fighting for freedom to do what, you know? To not be oppressed. Well, oh I, I, I meant just like when people just say it, but um what what group so did, like, the oppression change? I'm just trying to understand, like, the, the flip. Like, uh, for example, if you are under a regime that tells you what to do, what you cannot do, forces you to learn a certain language, bans certain language from use, you know? Yeah. Makes a slave out of you. Yeah. So you fight to overthrow uh, that regime, you know? Yeah, I totally get that. All right, well, I'm going to have I'm about to have to leave cuz I'm going to have to go w do my real job. Yeah, but because before you go, I'll just uh, a few words to finish, you know? Okay, yeah. Like sorry. after the uh, uprising in Haiti ended, the Polish soldiers stayed to live in Haiti and they were given the status, the legal status of Noir, and they were in Haiti legally uh, treated as uh, black people. Huh. I did not know that. Which is really interesting. And then they lived there, and um, basically, most descendants of those soldiers are mixed race now. Okay. That's really.
really cool. Um, okay, um, I do really have to get okay. going. I will I'm see you. you stop by. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, you have a nice night. Yeah, yeah, bye-bye. I disconnect. So yeah, how did you like this? Now we can continue. Brina, come on. What is your arm sore? Why are you melting? Are you ice cream? Don't forget to like the thing. Okay, we continue with Demon Mama. We did this aside. And now we can continue listening to Mama, right? Would you like to listen to Mama? Come on. We finished the reaction to Mama. Talking about uh, three of the people there agreed that blast they wanted blasphemy laws. Yay, that uh, Ali law. Alexander guy and that Owen Benjamin guy, all three of them were like, yeah, we want blasphemy laws. This is... People need to realize this is everywhere right now. This is the upheaval that's happening right now there True. is a great seizure in america and tons of people are rapidly becoming radicalized to the far right and donald trump just called for a dissolution of the constitution yes you can this is so this is like such a cult like thing we declare that oh my we stand gosh against wokeness wokeness Oh my god. <laughs> wokeness. You can't, get more, you can't get more blatant than oh this. Oh my gosh. Wokeness. For them, wokeness is any expression of LGBT rights, any expression of minority rights. That is wokeness to them. You know what they consider wokeness. Oh my god. Really? Thank you. We declare that we take back influence at the local level in our communities. We decree that we take back and permanently control this is, of influence and leadership in each of the seven. This is such a religious thing, this is what's going on here. Like it's wild. It's so wild to me. They call the Mario movie woke because Peach is acts like a leader. Oh no! Wait, is the movie out? out is mario out remember how i've been talking about how they have to weed out anyone who doesn't agree with the oh. most extreme example when i watch the trailer this always happens in fascist movements they have to purge the people who aren't 100 percent on board we operate in unity beyond denominational lines in order to accomplish a christian rule in america accomplish the purposes of god wow. Of course, of course, nation, nation. Discussing what a na discussing what a nation is in the U.S. would be a really interesting topic. You know, it would be really interesting to actually analyze and discuss what nation means in a country like the U.S. Because the U.S. is an extremely multicultural. And extremely, like, unlike what the far riders would uh, like to tell you, the U.S. is multilingual, multi, um, ethnic, ethnic, multi-ethnic. Like, like it would be really tricky to actually identify a nation in the U.S. You know, that would be a tricky thing to do. A 
packed theater. To a absolutely packed theater full of Republicans. Like because you could try to do something like, oh, it's easy. Like people that are part of the U.S. nation are people that speak uh, English, right? But there are people in the U.S. that are American citizens, and I am mm, pretty sure do not speak English, but some other language, you know? So that already is like uh, out. As like a requirement to be quote unquote American, right? Because there are people that live in the US and do not speak English. So how would you actually define what a US national is? You know? Becomes tricky in my opinion. So, this is with the seven. Oh, I'm I'm familiar with the seven mountains here. Seven mountains. The seven mountains mandate is a conservative Christian movement within Pentecostal and evangelical Christianity. Uh, it's a part of. This is a. It's it's a part of Dominionism. The seven areas which the movement believe control society in which they seek to control are family, religion, education, media, entertainment, business, and government. That's what they're saying. They want to take over yeah. family, religion, education, media, entertainment, business, government in the name of God. Now, not to speak like even you cannot speak of a unified culture in the U.S. Like you have all sorts of religions. You have sort all sorts of cultures like cultures is part of the U.S. landscape. So you cannot uh, identify like just a single culture that is quote-unquote American, you know? Like you cannot like just pick one because all of the cultures that are present in the U.S. are part of its culture, you know? If that oh. makes sense. Just so that we're clear. Of course it's everything. I've been saying this forever. I've been trying so hard to get all of the atheist, all of the people who were lulled into a false sense of security by the rise of atheism in America, all of the people who went back to brunch, I've been trying to tell people that dominionism, Christian nationalism, that this fascistic surge in America is roiling. This sounds deeply anti-Semitic. Well, we know who's pushing this shit. They think they have the cultural upper hand with yay stuff. Well, they will if we don't get active. They, and I mean, when I say active, I mean we need to get serious. We need to get really serious. Everybody, not just me, not just my team, not just the other streamers out there. We you should have talents that can be put towards use. We should create a club. We should start playing soon, okay? Resisting this shit. We need to push back, and we need to push back hard. True, we well, need to. They'll be right, and it will be the time. We do need to push do back. We, can we recall what happens when these people take over? We've already seen it happen a hundred times. We've seen it in Italy. True. We've seen it in Germany. We've in seen Poland. it in the United States. We've seen what happens when fascists take the reins by force and who they target and who they kill and who dies. And it's a lot of people who die every single time. Lives True. snuffed out forever. True. How fast they're moving is concerning normies. It did in Germany too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is a thing that I would like to talk about a lot. It was a huge part in Germany. Tons of normies in Germany laughed it off. But it doesn't matter because they don't... They didn't even, even laugh it off. They, were, they felt it was ridiculous. Like, they outright mocked it. Like, and they didn't do any good. Need normies. They do not need normies. Yep, they do they not. They do not need... Uh, a, 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 a lot of people... They will use normies as soldiers. They will draft normies to the army and kill them. That is what will happen. That is what happened through history. Normies are useful to regimes as uh, potential soldiers. 
to to get on board. All they need is a lot of people who won't do anything. And those the small group of highly violent, highly dangerous people will will act if unchallenged. And they will act and have horrible, horrible actions. Real quote, quick, right now, okay? And quote unquote normies do not have enough of uh, power to just defy being drafted to the army, for example. Just, just a little thought experiment. Right now, let's pretend that you, right now in your current state, were teleported into a Nazi Germany-like situation. A guy in an all-black suit knocks on your door, okay? Tomorrow, you didn't just imagine, nothing changes. Just tomorrow, knock, 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 knock. Greetings! I'm, I can't do that. I can't do a German accent. Fuck that. Just imagine a German accent. We've come to inspect your house. What would you do? What would you do? They come in with a gun. Let us inspect your house. We want to see if you've got any, uh, if you're hiding anybody. We want to see if you've got any degenerate materials on hand. Oh, we notice you've got a, uh, we notice you've got a, ra a rainbow flag on your wall. I guess we're going to beat the shit out of you and your family. What are you going to do about it? Actually, the reality of a Nazi occupation was uh, oftentimes a lot more brutal. Like, oftentimes they would just, they would not, oftentimes there would not be a reason. Oftentimes you would just be grabbed off the street and executed in a mass execution. There was not always even like this, uh, we noticed that you have this or that. Oftentimes it was just being grabbed off the street and just execute it for no reason at all. And like it's a whole big topic that can be discussed as well. Because, okay, that's a topic that I would like to save for Do some other time. Do you able to respond to that? You probably wouldn't. Most people don't live their lives ready to contend with immediate violence. Yeah, that's right. Historically, Fascists take advantage of this. They take advantage of the fact that most people are peaceful, that most people are kind. They take advantage of the fact that most people are, are tired and want to just dr live their lives. And yeah. a small percentage of radicals go so ham so fast. You guys think that people were expecting the night of, uh, the, the night of, uh, of broken glass, the Kristallnacht? The night when Nazis ran out into the streets in mobs and trashed the businesses of Jewish people? Do you think any any of those Jewish people were prepared for that to happen? No. Or do you think they were sitting there going, oh my God, this shit is concerning. It happened to those, to the people who- Some of them just fled. It was like it happened out of nowhere. Now, those of us out here like myself, who, who are trying to give people a, an advanced warning, and of course, my platform is fucking tiny. I'm an inter I'm a fucking entertaining st entertainment streamer. My platform is even smaller, but you know, we have to combine our forces. I talk about video games. I just think politics is important, and I talk about politics a whole bunch, and I really, really, really want people to get on board with this so that we don't have to deal with the horrors that happen in a place like Nazi Germany or in a place like Nazi Italy or in a place like Nazi, or I should say not Nazi, but fascist Spain. Yeah, fascist. Artists uh, who Italy. lived through this shit have been making art about this, and it is scary, and it is terrifying, and they made that art to warn future generations. True. And it's up to us to decide if we're going to be ready to react to that. Yeah. Killjoy says the night of long knives was also a surprise for people expecting violence. It's a fucking problem because normalcy bias is such a brain worm. True. Yes. Do not be one of the people caught on the back foot when Donald Trump is literally screaming on his personal social media. He's saying an unprecedented fraud requires an unprecedented cure. When Donald Trump is saying, I need my followers to be ready to violate the Constitution, True. to terminate laws, to, di to disobey laws, to go to prison for me. When he says that on a public platform into the ears of his followers, take it seriously. I will. Because if you don't pay the price, we will. Marginalized people who are visibly marginalized will pay the price. 
so yeah, this is what happens, you know. Um, where are there? Yeah, we will grow. It's okay. I have a micro platform, but we right now have three hundred sixty-eight subscribers. So I'm catching up to that will person at least. Uh. Did you know? What are your thoughts on all of this? The small Lucy platform. We have to find them. I'm a bit lost. Which is embarrassing, but I cannot find my way to the last boss. Hmm. Must I click on the thing again? Yeah. I will talk about it on the stream. Come on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have friends like that as well. Like things like it cannot happen here. Boots has died. Are both sides? Oh no, both sides. My gosh. Okay, we fight now. Um, come on! The both sides people are usually right wingers. I would just tell, tell you that. You know? Both sides people are usually right wing. Father! Oh, that bedamned clay, that crapper claw blocked the path. Papa! Silence, there is no time for chatter. The beast is the guardian of these ruins. It can change its weakness at will. Make yourselves useful and defeat it. what's happening he just doesn't want to believe that it could happen here
Lalo. Boom. Attack! Hello, Easter! Come on! Destroy you. Yeah. Throw is good. Good work, very good indeed. <laughs> Come on, Daddy, Father, Father, Papa. The Earth Crystal should just be ahead. Come on, I destroy my enemies. Uh -huh. Hora. Yo buddy? Buddy! You debate him. Debate your buddy. Father! Papa! This is bad. Something's gonna be controlling him. I destroy you. Boots! Don't even try it. Step aside. With the four of your greatest gathered like this, I can destroy you all together. How convenient. Grandpa, I'm so glad you're okay. Krile, you krile. Galus memory return. Come on. My favorite part is that he's clearly possessed and Faris and Lena just removed their damn brains. <laughs> Grandpa, I miss you so much. Father! Papa! Oh, don't worry. I just hit him with a little strike of thunder. He should be okay. I just murdered your dad. Come on. <laughs> Where am I? Lena, Sarisa, is that you? Is it really is you? Sarisa, I can't believe it, you're alive. Papa, papa. Oh, oh.
Boom, boom, boom. Give me jobs. Come on. This they do. It is you. Eggs death. Galoof, it's good to see you again. <laughs> Come on. My jobs. Crystals, obey my magic. Give me your power. Smite this vermin. You think we're gonna just sit back and let you do whatever you want? The crystals have been destroyed. Your world will be next, Galoof. I mean, in Final Fantasy III, the crystal did not have to be destroyed in order to give you a job. Okay? Ah, uh, one moment. mom called so yeah in final fantasy 3 you did not need people to the crystals to be destroyed to get new jobs did you notice sorry salenda bar boots and you warriors from another world come on I fear your work is still unfinished. You must not allow the world to be disappear. Come on! Light of Earth, come forth and reclaim your essence from me. What happened? Father, Papa! Get back, the crystal must be saved. New jobs! You can't die? Sarisa, forgive me. I wasn't much of a dad. Oh no. Lena, Sarisa, please stay together. Be strong for one another. Boots. Take care of them, my Zaika and I. Okay. Why, father, you can't? No, don't leave us. I die. He died. He's no more. I get the new job. Come on. Boom. 
Resting with the shards of water spirit. Samurai! We did, I did. The one for you so called hearted. You so called hearted, I cannot believe you. Dragoon! Oh, dancer! Chemist! Come on! And now we have to leave. In the ruins, they're falling. We've got to get out of here, everybody, to the airship. Ma! It is Final Fantasy V. Lena, come on! It's a JRPG. Japanese RPG. He was totally developed, what do you mean? Hold fast, this be a bumpy eye! Okay, let's be honest, okay? Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy VI have a better story than Final Fantasy V, okay? Final Fantasy V is more about the gameplay than about the story, okay? Let's be honest about that. Lena? Father? He's gone, isn't he? Yeah. Boots. Galoop, something wrong? Yeah, we've got to get moving, and now... Hey, what's going on? It's all come back to me, I remember everything. Exef is an evil warlock from my world. 30 years ago, he came here to destroy this world's crystals. And I and three others, the Dawn Warriors, sealed them away with the power of the crystals. Everything was fine for 30 years. We thought it was all over. But something ominous was happening to the crystals. Once we figured it out, we took the meteors and came back here. But I was too late. Not only has Exdev been set free, he has returned to our world. I like four more. Is that because we used too much of the crystal's power? It's true. No, we were the ones who left Exdef on this world in the first place. We should have dragged him back to our world when we were, had the chance. Hello, Kiglar! Okay, we do the game now. So you guys are really going back? Yep, we're gonna see Lex Death again way again. Curious meteorite should still have some juice. Juice! Probably only enough for me one more chip though. Ba boots, Lenda Faris. Thank you so much for everything. I miss you guys. What kind of nonsense is that? We're going with you. There's a point to be made there, I think, Moho. I can't allow it. This is the last meteorite. If you went to our world, we'll never be able to come back here. Farewell. Although in six, characters are a bit of blank slates. Goodbye. Galuf Krile. That's sadly true, Sin Nivine. I think you're right. Come on! Wait, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? So 
we've been fin talking. You know how they're fighting next death in the other world? Well, we've got to avenge Papa! Yeah, what's more? Galoof, he's... He's one of us. Boots! We knew you'd get it, Boots! Boots! Come on! But how do we do that? The meteorites don't have enough juice! We get the juice! What if it's the meteorites we're talking about seed properly knows something? What is he? I don't know. Oh no, I have to go to the seed. Yeah. Oh my gosh, where are you? I wish you well, Sister Rose. The therapy? I need therapy, but I often don't have money. Oh my gosh. I should continue therapy, but money is tight. Tight money. Whoop. Is this you? Come on. Okay, I think this is the wrong city. Pa -pa -pa. Uh. The nine remake? There is a nine remake? Wait, what in what what? What nine remake? What are you talking about? There is a nine remake? Oh wait, I know I know I have to go. There's a remake of Final Fantasy IX? Come on! What do you mean? Wait, where are they? It's true. I need the... Thank you, Giggle. I have a heart. Uh... Library? Okay. I destroy my enemy! Come on! I must change the jobs! Come on, come on, come on! Hehehehe! <laughs> Parere! Ninja more to be able to do a wield? Okay. Let's go. Come on! Where are you? I don't think it's a library. Is it? What is this?
Yeah, it's true, Moho. We need more sprite-based games. I don't think it's the library. I think it's like a different thing. Yeah, I think you're right, Moho. We need more interesting 2D games. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Moho spitting facts today. Come on. Yeah, spitting facts, Moho. You're right. Nine, it's really not though, sir. Nine has a totally different style than, like, Final Fantasy Nine does not fit the realistic style of Seven like at all. I don't know where Sid is. Sid, where are you? You pervert. If anyone remembers where Sid is, please tell me. Because it's like, I don't know. Let me see. I think maybe here. Ah, okay. Maybe, maybe. We will see. I will play it on stream. Where is the... All of Final Fantasy games were cartoonish. A square, square all of a sudden decided to make it realistic for no reason. Final Fantasy VII did not start as a realistic game. The character design was not realistic at all. I'm annoyed by the realism of Final Fantasy VII. Like... Do I need to do a whole rant about... How the... How I don't like how the Final Fantasy VII design has changed. Fantasy 7 Remake follows the Final Fantasy 8 design style. Like, let me see. It's the it's run time, okay? Lucy will run. This is what Lucy runs about. This is what Lucy's runs are all about, okay? There we go. Browser on. It's time. It's time to run. Final Fantasy uh, 7 Cloud Strife. Okay, there we go. Okay, this is how Cloud used to look like. Okay, this is Cloud's old design. And this is Cloud's current design, okay? Like... Suffice this to say, I am not a big fan I am not a big fan of going from this to this, okay? I am not a big fan. Do you know what I mean? Do you understand me? Do you understand what I mean when I say that I am not a big fan of going from this to this? Do you understand? Do you understand my feelings? Do you understand me, chat? Do you understand me? 
Come on. Do you understand my emotions? My emotional state? It's not just a result of better tech. Like, that's... Better tech does not force you to change your art direction, you know? Like, that's not really, like, what's going on here. It's not just better tech, it's the change of uh, art direction, you know? Like... You know, there are many uh, JRPGs, like there are many, it's not about it being goofy, like this is more animated, hand-drawn style, and this is more like a CGI, quasi-realistic style, like Dragon Quest uh, also is done with good technology, you know? Dragon Quest 11 No Dragon Quest is like done with good graphics and stuff and it's able to keep it sort of Akira Toriyama roots, you know? Dragon Quest somehow, you know. Yeah, exactly, Obsessive Orange. Like, Dragon Quest has good graphics, but it retained its... Uh, it retained its Akira Toriyama style, as you can see, you know. I will show you. Look, Dragon Quest Eleven has nice graphics, but it still has Akira Toriyama style, okay? It didn't, even though technology moved forward, uh, you know, Dragon Quest has changed a lot. The technology has moved forward in Dragon Quest and yet it's it has retained its style. So I do not think that it's just about technology, you know? It's true. And I'm not sure I'm a fan of uh, the direction Final Fantasy has moved in, you know? Like, it's a little bit of a peeve of mine. Like... Yeah, it's true. Obsessive or the spitting facts like a... like a giggler one. The funny Obsessive or could also tell me where the seed is, then that would be amazing. Because I don't know where seed is. Please tell me. Please tell me! Come on. Um, hmm. I have no clue. They were here before. Wait, I have to remember. Uh, uh, 
He said something about... Wow. Nobody knows? Do I have to look it up? FF5 guide. Let me see. My gosh. Uh. Okay. 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 Uh. Okay. Okay. Uh. Okay. 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 Uh. We're seen. Like JRPGs! The RPG's designs are in dumb there. Heavy silence and a lot of modern 3D modeling tends to beat the style out in translation. Exactly! Obsessive are just spinning facts. That's true. Like they lose their personality, you know, by trying to make them more quote unquote down to earth and realistic. Like they lose their style, you know? If that makes sense. Yeah. I don't think they're silly. I think they're very nice. I am silly. I am the silliest duck. You know? Oh my gosh. Seal, tell me when to go. Okay, I will have to look for the seed. I think I know. Mm. Yeah. for games like Resident Evil, you know? Yeah, those are cool. Ta -ta. Okay, I have no... Oh my gosh. You see me being stuck in real time? Mm. I have to find the castle. There we go. soldier yeah 
When I say realism, I mean the character design, not uh, not things that happen to the characters. Uh, you know? Just so you know. I mean more realism in the design, not in like the things that the characters do. Why am I even able to go here? when I get stuck in a game. Siri Vane is like a... Uh, how you call it? Veteran, but cannot help me. Siri Vane, tell me where Siri is. Come on. Help me. Oh. Diggity Dan Hot Diggity True What soldier? to read a guide because nobody was to tell me What the heck? Okay, we just have to look around. I the strategy guy did not tell me anything. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. Browser.
FF5 guide. There you go. Um, seed. 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 That's it. No mercy. Uh, uh, okay. Catapult? Where is the catapult? What? What catapult? Let me see. Where is the catapult? I don't get it. Uh... Oh yeah, catapult. Okay. Okay, let's go to the catapult. I got the answer! Come on! I'm the best! I will drink Coca-Cola! Come on! Alright. Did you know that Lucy is now a huge content creator? With 368 subscribers? Lucy is big! Bigger than life itself! Let's go! Ta da! Where's the resting place? No. What? <gasps> A note? How was I supposed to know to go he to go here? How was I by support what? It's a note from Seed. The Adamite left over from the airship renovation is dangerous. Go on to put it back. I hope nothing has happened to them. If they went to return to Adamite, that means... That means what? Oh my god. It's been a long time. Gosh darn. Tycoon Meteorite, okay. My gosh. This game and its wacky riddles. I swear. I am a massive content creator. How was I supposed to know to go here? I swear this game. Okay, let's go. It's time. Uh, is this the thing? Mm -hmm. You're blocking my way, you pervert. Come on, see me 
what you guys. Boots, stay back, it's dangerous. A huge wave of power just started flying from the adamantite. We just wanted to put it back where it came from. Hold on. Bleh. Come on. Jumping jolly boats. The fur here is absorbing the energy from the adamantite. Say, do you think the meteorite could be recharging? If so, it might mean we can travel to Galoop's world. That's as good as any idea as any boot says. What? What are you going on about? They're just nodding. So that's your plan, but this piece of adamant seems too small. It doesn't have enough power to fully recharge the meteorite and get you to the other world. But if the energy from all four meteorites could be combined, It'd be enough to work Galoop's well. Okay. Come on! Yeah. Where is the next meteorite? Okay, let's go, Gigglers! Come on! I go here. Where's the next one? You here? Come on! Is this the next one? Wait here! Leave it to us! Come on! I am waiting. That's that. Let's hurry. Come on! I killed the bomb! Whoa! Bah! Yes! I destroy you! Kura! 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 Oh no. I destroy you. Yeah. You have no chance against me. Kura! 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 Uh, okay. Boom. I think I will win. Destroy you. Okay. No! What the heck? <gasps> I think we should just uh, rest. Using 10. This is what happens when Galoof leaves the party. I just die. Okay, let's go. Oh, wait, I did change job. Samurai!
Or maybe I level up this job again. Uh, what other job did I get? Dancer? Okay. Uh, what other job can I say here? Uh, Camis. Yeah. Okay. I lay wait here again. I wait and I destroy my enemies. It's the natural thing of events. Do you understand my emotions? Okay. Drink! 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 What the heck? I cannot believe this! What's going on here? Dance! Dancing is useless. Oh no. I destroy you. Oh. Thank goodness. I win! And I get zero experience. Are you alright? That was awesome. Come on! Alright, let's go to the next meteorite. Right? Yeah. I cannot believe. I 
I don't believe what this uh, just happened. Okay. Mm. Uh, okay. We go to the next meteor. Here. Come on! Who will be the enemy now? I wait and wait. Oh no! More enemy! Okay, let's go. I can save it. Okay. And then me! I destroy you! That was easy. Ah. Hi, potion. Hello. Much obliged. Now you can leave the rest to us. All right, what's the next meteorite? I have no clue. Uh, where was the next meteorite? I think I know, but maybe. The last meteorite. I think the last meteorite. Matt's meteorite, all right. There was one. Somewhere around here. Meteorai. He's a meteorai. Let's go. Wait here. I am waiting and drinking cola. Come on. You're taking rather long, don't you think? Yeah. We'd better check on them. Okay. Different things are happening. Come on! The real question is when do we get Lucy merch? I need Tron Samurai Duck shirt with come on on it and cut girl hoodie ass up. Hmm. I could think about creating merchandise. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do the merch. Who are you? Are you my friend? Drink! Power drink. Dance. We shall do the merchandise. Boom. Dance. No, what? Taita. Uh -uh. Come on! 
Oui, oui, oui. I destroy you. I knew it. I knew it from the beginning. I was not afraid. <gasps> Toma. <laughs> uh, are you alright? We are now. That was close. That's all for meteorites. Now take a look at this map. What map? How big slated? See where the energy is from all four meteorites intersect? That's the warp point. Now get over there. Be careful. Thanks for everything, you guys. Guys. Thanks for everything, guys. Now we go to the other world. Come on. The world is looking for us. The world. Zawardo. How do I go here? Oh no, this is the work point. We jump into the hall. Okay, I have to uh, pick up the phone, okay? I'm sorry, I'll be right back. My mom is calling. I have returned. Yeah. Sorry, Jacob. You know, mom called from the clinic. And it was like boom, boom, boom. Because she had dinner. Okay. You guys are sure about this? It might, it's like, it's a wonder that the light did not just fade away during the phone call.
Pa pa pa. All right then. Come on. Farewell, the world. Blah. And I say farewell to Coca Cola. Come on. Back. She had rehabilitation today and she said that today's rehabilitation went much better than yesterday's and that dinner was very nice. Tomorrow I will go visit again. Today is the only day that I did not go visit mom because I was feeling a bit tired but tomorrow I will visit again. You know? I've been visiting every single day. The problematic part is that it takes me about three hours, give or take, to visit mom, you know? It's a three hours, give or take, travel one way, so it takes me about six hours both ways to go there. Oh yeah, definitely. Nobuo Ematsu came back to do the remasters himself. Galus were. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's see how many people got the achievement that I just got. 50% people got this far. Only 50% of people that get, have this game got this far. So, yeah. Lena, there's something I've been wondering about. It was way back when, when we were on North Mountain. Why do you risk your life to save that Drake? Do you remember mother? Hi, little. Whenever I see here, you I'm a reminder of her. How do you mean? Monster, look out! Linda Fari! Ninja! Ninja! Come on! You have been destroyed! Gas! Gas by a package. Yar and arrest. This is what happens. Where are we? Mahahaha, welcome to my castle. Is the ex the castle? Ex the Lord Exdev, Galoof and his cohorts have made it to Big Bridge. Fortuitous timing, prepare the giant mirror. Yes, my lord. Perhaps I should thank you, you are about to become quite useful to me. Boots look up in the sky. A bird, no wait, it's our reflections. Grandpa! Boots, Lena, Faris, what in basis is going on? One more step and they die. Hell's bells! 
everybody, fall back! Hell's bells! Come on! Get a gamesh! Steer! Watch them, see that they don't do anything! Exdef you! Bleh! Arg! Krille, I'm borrowing your wind drake. Boots and the others need my help. Release the wind drake! Yes, sir! Bye. Yank! Ha, ah, such a cool scene! Are you seeing this cool scene? Cool, cool, cool. This is the coolest scene. Right! Hey. Thanks, boy! Now go back to Krille, okay? Come on! It's time! There? Well, I mean... Received Boots item and Crystal Shards. Boots, Lena, Faris, hold on, I'm coming! I'm coming! I will change your job. Samurai! The Berserk Samurai. I don't have a katana? Okay. It's law. It's law. Save point. Oh. Berserk Samurai! What? Yeah. I destroy you! I destroy you! Come on! You do? No, I don't think so. Maybe. You, you do? Wait, really? Is this really this kind of game? Wait, do you need a fifth? I didn't, I didn't think Final Fantasy was such a game. I put down the controller! Do I have any potions? High potion. Uh, here you are. Oh no, too many. Too many, too many. Chicky, 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 chicky. Chicky, 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 chicky. Run away. Chicky, 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 chicky. I ran away. Chicky, 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 chicky! Oh my 
Eh bien, non. Ok, I will try to run away. Mama, 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 mama. Maybe I'm too strong. Ok, I'll destroy the enemy. Chiki, 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 chiki. I destroy. Ok, I did my best to run away. But I guess I'm too cowardly. I should be less of a coward. Who goes there? Girgame! It's you, Girgame! Take this! Ah! Girgame! Rach! Let's give a man. Take this! Let's give a man. Oh oh. Rach! Let's give a man. Inconceivable! Well, well done. That's enough of beating for today. Don't step out of line again. Come on! Hey, hey. I win! Hello. Kalu, sit tight. I have you out of there in the jiffy. Thanks, old man. Sorry for messing up your plans. We just wanted... Save it! I'll verbally berate you later, after we've blown this pop stand. Come on! Drink! Dance, dance, dance! Drink! Okay, let's go. The Berserk Samurai! Uh, okay, let's open the door. Did nothing. The mystery dance did nothing. What can't you do? Wow, well, better not let them see me. Wait. What the hell, Metal Gear Solid? What was that? So how do I open the door? Oh. A new world map. Dance, dance, dance. Devil fish. 
Dance, dance, dance. Oui, oui. Okay, let's go. The Big B. Our favorite music. Best music. Ta -ra -ra -ta -ra 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 dance, dance, dance. Dance, dance, dance. Oh. Ninja is so strong. One of the most iconic musics in the game, in the series! Dance, dance, dance! Haha, -ha! guess who's been waiting behind this door this whole time? Yes, it's me! Took you long enough to. I was getting worried you might have gotten lost. Anyway, it's go time.
Okay. I destroy you. Dance, dance, dance. This is the best game. Oof. Drink. Dance, dance, dance. Bam, 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 bam. <gasps> I have nice voice. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much. That means a lot. I'm still working on my voice, you know? I am still working on it. <gasps> Jump. What the? Some more? Hey. All right. <gasps> Destroy. <gasps> I destroy my enemies. Yeah, it's a short stream. Uh, I must take my lead. Please, I'm like a relaxing streamer. I will debate. I will debate my way. Okay, we have to cure ourselves. Elephant Samo Titan I don't think it will work on flying enemies. No. Miss It works on flying enemies? That's so wacky. Uh -huh. <gasps> I almost ran away. Summoner is overpowered, I guess. Krile, Grandpa, the barrier, look out. Grandpa. What happened? Is it game over? May we die? Grandpa! Grandpa! Did we die? Did we get fried? Yeah.
Any idea where this is? Yeah, this is gonna be the Glossiana, the back of beyond, crawling with monsters too. Figures would be shown someplace like this. Karu, sorry about all this. I mean, we came to help you, but you ended up helping us. As usual, I meant it, you know. You really didn't have to come. Metal some bums the out of you. Still, it's good to see you again. New Muzi! I take this. We save game. Is there any city? No city? No cities? Dance, dance, dance! Summon! Yeah, cool music, right? We will defeat Final Fantasy V. We win. We win forever. I think. But no cities. Where's the cities? Oh, we must get a katana. Or else, if we don't get a katana, then we don't stand a chance. Mama, 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 boom, boom, boom. What can I do for you? Blink shell? What can I do for you? Drain black beer. What can I do for you? Comet slow garter. Come on! Okay, let's go. Let's go buy some weapon. About weapon. Who are you? This is the frontier town of Regolin. Okay, I want your weapon. Give me your weapon. Who are you? He has the weapon store. Ashura? Orihar cum drill. Ooh. Watch this. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh. Okay, let's get get our more. Right? And then we win. We win the whole game. 
Does the text box change? He runs the armor store. Wow, the text box changes. Uh, golden hair. Ninja suit. Let's go! And now we're... Ooh! Now where did my ribbon disappear to? Can I give her the ribbon? Can I bring her the ribbon? What can I do for you? Okay, nice. This is what happens when you mess with the ducky. That fortress, the south is the seared castle of Kuza. The weapons used in the legendary war a thousand years ago are sealed away in there. We must get the weapon. This town's got the best brew in the whole world. Is that so? Stay the brew. Where's the piano? What the heck? I see. Hey, not too shabby. Earn 100 gil. I see. I see. Oh. Piano! A cup of regal. Brew. I thought you could buy things for the chemist here, but I guess not. Uh, bah. I did see a Moogle. Moogle? That big fat liar says he's a Moogle. He's a liar, liar, pants on fire. I heard Rex Death has returned, but I'm sure he had never bothered with an out of the way product loan like this. <clears throat> I think so. Let's see. I think you can. I think, let's see. Come on. Hey, not too shabby. Earn 100 gil. Let's see. Hey, that's too shabby. Earn 100 gil. I think you can do this forever. Yeah, it seems like you can do it forever. Okay. But I'm not sure I want to do this, okay? Let's go to Dean. But yes, it does seem that you can do it. Well, I'll be. Why do they have sip of their mouths open? Oh. 
Pwede ni Galuf gaw. The bar. Ah, now that's the stuff. Finally, a chance to try the famed regal brew. Kind of burns a puff down your throat. Hello, you drunk. Oh, boots, what's up? Couldn't sleep. Um, come on. Pull up a chair. Come on. Galoof, I'm sorry. If we hadn't butted in, you would have been able to get into Exdef's castle. Nah, if we, we if we've gotten in, the barrier would have destroyed us. I hadn't the slightest inkling it had been finished. In fact, it's only thanks to you that we weren't all crushed. Galoof. Boots, you knew that once you came here, you could never return, so why did you do it? No particular reason. Boots, thank you. Hey, don't worry about it. What do you mean? Can't they just go to using a meteor or something? It feels like you could just go in a meteor. Like, did they run out of meteors or something? What can I do for you? Hypotheon. Phoenix down. Ether! Come on! I'm so happy. I'm happier than I have ever been. Okay, let's go. The other round town is calling with Monster. Monster? It's true. Monster has retired. Okay, let's see. What do I do from here? Wait, do I have to leave? Okay, let's go. What is this? Woo! Dance, dance, dance! Okay, new place. <laughs> what is this place? Shield Dragon! Uh -oh. What the heck? It's true, thank you. Uh -uh. Oh no! What's happening? Thank you, thank you, Brina. I think I might be done. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna leave. For now.
What the heck? This place kicked my butt. Dance, dance, dance. Oh, the stream is not over yet. The stream is on forever. Well, not forever, but the stream is still on for now. Yeah, it was a game over. sure where am I supposed to go but it's okay flying pig enemies weird castles what's going on some more titan everything is zombifying me here What the? Uh, how do I kill this status? What? Manifesto? Yeah, I did. Wait, Brina, can you link the manifesto? We will react to it, okay? Brinda, we will react to the manifesto, okay? Link it, link it, link it! Come on! Yeah, I got warp. Dance, dance, dance! Fight down. We just got thrown into a different part of the world, I think. It's not a different dimension. I think we just got thrown into a different continent. Let's go here. I will write the manifesto. I will write a ducky festa. What do you think? Holy water. I will write a ducky festa. Ducky Festa! Come on! Woo! Increases level! Yeah, I'm gonna do a Ducky Festa. Lucy will do a Manifesta! It's gonna be the best one. The best Manifesto is a Lucy Manifesto. Ducky Festa! Are you looking forward to the Ducky Festa about, I don't know who, but it would be glorious. Ducky Festa! Yeah. You might be about Steven? About... Should I make a Ducky Festa about poly people? Okay. Wait! It's not cured! Holy crap. Holy water. Show me the manifesto. Yeah, ducky festo. I cannot wait to read it. I will have other streamers, uh, like uh, 
Feel free to do it for me. Let me see. I'm a glutton for punishment coming back here. It's true. That's actually true. Dance, dance, dance. Oh, my mom is calling me again. One moment. Okay, my mom called and I get news! All seven of you can hear the news in real time, okay? The news is that my mother's stitches have been taken off, you know? My mom's stitches have been taken off today. Exciting? My mom's stitches have been taken up. Did you know? So my mom is stitchless now. Yeah. It's true. How strong is this enemy? Uh -oh. I think this place might be too strong for me. Yeah, I will visit mom tomorrow. They will like decided that. And I will get her glasses. She needs new glasses. She cannot read without the glasses. The flying pig enemy! Did you know? Let me see. You know, I might slow soon surpass that will person. Let me see. Mm. Will. Will uh, Where's that what's the name of that person that what's the name of the channel of that person that um debated poly people will that wanted to do that whole panel? Do you know his channel? I'm catching up to Will. Okay, let's look for the Loner Box Manifesto. Loner Box Manifesto. Where is it? Uh... Where is it? There's no new video from... Mm. This channel has no playlists. Where is it? Where is it? Where is the link? Where did you link it? Did you link it on the Discord? Uh,
Ethereum. Link it in the... Can you link it on the Google card or on here? I cannot see it. And then we'll go through it. Yeah, we'll go through the manifesto. Link it here. Oh. Mugu! Mugu! Kopa! Never thought we'd see a Mugu out here. Mugu? Strange little creatures that live in forests. They're pretty timid though, so you really catch sight of one. Let's help it. Mama! Uh, I cannot. Can you link it on the giggle card? Yeah. here I'm pretty far like we're on the second world so we still have Galoof I would say I'm pretty far I think Where, where, where is it? Have you started a new topic? Politic. Uh, manifesto! Okay, let's look for it, okay? Addressing the allegations! Okay, let's look into it. Okay, let's do this. Press 1 if you want me to look to react to it and now. Press 2 if you just want some more Final Fantasy content. 1. Loner Box 2. More Final Fantasy. This is your choice. 1. For more Final Fantasy chilling. 2 for some loner box drama. Yeah, you want some more chili? For now? None of you want the loner box drama? Oh my gosh. I would like to talk to though. Can someone get though here so I can obey? Oh, yeah, I did? I have? Really? I have? Oh my god. This is what happens when you have a bird brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is what you get when you trust me. This is what happens when you trust me. Like, um, this is what happens when you... 
This is what happens when you trust a bird brain person. Um, okay, let's do this. Let's copy link and let's uh, check it out. My gosh. Five seconds pass and I forget my own rules. This is like, this is classic Lucy. This is classic Lucy content when I say uh, one and then just seconds later I forget and switch it. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. What the heck? Oh my gosh. Okay, let's go. The link, of course, did not copy. Copy and paste. There we go. Okay. Loner boss. I heard that the manifesto starts at 20. We're gonna watch it. Hi, Ellen Degenerate. How's it going? Ooh, Ellen! We've talked to we've talked to Ellen. We have talked to Ellen on stream today, which is interesting, right? Like the the drama is coming together. Is uh, Loner Box angry at the chat again? See, Lucy is like an original streamer. What makes Lucy original in the streaming sphere is that Lucy does not get angry at the stream. I did a six hour stream once I can confirm brain mush at four L or four. <gasps> oh. So yeah, like uh I guess what makes me an original streamer is that I don't get angry at my own stream. At my own chat. Oh yeah. Okay, that's um yeah, that's a that's a strong pull. Five voters. Okay, sick. Sick. Okay. Who is sick? I don't really know how to start this. Okay, shit. So. What text? It's visible now, I think. Are you sitting comfortably? I'm always comfortable, yeah. I'm pretty chill. Okay. Uh. So, my dudes. Oh no! I know where. I'm not the one rule. I am not a dude. Addressing the allegations, demon mama, President Sunday, and Doe. They don't care about the truth. They just make shit up the more ridiculous the claim the better anonymous twitter user 2022 this is a legit a manifesto what's up with those people what's up with steven verse and the manifestos this is so funny addressing the allegations that sounds so serious that makes it sound so serious i, I don't know IB? What is IB? Can you tell me what is an IB? Yogi Bear. Yogi Bear Entertainment? Do you mean Yogi Bear? What is YB? Is it Yogi Bear? Yogi Bear Enterprise? What is IB? Why B? Is it Yogi? Ah, Young Black Economist. Okay, I thought we would mean Yogi Bear or something. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. Okay, okay, okay. I swear. Okay. I don't think it's related to that, this manifesto thing. Oh yeah, I saw. That was that whole thing was really 
that whole thing was really strange, right? Because President Sunday uh, quoted a speech or something. Literally just argued with three people and did a whole manifesto about it. Oh my gosh, I should make a manifesto about people. Cool, that I'd sat a little while. I guess it's all the rage now. A while ago. I don't know if you guys remember me saying that like, uh, I didn't want to keep this topic on my YouTube channels. Didn't really want to make a huge deal out of it just because it's like, not really the kind of discussion that I think is the most important thing in the real world or like, in the real world. This is like, this is like the most funny thing is when people say, I really didn't want to do this. I didn't really want to speak about it, but I guess you have uh, forced my hand or something. Can you provide context for the manifesto? What's this about? So basically, it all started with, uh, I think this all started with, I think this is about the uh, genocide thing. Like the... The, the the discussion that Loner Box had with uh, poly people about trans genocide, which Loner Box denies. And I think it's like President Sunday um, sort of uh, invited Loner Box to talk about it. And then Loner Box said that he is bored and has better things to do and started playing World of Warcraft. And then Demon Mama also reviewed the discussion that Loner Box had with uh, Poly people. And um, Loner Box is angry that he is being called a genocide denier. So he decided to do a manifesto, I guess. I think this is what it's all about. Yep, funny that Poly isn't mentioned or. Galia or Chariot or Lucy or anyone who else who called uh, Jean out. Not a huge deal makes manifesto. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Demon Mama. People make Demon Mama into their like personal boogie, boogie girl. Demon Mama is that boogie girl this very specific topic and especially which is a very but kind of which is saying because boogie is like uh, my discord mod and boogie is great loner box was watching dj muel and kita chats talk about trans genocide and he said yeah, he has having none of it someone told polly she came into his chat and they had a debate when it was the beginning yeah basically that's, that is what it is. I decided that I think uh, since that DJ little Mouel. debate we had about six, seven weeks ago and the things that have transpired ever since. Sheesh. Uh, the way people have behaved, the way the a lot of people have tried to get... Six weeks have passed already since that fateful debate about transgenocide. Time flies when you're a duck. My, yeah, we love Boogie. Okay, I have to go to the toilet. Don't go away. We're gonna cover the manifesto, okay? It's gonna be a great time. In fact, uh, you should invite all of your friends to... You should invite all of your friends to come watch the stream, okay? And when I return, we should have 10,000 people in the chat, okay? I will be right back. I have to go to the toilet. Because otherwise, we might have an incident. Come on. I will be right back.
I am back. I had to take a sandwich, you know. Um, manifestos remind me of the intervention episode of Always Sunny. People do something slightly wrong and everyone yells manifesto instead of intervention. Yeah. I should do a manifesto. Ducky Festo. Would you read my Ducky Festo? Who should be it be about? Write in chat who you think Lucy should do a Ducky Festo about, okay? It'll be a really serious affair. Gaslight me and my audience about what happened in that debate and the events that followed. Uh, all the gaslighting stuff that's happened. Gaslighting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just thought it'd be good to put everything into one place. Gaslighting. So. We all good with that? Are we all set? This is 30 pages. I don't know. I've noticed that people from the Steven Universe. Uh, Say gaslight when someone disagrees with them. Danny DeVito, I can. Oh, thank you, Brina. Thank you so much. You are the best giggler, okay? Oh. Oh, no. The viewer count is becoming smaller. <gasps> oh, my gosh. So, okay. we're going to have to be strapped in for a while. All right, I'm gonna... Very well sitting comfortably? I'm comfortable, yeah. I am... Okay. I try. I try to be comfortable. Don't worry though, guys. There's a lot of... Um, there are some things in here that you've probably all heard before. Well, why do you repeat definitely yourself? Definitely haven't. Okay, so there's gonna be quite oh. a few things. Also, just as a prior... This sounds like a gossip corner, okay? There yeah, might be some gossip that you have not heard yet, but, you know. Wow. This sounds like a gossip corner. <laughs> there are certainly things that you have not heard before. Oh, am I? I'm actually uh, covering up the... I'm actually covering up the little honor box here. No big deal, 30 pages, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna be here. Mm. And I'm gonna have to... Okay. Alright, that's fine, that's fine. It's like we're too... How you call it? Two heads on two sides of the screen. It's me. I'm gonna become bigger for now. And then we continue. A prelude. Um, if any of you are offended by me um, leaking DMs from one or two people. I'm offended uh, by you. I, as far as anyone who's ever DM'd me in the past, I will never, never leak anyone's DMs unless they either lie about or misrepresent the contents of those DMs in public, so. So, in other words, um, translation, I will never leak DMs unless uh, I feel like it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. What's happening here? Uh, thank you. Just okay, a warning. Let's go. Okay. let's go into this. Hello, Ferros Line. We are here to cover... The manifesto of Loner Box about Dame and Mama, President Sunday, and the Dohe. See, I have my I have my special way of pronouncing everybody's uh, name. I have my own special way of pronouncing everybody's name. Addressing the allegations. Okay. Demon Mama. Demon Mama. Sunday, and Doe. They don't care about the truth. They just make shit up. 
the more ridiculous the claim, the better. From an anonymous Twitter user in the year of our Lord 2022. Oh, come on. When you do things with like quotes like this, it's supposed to be a profound and smart quote, not something like they just make shit up. <sighs> the loner box hole grows deep, I know. I know. My gosh. Okay, let's continue. This is serious business. It's a manifesto after all. I will move myself a bit so you can see the text. And let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. This is serious business after all. Manifestos and such. Stephen has taught his disciples well. It began with an egg. On October 20th, I was reacting to a video featuring the content creators DJ Mule and Kira Chats. A I began with an egg? Is this what? What? Why with an egg? Why? What's happening? What is ha- Ginger Snaps back. Hello. Welcome. What? Oh no. A 30 page manifesto in which I shall use the phrase sawing out in the opening paragraph. <laughs> oh my gosh, sawing out. What's happening? What's the obsession of the Steven Universe with the term soy and chad? Oh my gosh. AKA Bad Bunny. Bad in the Bunny. Video, they described the state of trans rights in the US and the UK <clears throat> as, quote, an ongoing genocide, to which I disagree. Okay. This is ground zero, where it all started. Ground zero. Why are you clicking out of this? Of course, this is a good time for Twitch to be slow. I want to be clear to people um, that I want to make sure we can, we can discuss this. Just how genocidal terms are. Manifesto. Really genocidal. I know we've been using that word a lot to describe what's happening um, in many parts of the world. Yeah. I'm talking right now specifically about the UK and the US, but it's not exclusive to these two parts of the world. Um, of what uh, people are doing to, like, trans are doing to trans people, uh, including trans children. And I know we've been calling that genocide, and it's true, but yeah, it doesn't change the fact that this is definitely actually... Definitely True. And I disagreed with that. Okay. Of course. This sparked an argument between me and my audience. About 40 minutes into me sawing out at my viewers, a streamer named Polly People appeared in my chat to join in the debate. Wait, what? After about, about 40 minutes into me sawing out? So what, what, does, what does that even mean? What does that mean even after 40 minutes of me sawing out? What does he mean by that? Also, why would you get angry and argue with your own chat? Why would you argue with your audience? That's so weird. Babe. I offered to have a conversation with her, and she accepted. Okay. Today, a month and a half later, I am now in a position where enough people have misrepresented this debate and the events that have transpired since that I feel like a response is necessary. This is not intended for the other people involved, as I don't believe they have shown any willingness to honestly engage with my views on this issue. Of course, nobody... Uh, when somebody disagrees with you, it means they do not engage. This is like a classic Stephen tactic. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is not in order for the other people involved. True. Didn't President Sunday just invite Loner Box for a talk, not even to a debate, but just for a conversation? Everyone is bad faith. I'm only doing this for my own peace of mind and so my audience has something to refer to in the likely event that this is ever brought up in the future. I On see. top of that, the behavior of some of the people in... So basically, I'm doing it to make myself look good and I'm, using, and I'm giving this bludgeon to all of my fans to use against people who would disagree with me. This is like a translation. This is like a more down-to-earth translation of what is being said here. I'm giving you a bludgeon to use against people who disagree with me, you know? <gasps> oh no. Ginger snaps. Involved in this has been a little bit too interesting for me not to comment on. As for you guys right there, I've seen you all taking to the Twitter front lines to defend my honor. Well. Might be a bit easier now, who knows. My honor, Jesus Christ. Const 
I'll be contacted Sunday to talk. Sunday even told him exactly what they would be talking about and was clear it would be chilled. And last minute, longer box pulled out. Yeah, so bad fate of uh, President Sunday. How dare he? Sheesh. Because I feel like my views have been so grossly mischaracterized, I'll start by laying out my positions so they are all easily accessible and in one place. Oh my god. Are we gosh. okay so far? I don't know. A good start. I'm not sure. I don't know how to feel about this start. It's so strange. Like, starts with you sawing out for 40 minutes and then arguing with your chat, and then saying that everybody who disagrees with you is bad faith, and that you're not, you're not even doing this to discuss it with them, you're just doing this to feel good and to give your um, audience a weapon to use against others. I'm not sure how I feel about this beginning. Like, I don't know. Oh, Loner Box, Spirit, you know, and Virtue is in danger. Protect the little ladies on her. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not sure how I feel about this start. How do we feel about it? Write about it in the chat so you can uh, we can answer Loner Box's question. My position on trans rights in the US. As I understand it, the last two mm. decades have seen an explosion in trans acceptance and visibility. The number of trans children getting access to affirming care has been rising steadily over the last few years. Trans people are increasingly represented in the entertainment industry as equal human beings, whilst the insensitive tropes of the mid-2000s and before have aged out of fashion. To be fair, the US, well, this is changing, but in the US in general, when it comes to trans rights, the US is light years ahead uh, of places like Poland. Poland, um, Poland is like super bad when it comes to trans rights. What is what is it with what uh, uterus and long form writing? I can write this long, and I'm supposed to be able to. <laughs> well, you know, he has to give people a weapon to use, but. Even though the last two decades have seen an explosion in trans acceptance and visibility, all of it can be rolled back. And this is basically what the far-right politicians are doing. Keep in mind, we have heard this discussion between some politicians. I don't remember who they were, but they said, if we cannot reach the public, if the public accepts things like trans rights too much, then we will just go, we will just ignore the public and go change the right, the laws directly. I remember something like that being said between, among U.S. politicians, that if they cannot sort of count on public support when it comes to bigotry, then they would, will just change, rewrite the laws, whether or not the public likes it. I'm seriously concerned in where I'm at. This isn't going to be good for trans people, especially the M and the O. Plus, doesn't need any more hate, which he's been getting so much unfair recently. Oh. Meanwhile, polling numbers in Europe and North America show a consistently increasing level of support for trans rights. Unfortunately, this progress has also been part of a double-edged sword. The progression of trans rights has recently been coupled with an unprecedented level of scrutiny and disgust from the right wing. Trans people are now, perhaps more than ever, living under a magnifying glass and being cynically used as a political wedge issue by conservative lawmakers and pundits who seem incapable of winning support by any means other than culture wars and fear-mongering. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous for a couple of reasons, okay? Do you remember that thing that Ellen uh, DeGeneres has done with um, Sonso? Do you remember it? Like, I will tell you this. This same argument that, um, lon that the loner box is using here could have been made about Jewish people in the Weimar Republic, okay? I will read it to you. As I understand, the, la the, la the recent time in the Republic has seen an explosion 
in trans acceptance and visibility. Keep in mind that the Weimar Republic had the first, like the this big clinic that did research on trans rights, etc. It was a very welcoming society. And let's see. Hmm. See, the progression of trans rights has recently been coupled with an unprecedented level of scrutiny and disgust from the Nazi party. Trans people are now, perhaps more than ever, living under a magnifying glass. You can even, you can even like, uh, you know, and being cynically used as political wedge issue by conservative, uh, by Nazi lawmakers and pundits. Uh, who seem incapable of winning support by any means other than culture wars and fear-mongering. This could be said about the Nazi party and Jewish people and, uh, and other types of uh, groups that they targeted. So what? Like, what? This is like, this is a strange way to lessen the problem, okay? I definitely could have... The recent right and black uh, lash make it a big threat. This is who's really brought out the allies, yeah. So this is a really strange way to try to minimize, like, minimize the level of the danger that this sort of, like, is, you know? This is not scrutiny. What do you mean? Like, also scrutiny and magnifying glass sort of implies that there is a case to be made for trans people to be, like, scrutinized. Bigotry is not scrutiny. Those are two different things, you know? Putting someone under a magnifying la uh, glass and under scrutiny is different than bigotry. It's not the same. Where Republicans may otherwise worry about alienating potential voters by attacking migrants and African Americans, they don't have this issue when it comes to trans people. The result has been an onslaught of dehumanization, bunk science, and nearly 400 anti-trans bills filed in the last four years. Though only 39 bills of these have become law, though only 39 of these bills have become law, their impact shouldn't be understated. I mean, you are understating it. Yeah, there is no case. It's all lies, correct? Exactly. Like, calling it, even saying that it's bully, even framing it as putting trans people under scrutiny is, like, messed up, in my opinion. Is this outright holding water for the right, uh, right uh, on this now? Like, it's very strange. Like, it's basically calling the right wing, like, uh, just misinformed people that they just try to be scrutinous, which is, like, a very strange thing to say, that they're just trying to be scrutinous, you know? In Texas, Greg Abbott's insane directive has allowed the state to open child abuse investigations into parents who provide gender-affirming care to their trans children. These investigations have been... Which, mind you, is abuse in itself, you know? To take away the health care that children need is abuse in itself. And some people say that children cannot consent to medical procedures. This is untrue. In many states, children can and do not need the approval of... Um, grown-up people to make decisions about medical procedures. So this is false. I think he's saying it's bad, but it's not genocide bad. He hasn't listened to anyone or moved at all. Right, right, right. right. Repeatedly blocked thanks to the works of organizations like PFLAG and the ACLU, but it shouldn't be surprising that several families have already fled the state. Mm -hmm. These are just two articles about the bills. The recent groomer panic has become the latest addition in the right's playbook of stochastic terrorism, and the wave of attacks against trans people is no coincidence. I don't think there's any hyperbole in saying that... Wait, hold on, hold on, this is interesting. So you have... You don't like the word genocide, 
But you do not shy away from calling it terrorism? Like, genocide is not a word that we want to use because it's too hyperbolic in your mind, it's too much, but the word terrorism is perfectly fine? Like, this is... now I'm a bit confused, to be honest. Like, you would go to... Uh, framing it less terrorism, but genocide is just too much? Every single hack commentator who thought it was a good idea to spend the last two years smearing trans people as child abusers and predators deserve mm. their share of the blame for events such as the recent shooting in Colorado. Unfortunately, this whole saga has almost nothing to do saga? with disagreements about the empirical facts of what is happening. If you oppose every single one of these bills and you believe the best thing to do now is support the trans advocacy groups and legal organizations that have been working tirelessly to keep more of these laws from passing, or to mutual aid orgs that have been extremely effective in protecting trans people from laws that have been passed, mm. we agree. Or, if you are from the more voshist wing of the internet, you might- Voshist wing of the what? Voshist wing of the internet? What does that mean? I also think it's a good idea for LGBTQ people and allies to arm themselves in case things take a turn from the worst. To that, I also agree. I've been to the US a couple of times. It's a strange place with a very unpredictable future. And if I lived there, I'd probably want to be armed too. If you are in the okay. States and you're interested in helping, I've linked a few charities, advocacy groups, mutual aid orgs, and legal groups in the description. So... Which will be in the YouTube video. These were recommended to me by trans people in my community. They all accept donations, and most of them are looking for volunteers, so go wild. Go wild, okay. I've tried to keep the rest of the story as educational as possible, but for the most part, the rest is internet bullshit. So I guess... So I guess when the survivor of Auschwitz-Birkenau in his speech said that the treatment of minorities like the LGBT uh, can can lead to a new Auschwitz. I guess uh, that's internet bullshit. I guess when the survivors of the Holocaust warn us that a new genocide can happen if we mistreat minorities, I guess that's internet bullshit. Is that what I'm hearing? Like, is that correct? Would he debate uh, an Auschwitz survivor out of his positions? Like, internet bullshit, okay. Like, maybe Lonerbox should actually go out and learn real people who experienced real, like, the opinions of real people who have experienced real genocide in the real world. You know? Like... What can I say? The person that says... The person that talks about internet bullshit the loudest is busy making internet bullshit manifestos. Like, people that cry about the real world the loudest are the ones that usually are the busiest making internet manifestos. I'm just gonna say that, okay? Like, this is a bit ironic coming from the person that is just now reading a manifesto that by your own admission you have just made for yourself and your internet audience. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get to the internet bullshit in a minute, but we'll okay. start with this brother. Okay. Are we all okay, chat? Are we handling it? It's gonna be a little. Are you okay? Are you okay, my internet audience? <laughs> why cry? <I'm... laughs> oh my gosh! You are doing internet stuff right now. But semi-scripted here as well. So. Like, so what is this smug looking down on content produced for the internet? Does not, this doesn't really make your case very strong considering that your main activity is on the internet. Yeah. 
you know? Like... What's on the screen might not make a complete sense on its own, but it's close enough. I see. My position on genocide. To be Is Lonerbox warning us in advance that what he's saying may not make much sense? Clear. The one thing I'm contesting here is that there is currently an ongoing genocide in the United States. However unlikely I think it is, I do not disagree that the current situation, in particular the rhetoric and political ambitions of various pundits and legislators, could lead to a genocide in the future, and have said as much in my very first stream on this topic. I think we're at the beginning stages of a potential genocide. Okay, that's a bit more acceptable. That's me reading a chat. Because you can look at the stages of genocide and be like, you know, stage one, two, three, four, five of dehumanization, of otherization, of uh, mistreatment, like uh, legal mistreatment and all that. Yeah, you can see all of that. Problem is, like every ethnic minority in every country in the fucking world is at some stage of genocide. <laughs> okay, the problem is like, that's not what makes it a... Wait, I'm sorry, what? This is a nonsensical statement like this, I'm sorry. What? In stages of a potential genocide? Okay, that's a bit more acceptable. That's me reading a chat. Because you can look at the stages of genocide and be like, you know, stage one, two, three, four, five of dehumanization, of otherization, of uh, mistreatment, like uh, legal mistreatment and all that. Yeah, you can see all of that. Problem is, like every ethnic minority in every country in the fucking world is at some stage of genocide. <laughs> no, that's nonsensical. No, 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 no. That is a nonsensical statement. No, not every minority in every single country in the world is mistreated. I am sorry to inform you. Not every single minority everywhere in every country in the world is mistreated. That is not what's... <laughs> okay. The problem no. is, like, that's not what makes it a genocide. Okay? That just means that we have like systemic discrimination and like unequal rights. That's not genocide though. Okay, the same position I hold now. This is a this is a nonsensical statement. Not every, not every single minority in every single country in the world is facing um, systemic discrimination. That's like a nonsensical statement to make. And second of all, if we look at the stages of genocide and you agree that we are on stage 4 out of 10, then you agree that we are in genocide, by definition, if those are the stages of genocide. What is this? That's true. That is true, I guess. But the problem if, if this is... So why did he treat Polly with such contempt and try and bait her into breaking TOS? I'm not sure. The problem is that the whole mm, classification of minority and major majority is also a thing that would that came to be with the creation of the nation state and nation minority is a minority group is basically it means the group that is outside of a nation basically you know the majority is the nation and the minority within a country is a group that is somehow outside of the nation that is how the classification worked. Does that make sense? This is the this is how the concept of a minority was born. So in this case, yeah, I would agree, you know. In this sense I would agree. We should absolutely recognize a lot more genocides past represent but being a demographic minority doesn't necessarily mean that it's genocide yeah like 
A demographic minority is a concept that was born for the concept of the nation state. You, you should keep that in mind. Before, the concept like of a minority did not actually really function in countries before the formation of nation states, you know? Like, things were not really mm, talked about in such terms of majority populations and minority populations. Like, this, this, this is not exactly how things were discussed before. My disagreements are with the following. One, that there is currently an ongoing genocide in, against trans people in the United States. And I guess we disagree. And two, that Republican lawmakers are currently legislating with the specific intent, covert or otherwise, to kill trans people. I disagree with those two statements. So I guess I disagree with your disagreement. You know? I guess we find ourselves in an impasse. First, I will try to make as clear as possible my opinion on what is and isn't a genocide. I'll give two of the most well-known definitions and then my own thoughts, which rest somewhere in between them. So, I see. Why does it have to be in between? What is a genocide? I got a 30 pages manifesto. Genocide is, first and foremost, an international crime. International crime being a collective term for the most extreme violations of international law. The others being war crimes, crimes against humanity, and the crime of aggression. Of these four core crimes, genocide is widely understood to be the gravest. The term uh -huh. was first coined in 1944 by the Polish lawyer Rafael Lemkin, primarily in response to the Holocaust, but also to other instances in history such as the Armenian Genocide under the Ottoman Empire. After outlining his thoughts in a book called Axis Rule and Occupied Europe, Lemkin led the campaign to have genocide recognized under international law. His definition was then negotiated and narrowed by the United Nations and was finally codified as an independent crime in 1948. Yeah, the Armenian genocide was definitely a genocide. Actively, directly killing isn't the only thing that means genocide or causes deaths and erasure. That's right. That is a very important to note. And because you have brought this up, I would like to read something to you, okay? I would like to read a quote, okay? Is it okay for me to read a quote to you? It's very... It's actually about Iraq, the Iraq war. Because someone has told me that I would never accept the war in Iraq and what happened here in Iraq as genocide committed by the United States. And to that, I have a, an important quote that... Mm, I have an important quote that I would like to share with all of you, okay? Are you ready? Uh, I will sort by type. U.S. Genocide in Iraq. Are you ready to hear about some genocide? that you might have not heard a lot about? Ethnic cleansing is not exactly a euphemism for genocide because ethnic cleansing refers to taking a population and moving it somewhere else, if that makes sense. Mm. So, Ethnic cleansing was a thing that also started with the inception of the nation state because, um, because it's like this. Before the creation of the nation states, we had many different peoples living all across. I'm, I will give you an example of Europe, okay? Uh, you had many different 
peoples living all across Europe for many generations. You had Germans, you had um, like Jewish people, you had um, many different peoples like uh, Russians, you had Polish people. Like it was all mixed up all around Europe because people did not have the concept of national identity. So they were just um, Germans that lived here, Germans that lived there, but they did not feel, when you were a German, you did not feel this sense of belonging to a nation called the Germans, you know? And when the nation state was created in the nation, suddenly one group, one dominant group in a region declared itself to be the nation, for example, of Germany, and the nation state decided that it holds dominion over an area where the nation of Germany lives, and all other peoples were declared outsiders, and sometimes even the enemy of the nation. And so, those populations were moved from Germany somewhere else. They were kicked out of Germany. And that is what we refer to as an ethnic cleansing. When you remove populations that are deemed to be not part of the nation. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? This is what I'm saying making sense to you. I'm actually reading a really nice book. I, I still have not finished the book called uh, The Ethnic Cleansing, The Ethnic and Political Cleansings of the 20th Century. But does that make sense? Yeah? Am I making sense? So now I will read to you about the genocide that is not being talked about enough. The U.S. genocide in Iraq, okay? Okay, I will read a fragment to you, okay? Uh, I will tell you something. Okay, this is an important part of what I'm talking about. What is a genocide? This is my little fragment of what is a uh, genocide. <clears throat> what is a genocide? Of all terms in the lexicon, genocide is the true word for what is happening in Iraq. The controversy the word el elicits reveals its potential. Some warn some warn against using the term so as not to debase its currency. This is a misunderstanding of what genocide means. Others fear that if used wantonly, anti-war protest may appear sensationalist. In reality, any other word for U.S. actions in Iraq is dishonest. Looking closer, we find that the word genocide has two lives, its common meaning and its legal substance. Commonly, genocide is taken to mean the total annihilation of a people. Nothing less counts, hence skepticism in using the word. On rapid reading, UN General Assembly Resolution 96 of 1946, authorizing the drafting of a genocide convention, suggests the same understanding. Genocide is a denial of the right of existence of entire human groups, as homicide in the, is the denial of the right to live of individual human beings. But this definition bears reading again, for it is not the fact of annihilation that constitutes the crime of genocide, but rather 
denial of the right of existence of an entire given group, this nuance is important. Article 2 of the 1948 Genocide Convention, now the legal standard, makes this point clear by focusing on the concept of intent, supplementing this with the important phrase in whole or in part, thus grounding genocide not in the numbers annihilated, but in the iniquity of rationality that intends massively destructive consequences. This qualification is what ensures that the Genocide con Convention is a preventative mechanism and not simply a reactive instrument. It also means that guilt is a moral determination. Okay? Indeed, in origin, the term itself, coined in the interwar period by Rafał Lemkin, a Polish legal scholar, emerged from the effort to make barbarity and vandalism crimes under international law. It is intent to destroy that is the basis of the crime of genocide illustrated in definable acts that constitute or would genocide. Okay? Does that make sense? To be honest, it was, I wasn't explicit the manifesto to be about trans people. This is causing me some stress, so I'll be back after the drama is over. Okay. So, yeah. Do, does that make sense? So, yeah. So, we must really be careful. Today, the Genocide Convention is part of general customary international law, meaning every state on earth is bound by the principle that genocide is a crime and the international community has a right to intervene in order to stop ongoing genocides or, more crucially, to prevent them before they happen. Exactly. So even if a state is not... So you cannot really prevent something if you actually deny it's even happening, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Party to the Genocide Convention, they're still bound by it. Like, you can't commit genocide. Like, if you're just gonna deny that anything's happening, you're just gonna normalize it. It's like in that Auschwitz survivor um, speech, do not be indifferent. Uh, we Jewish people thought that banning us from the park is no big deal. We can just rest somewhere else. Not being able to go to the public pool is not that important either. It's all okay. We can bear it. But then, step by step, it became normalized. It became like something that people decided that they can deal with. And then it led to Auschwitz. The main takeaway is do not be indifferent. And that if we really want to prevent things from happening then we should be active in calling out what's happening and in fighting it. We cannot just sit on our hands and then go, hindsight is twenty twenty. His positions has been his position has been that the mass killing has to be happening. So how would he say you can prevent it? Yeah, exactly. How would you be able to prevent it? It's like it's like just it's just hindsight is twenty twenty at that point, right? He does that a lot with the Holocaust. Genocide, like if you're a state. The, yeah. All right. So the UN definition of genocide. I'll just read this and then we'll talk about it. So Article Two in the pres in the present convention. And as the men. Mama has said it has been narrowed and it's like used as a tool to sort of um, deal with conflicts between nation states. 
So this is not like an optimal thing by all means. Genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial or religious group as such. A. Killing members of the group. B. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D. Imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. E. Forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. So, like the only thing that is not covered by this is that the gender is not part of the groups that are listed here. The first thing we can talk about here is the way that when people say the UN definition of genocide, um, they don't just mean the words in here. That's not really how you would approach any law or even just any concept. The, the words here are like half of the definition or less than half. The much bigger half is precedent. The way that each of these terms are understood, the way that the law is practiced and... Uh, not exactly. Like not all countries follow the precedent law like the US does. This is like... Uh, and it, like uh, This is also an important thing. Not all legal systems uh, are based on precedent. That I can tell you already. Like, a lot of uh, US law is based on precedent. Like, the, a thing happens, and then a precedent is set, and it's made law. And that is not how laws work everywhere. Like, I can tell you, like, you really... Uh, you should be a bit careful. I'm, I'm not even sure if the UN goes by precedent when it goes to law like the US does. True. Used either by historians or by lawyers or uh, in international law. Yeah. So, um, for example, that longer book is from the UK. So I'm not sure about how this the precedent thing is treated in the UK. But like, I would have to look into it because it's not actually as universal as it seems. The precedent uh, rule. A word destroy there, destroy specifically means physical or biological. Uh, that's so killing. All right, let's see. Nobody's agreeing on the definition of genocide. Lucy, Sandy, Polly are using on the stages of genocide as a definition, loner, etc. are using the UN definition. The question that needs to be addressed is what is to be done about the agreed upon classification, symbolization, discrimination, and the humanization of trans people. Instead of addressing that question, people are arguing about whether or not they should be used the word genocide. Yeah. So, I understand what you're saying, those, but LB is essentially quibbling over semantics and tone policing as well as claiming to be objectively correct. The UK makes use of precedent for, for law. It doesn't have a written constitution, so case law is basically equivalent to constitutions, as far as I understand it. I see. Like, precedent is not uh, a thing that is used everywhere for law. I will tell you this, okay? That's not really the case. Oh, Karasu, okay, very nice to hear here. We are looking at the Loner Box Manifesto, and we're talking about basically um, genocide, right? We're talking about what genocide is. Uh, we have even read, read the little excerpt. We have even touched upon the genocide in Iraq a bit. We're basically discussing that. Um, what I've been saying is because Loner Box said that the most that what is written in the UN definition of genocide is just half of it, right? And what is uh, 
even more important is the precedent and that's the other half and f and what I'm saying is that precedent in law is not as universal as the loner box things there are countries in which uh, precedent is not the most important role in law Poland would be such a place and mm, I am not sure if the UN, when constructing a definition like this, actually works on the rule of precedent, if that makes sense. I don't know if it does. You have international treaties that UK will sign in and respect European human rights courts, right? You know? Like... I know that U.S. law works on precedent. I know now that the U.K. one works like that. But it's not a universal thing across all countries, across the board, that that is the case, you know? But the problem is that um, whether or not we agree that a genocide is happening will inform us what sort of solutions we want to implement and how urgent we deem the situation to be. No, uh, not yet. No, he has not yet. He has not. I think this is like, this manifesto is mostly focused on um, trans people. So he might not mention that at all. Like, we might need to mention that on this stream, you know? This is a thing that we might have to mention here. Because I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this, like, um, if he's gonna mention this. Okay. Let's move on people or forcibly sterilizing them that's like the main thing there oh there um, we go intent he says about forcibly sterilizing people but he did not give uh, any examples there's intent intent means uh i think the latin term they use is dolus specialis which means special intent which means it has to be like um premeditated calculated uh planned in advance like that kind of thing as well and it has to be shown that the people were intending to physically or biologically destroy? I mean, I think... Uh, can they come here? Oh, nice, okay, okay. Yeah, that would be nice. Like, I think putting forward 400 bills like, pretty much establishes at least some form of uh, intent, right? One way to help out causes more public attention, but if we pussy for the round and showing the urgency of the situation, we won't be get the desired public eye, yeah. You know? It's like... It's like loner box sort of... Hmm... I think fumbles a bit here before because he says he admits that we are in stage four, but he basically says that it's just discrimination if we are in for stage four of genocide, and if we want to prevent something, then we have to catch it early on. Slovak and Roma. Sterilization is in fact similar to the sterilization laws against trans people. Roma also have no nation. Yeah, that's right. Although, yeah, they have no state. They have no state. It's true. So. And killing here means, like, directly killing, as in the state or an army directly killing. Uh, serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. If you look at the precedent for that, that is basically always um, in reference to rape or torture. Like, you know, again, like inflicting torture, not like indirect or whatever. So. Um, 
conditions of life calculated to bring about its destruction in whole or in part. This will be more to do with something like um, uh, something like depriving them of food and water. That's usually what that refers to. Sometimes I think it refers to like very essential medicines. Like if uh, I think this was brought up when Russia was blocking uh, medicine and uh, was it Red Cross from going into Mariupol? So yeah. Um, so yeah, these all have like much more specific meanings than just randomly interpreting it. Um, of course, there are a few contentions. One very big one, gender and uh, gender identity or sexuality isn't there. Mm. That person of human rights expert had been in Sunday stream all in one day. Oh, you've been nice for us to talk, Karasu. Actually, we talked to Ellen um, Degenerate today. Oh, okay, okay. So we had a segment with like the with the degenerate today. You know, we've talked on stream. So this has been a very fruitful stream today, you know? Uh, already because of this. We have discussed like the um how you say the origin of the Pori people, it's President Sunday. Right. It should be. I think everyone would probably say that they should be. Um, I think another one would be uh, the way that it evolved over time. So if, for example, you might say this special intent thing is a little bit too specific. Uh, first of all, intent you can prove with circumstantial evidence. So. You couldn't do the whole Holocaust denial, Hitler didn't order the Holocaust on paper. Like, you can't really do that because there's a metric ton of circumstantial evidence surrounding that. Like, the idea. Mm -hmm. so, um, but if you think something like when it comes to intent to destroy, and you think. Um, I mean, let's be honest. If you have 400 bills put forward to discriminate against trans people, I think you can. Um, I can. I think you can see some form of intent there, right? I think saying there's zero intent would be pretty dishonest in this case. I think so. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Something like, what if they were allowing a destructive course to continue with intent to destroy? Um, if you believe that, um, well... The UN wouldn't agree with you, but historians would. Historians are a lot less generous to the perpetrators when it comes to intent. True. So where international law might not... I'm a historian. Events like the Holodomor or the Irish famine or the Great Indian famine were genocidal because they weren't intentionally caused. A historian might say that there's enough evidence surrounding those three events that the uh, legislators and people in power at the time used those events and allowed them to carry on deliberately as a way of uh, getting rid of the undesirables. So that's where the intent bit is about. True. That is true. Like, Holodomor was definitely a genocide. And I will add, because I'm actually reading up on that topic as we speak, that when it comes to Holodomor, part of the story is the hunger itself. The other part of the story when it comes to Holodomor and the Great Hunger is the fact that at the same time as um, the hung, the great starvation was happening, the elites of Ukrainian society were being executed for treason. All the intellectual, political leaders, and any other people that would create sort of like the network of the government of the Ukrainian People's uh, Republic that was for a very short time a thing. All of those people were executed at the same time as Ukrainian peasants were starved out. So we should look at this whole picture when discussing Holodomor. I wonder what these parallel groups of people would have said if we'd be, been able to ask them 
and have as much access to their collective views as we do with trans people via the internet today. Is loner still tone policing? Is this still happening? Yes. This dude is just hard-headed and confidently incorrect. Absolutely. Uh, Lernbright seems to triple down on this. Yeah, he is. is. It is unfortunate. But this is a good opportunity for us to... I think this is a good opportunity for us to discuss this and to shine light on things like uh, the treatment of the Romani people, for example, you know, discussing what is and uh, on what genocide is, you know. It can allow us to discuss genocides that are ongoing and that people do not wish to discuss. I would personally... Um, I would personally say that the way Romani people are treated tantamounts to genocide. Um, Romani people's way of life is being basically destroyed. The destruction of the Romani people's way of life has started in the 19th century with the closing of borders, with the control of the borders. And the destruction of the life of the Romani people is ongoing to this day. Like, this is important. If you destroy the culture, way of life, and if you make it impossible to basically thrive to a people, then I would say that it is a form of genocide, an ongoing genocide against the Romani people. And I think... It's an important discussion to be had, and I think it's important like it's important for us, all of us as progressive people to push for some sort of change when it comes to this, you know, especially since the European Union has open borders, uh, which means that it should also create structures that would make it easier for travelers to thrive, you know? We have the means to do it. We have the... We definitely have the means to do it. The thing I don't get is why is it so important for him to scold marginalized people? Why this heal? I am not sure. Like we're saying, it's happening uh, right now. I think those groups would have said the same thing, only they weren't heard like we are now. Romani are absolutely treated in genocidal ways. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I agree. And we must talk about it a lot more because, like, um, this is a topic that is being conveniently ignored in when it comes to... Because, like, this is, like, really horrible thing that is being normalized and people would like to believe that nothing wrong is going on when you see videos like chat logics on the topic like people just pretend that nothing's happening that it's like that the systems that we have in place are the correct systems and that if the Romani people <clears throat> do not conform to those systems then it's basically their own fault somehow. You know? That is the truth. Uh, so, the own definition was narrowed for self-serving reasons I would like to point out. Yeah, so absolutely. Absolutely correct. That is absolutely the case. So yeah, let's continue. Like, the Romani people the subject is like a thing that I think deserves like a bigger collaboration to tackle. But we must, we must do it. And we're losing history. Um, destroy, this is the, probably the biggest bit. Um, the original definition 
proposed by Raphael Lab Like if the European Union really wants to move in the direction of open borders and free movement, then it do, uh, European Union should do its utmost to allow Romani people to rebuild their lives, basically. Like, it should be, the life of a traveler should be made viable, you know? This is what needs to happen. Like, in my opinion, of course, this is what needs to happen. Like, the Romani people must be allowed to basically rebuild their lives. This is what needs, you know? And there must be an infrastructure that would allow this to happen. I'm not sure if you agree with this assessment, but this is my short take on this topic. And it's not like we don't have the means to do it. I'm Ken. Destroy included cultural genocide. So that's probably the main thing there, intent to destroy. Um, because according to Lemkin, you can have a genocide without anyone dying, no, without anyone being killed by the state, technically. Um, he outlines that quite a bit. I'll maybe elaborate on that in a moment. But today, I think in international law, they call that ethnocide. But yeah, cultural genocide is kind of a thing as well. And I think going in common parlance, because I'm not like a lawyer, I think if like a Ukrainian or like an indigenous person told me like they were like that there was a genocide at the hands of colonizers or like the Soviet Union and all that like yeah I'm probably not going to split hairs over that like cultural genocide is definitely like a valid term I think um, another thing political groups that was another one political affiliation was a category here from uh, uh, from Lemkin but it got taken out of the UN Convention because mostly because Stalin. Like we should never rest on our laurels, uh, laurels and just uh, assume that the system that we live in is just perfect and that it just works as in like as it should and that uh, like nothing wrong is going on. But this is a trap that we often find ourselves in. Yeah. Alan didn't want it there. So there's been a few shifts, and I actually don't disagree with a lot of what Lemkin wanted to put in there in the beginning. So there you go. We'll get to Lemkin in a moment, though. Rafa Lemkin. I mentioned everything there. Yeah. Though Lemkin's definition is more broad, and I don't mm. disagree with a lot of what he included, the acts he does describe as genocide without killing, which we understand today as cultural genocide, were always in the context of colonialism. They included the residential school systems in the United States and Canada, the destruction of Irish culture under British rule, the Japanese occupation of Korea. Of course. Um, what happened in Canada was a lot more than just cultural genocide. What happened in the occupation of Korea of China, Vietnam was much more than just cultural genocide. Like, it's ridiculous to claim otherwise. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Okay? If you have any historical knowledge on those events, you would know. Etc. In his own words, acts of cultural genocide include language bans, forced exile of individuals, specifically cultural representatives, forced re-education, as well as the banning and destruction of national treasures, libraries, museums, artifacts, and art galleries. Yeah, and what happened in Canada and uh, the Japanese occupation of Korea, Vietnam, and other parts of Asia far exceeded just language bans, forced exile, and the destruction of artifacts. It included sexual assault, it included uh, mass killings, and it included a lot of horrible things that are not listed here. So let's put that to rest. It's okay. It's okay, Daniel. I'm a clickbaiter. 
there's actually a bit here where cultural genocide was almost put into law. I think it's just down here. He describes the act um, here. Again, you can probably, you'd have to consider precedent for all this as well. Obviously, the law was never put into place. I don't think cultural genocide to this day is still a crime, which is unfortunate, but historians actually do. So, yeah, let me, okay. Uh... Have a way of interpreting each of these things. So, forcing. I need to check it out, okay? Check it out. Uh, precedent law wiki. Mm. Precedent. Uh, a precedent is the principle of rule established in previous legal cases. Because precedent is not something that is being the leading thing in, like, the law across the entire world. You know? Like, that's not a thing that is accepted everywhere. Like, this is important to remember, okay? Keep this in mind. Transfer, this is like every cultural genocide that I know of, I think is like residential school systems or forced re-education or the state-run settlements in Australia. Uh, systematic exile, this is a huge part of it. There's lots of, uh, especially with the Soviet Union or with the Nazis in Poland, there was a lot of exile. Um, although they would say that you can technically have this without killing anyone. Uh, I think it's been, I can't, I don't know if you could find a cultural genocide that didn't also involve the states killing people. Soviet Union would, as part of cultural genocide, would murder uh, intellectuals from the states that they invaded. Um, uh. We have still ongoing systems in Europe where we force trans people to sterilize. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has, it still happens in some places in the US from what I know, you know? Like that's a thing that is still a thing in the US in some places. Right. Absolutely, Carasso. My only point is he might be unplugged from America but being in the UK is no excuse, right? Like, in Australia, there were loads of, like, massacres against indigenous people as part of their cultural genocide as well, so... Um, I don't think it's necessary, but it seems to be quite common, state and military killing. All right. We all good with that? We got a rough idea? If I was going to explain this to a 10-year-old, by the way, just, like, to summarize, I would say, um, genocide is... Like, I might be a bit mean here, but... Uh, I feel I I feel like it would be a good idea for Lucy to talk to Loner Bugs. I think Loner Bugs is not a bad guy, but people like Polly have kind of poisoned her perception on certain things. I see. I see. I think we are worse. I think we are worse personally, but maybe the grass is always less genocidal. Yeah, he's infuriating. Like, I think... I think we are, like, too permissive for certain things. I think... Um, I think what Sister Rose means is, like, poly people's, not necessarily poly people's behavior in the conversation, but um, rather poly people's behavior outside of the conversation. 
I'm not so sure, Sister Rose. I think this manifesto coming at Demon Mama Sunday and Doe specifically might not make it such a good idea for him being such a good guy. Karasu Kapka. How much sources you have on the Slovakian, Czechoslovakian Roma civilization that was challenged in European Human Rights Court in the 1990s? Oh, I would like to make a thing about that topic. I think he sang into the idea that calling it genocide is in inciting violence against conservatives, which is not true. It's incorrect. I think he was already law-brained. Mm. Well, we have read a really important, um, really important thing about that. Mm, not really much, Karasaim. Mostly just work with Romanian Roma in the community. I wouldn't know a lot about legal stuff specifically, but I can direct you to other Roma activists. Is it possible for us to talk, Sister Rose, about Roma, Romani uh, topics? I think it's very important. Yes, Roma people are a cultural genocide happening, happening during times where there was no direct killings. I think the genocide towards the Romani people is ongoing. I think there is a real danger of conflating Polly's recent behavior with how she acted around the beginning of this discourse. She's been awful to people recently, but she was fine with him. So, if we could, um, if we could, like, arrange a time when we could talk about it, that would be really great, you know? Is it possible? Like, if we can talk about it on the Discord, that would be great. We could arrange a whole stream dedicated to the topic, you know? Okay, we can DM, we can DM about it. We think it would be good to, to sort of um, dedicate whole streams to the topic. Okay, yeah, let's do that, yeah. I think this is like uh, far too... This is far too important, and I think it's not talked about. Like, I think the topic of the Romani people de deserves more than just memes about uh, European people being racist, because as funny as the memes are, this is actually a really serious topic, you know? So, just laughing at the memes does not address the topic at all. You know? Okay. And I think it would be great to translate discussions that we would have on streams into some sort of real-world action when it comes to this. Like maybe inform people what they can do, um, inform what sort of organizations that can be supported, you know, some sort of real-life solutions when it comes to this topic. Inform people on what sort of things are happening. Okay, let's let's continue with the manifesto. I think if we can get if we can go through this manifesto and if we can there is definitely an ongoing issue. Roma sterilization was a thing in the nineties, burning down Roma houses was a popular pastime in Roma, Romania and anti-Roma programs absolutely still exist, yeah. And there, is, there are things that I can speak about as well because Poland is extremely uh, bad when it comes to this issue as well. And 
A lot of tankies will concern troll over Roma people when it comes to Ukraine, but a lot of Ukrainian Roma are even more fearful of Russian military. In Hungary today, there is a party in parliament that plans sterilization. Like, let's be, let's be 100% honest about it. Uh, the treatment of Romani people is a problem in whole of Europe across the board, you know? It's a problem. It's a continent-wide problem. You cannot point on a single country and say this country has a special problem with, the, with its treatment of the Romani people. No, it is a problem Kind of like on a continental scale, and there is like a there is a really important reason for it. That's because of the whole nation narrative. You know. Yeah, and I just like it's important because it parallels to trans issues, but it's also important because because. People should not be treated like this, and it's important to fight. You know, it's important to fight. And I think as we can organize, we have, we do have the means to do something, you know. We have the means to fight against such things like that. We have to mean the means to organize. We have the means to... Like, there's a lot to talk, talk, to talk about, about when it comes to this topic. But okay, for now let's un unpause the manifesto thing. Like I would like to discuss... Um, the state or a military killing a group of people because they're that group of people, physically killing them. And cultural genocide would be uh, killing a culture through measures such as this. Okay. We go back to this one. Sorry, I forgot to mention. If you were talking about somewhere like China, the reason they're saying that what's happening in China is a genocide, as well as a cultural genocide, would be this one here. The forced sterilizations in Xinjiang, because that is biological destruction. Like, they seize you, they put you into a camp or a prison, and they just forcibly sterilize you against your will. Um, but you might ask, if they stopped the sterilizations and everything else carried on, would it still be a genocide? Well, according to the UN Convention, that's a bit harder to prove, but in history or cultural genocide, it definitely is because of all the other things. The re-education. See, this is the problem of looking at it like, like uh, really mm, like this, you know, for this sort of lens. The fact that the, one of the most famous comedians in the UK made obscene Holocaust joke about GRT people using the register is in a, is indicative of UK attitudes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Manifesto. Destroying um, mosques, rounding people up, sending Han Chinese people into the houses of Uyghurs against their will, all kinds of shit like that. Yeah. Oh no, no, Karasu. I think, you know. I really believe that uh, if we go through this manifesto and if we end up with uh, and if we end up with important topics that need discussing and if we end up being able to bring important issues to light then I think it makes it really worth going through a manifesto like this, you know? If it leads us to meeting with people from marginalized communities and us organizing in a way that will allow us to do something, I think it's worth it, you know? It looks like Christina's state is offline. It was excluded from Wayback Machine. Very sad about that she... As she wrote a lot from the perspective of a Slovak Roman woman, Roma woman, yeah. See, like this, like we should uh, maybe think about creating a database where we could 
preserve those sort of stories, like, and protect them from being erased from history, you know? Does that make sense? Like, we can organize and we can um, create databases, we can create, we can meet with people and we can ask them about their experiences, we can create notations, which means like uh, interviews with people, they would tell us their stories and we would preserve them. You know, we could talk to people and sort of, mm, it's important that their stories live on and we can make that happen, you know. That is also one of the things that we have made, we have the means of um, doing, you know. To making sure that their voices are heard and making sure we could even translate their stories into many different languages and spread them like that. But that's a thing that we should discuss more in, in depth. Like there are, there are things we can do on many different levels, but we just need to organize and start talking about them first and then we can start, we can move on to the things, the actions that we can take, right? Like preserving the stories is one tangible thing that we can do in order to move the conversation forward. Anyway, a final, more popular source here would be the 10 stages of genocide based on the essay by Dr. Gregory H. Stanton. Again, when you're looking at this one, it's really important to consider precedent. You probably don't want to jump in and just interpret any of these words very loosely. Uh, if you read the original essay, this is a mistake. I think it's a mistake people make a lot all the time, actually. You know, like with uh, 14 points of fascism, if you just read the little headings for each point, you can shoehorn just about like any populist into being a fascist because there's so much like room for interpretation. But when you read the essay itself and the paragraphs and the examples he gives, it's a lot more narrow. It's the same with this. For example, symbolization sounds quite broad, but the examples he gives in the essay are all like really extreme. So the examples he gives, even in the box in the circle here, it's like um, yellow stars for Jews in Germany or... Uh, blue scarves for people in uh, under the Khmer Rouge or white armbands for Bosnians during the Bosnian War. So it's all quite like extreme. Uh, but the way they've worded this summary, I think is quite good. So here, uh, Gregory H. Stanton, president of Genocide Watch, developed the 10 stages of genocide, which mm. explains the different stages which lead to a genocide. At each of the earlier stages, there is an opportunity for members of the community or the international community to halt the stages and stop genocide before it happens. That wording is very specific. Um, stop genocide before it happens. So just being on a handful of these stages doesn't immediately mean there's a genocide. He doesn't say exactly like when the genocide starts according to him, but when you look down here, there's a bit of a clue. Okay, I will go quickly to the toilet as I'm like uh, pressed, my bladder is pressed, I will go and I will come back. I, 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 I'm really toilet heavy today. I'm really sorry. I don't go anywhere. Have some project of reading a statue of nomadic deserted elf and their child. Oh. Like, yeah, I will be right back, okay? Don't go away. We're still going through this. And we have a lot of very important topics to go through. A lot of interesting projects to do. And a lot of important work. Like, I really think that the, we have the, before I go to the toilet, I will say this. We have the, like, I do believe that we have the capability of translating online work to real life action through organization and through taking certain online projects and translating them into projects 
that will be carried out in real life, you know? So, I don't think that offline and online have to be these separate worlds that never interact with one another, you know? The online sphere is the means for us to organize as groups and we can, for example, gather funds, we can plan things and then we can execute them to make people's lives better in the real world. Okay, now I go to the toilet, okay? Don't run away. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. Okay, 
I am back, and we are ready to continue with the manifesto. We have so much to do. People just like are scared that something like that could happen in their country. <laughs> yeah. Preparation, perpetrators plan the genocide. They often use euphemisms such as the Nazis phrase, the final solution to cloak their intention. So at seven, it's planning. And the example of a genocide being planned, they use as the final solution. So, and then eight persecution, genocidal massacres begin. So it happens quite late, according to this guy. And he's suggesting that the final solution was the genocide. So that that's what he counts as genocide in Germany. Keep that one in mind for later. Okay? That's going to be, that's going to come back a little bit. And for the rest of it, he mm. No, 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 no. The genocidal massacre begins, not the genocide. So this is a misreading already of what's being said here. It doesn't say that the genocide begins late stage. It says that the genocidal massacre begins late. But this is, all these stages are already genocide. If you, if you catch it, it's early stages of genocide, which means that you can catch it and stop it before the genocidal massacres begin. So this is a very convenient misreading of what is being said here. Like I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna say it here. Loner Box has an interesting way of paddle, backpedaling before doubling down. It is like in the movie Castle, but it's a moat of Bay, a mom, mud and Bailey. I'm sorry, he's just being such a prick and hiding behind in the actualism. This just makes me mad. You know? He doesn't really specify exactly what order it can happen in. They can happen in different orders. Um, for example, Nuremberg laws actually came before the stars, so, you know. Um, but the other thing he stresses as well is that, like... Um, like, if we really say that genocide starts when the genocide massacres begin, then what exactly are we trying to prevent? What exactly are we preventing if we call it genocide just as the massacres themselves begin? We're, we're not really preventing anything. It's just uh, this nonsensical. Like, I don't know. Like, it's, it makes the whole thing pointless. Everything here, there are lots of things here that you could say apply to just about every discriminated group on Earth. I think the thing that stands, in, I think he mentions it in the essay as well, I might be wrong, is that... Um, yeah, but it's worth noting something else. Every single thing can be sort of... Um, you can make the case that every single thing can be applied to any group, right? But what makes it a genocide, right? I hate when people can't own up. What makes such a thing a genocide if you can... If you can see a certain escalation in time, if you can see that, oh yeah, we went through point one to point two to point, if you can see that the thing is sort of advancing from point to point, if you can see the slow escalation, if you can see that first it became with classification and then it moved to symbolization and then it moved to discrimination and then it moved again to dehumanization. We do not look at those 
points individually and say, oh, this point is present, therefore it's genocide. No, we see the, we see how the thing sort of moves forward step by step. As I said just a second ago, first classification, then symbolization, then it moves to discrimination, dehumanization, organization. We can see the we can see how the thing escalates. We can see the escalation. This is what makes like all of those points combining, escalating, building on top of one another. You know? Do you know what I mean? It's not because we see individual points. It's not that we can point out, oh, there's the dehumanization happening, therefore genocide. No, we can see the escalation of hate, the escalation of violence, the escalation of laws that prohibit the group from being able to function. The escalation of hate speech, the escalation of um, rhetoric, right? Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense, what I'm saying right now? It's about seeing, observing the escalation, right? Does that make sense? Is that is what I'm saying... Uh, resonating with uh, any of you? Right? Am I making sensible points? Right? Okay. Very nice. Hello, Johnny Gazembo. Okay. So let's continue. I don't think there's a need to... I don't think Loner Box is an outright, some sort of like a bigoted person. But I think he certainly is incorrect on this. It's less about him as a personality, but how good the takes down was. Hello. Every genocide starts with these early stages, but very few groups at these early stages ever end up becoming victims of genocide. So that's like, again. Like you have early stages, but it's not just about any one of these stages being present. It's, it's, as I just said, it's about them escalating and compounding. Right? And just being a bit more careful with how you understand the terms and where they were coming from, because there's a bit of misuse that goes on around this. Um, an example, actually I'll give you one here. This is an example, I think, of someone quote unquote doing it wrong. Um, because there's an anti-trans genocide building and we're entering step eight. So remember the example Stanton gave of step eight was the final solution. Like Nazi death squads and death camps. So I think that's maybe a slightly broad interpretation. Like I don't think hate crimes count as genocide, but you know, different kind of crime. Okay. Got all the notes there, okay. As a side note, I imagine some viewers at this point have already made the objection. Wait, law? What are you, a fucking liberal? To which my answer is, first of all, genocide's a crime. Like, under whatever definition you're using, it's a, it was coined and it's used as a crime. But anyway. To which my answer is, I will never appeal to a law unless I think it is, at least to some degree, morally defensible. I see. So like this is like the problem. It's not really about addressing the subject. It's more about defending himself. You are intelligent like ninety nine percent of the time, but that one percent is just so unintelligent. He is a person doing and denying harm that does reflect upon him 
But I don't wish to dehumanize, right? Right, 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 Melina, right? I have given my issues with the UN definition of genocide, but I nonetheless think it's important that people can at least have some shared understanding of what the term means. International laws are far from perfect, but I do believe the world is a better place when nations, for as long as they exist, can have some basic understanding of what is morally acceptable and what is not. The Refugee Convention allows victims of war and persecution to seek protection across borders in a way that wasn't available to the Jews in Nazi Germany. Our shared understanding of border sovereignty has left Russia almost... This is uh, being broken all the time, as I will explain in my video about the crisis on the Belarusian border between Poland and Belarus. Um, law doesn't matter. What's being done is lawful, right? I feel similar feelings about the Ukraine thing. So many people who usually give great takes just had awful takes on Ukraine. When it comes to Ukraine, uh, Dylan Burns, Vosh, Demon Mama are the people that actually have good takes when it comes to war in Ukraine. Like, I have seen so many disappointing takes on the Ukraine war that it left me really, really sad. But... And calling what Dylan Burns uh, did war tourism is just pathetic. Like, he did really good work in Ukraine. Like, I would love to talk to Dylan Burns. Like, especially since he came to Poland and went to Ukraine. Uh, there are many things that I would gladly talk to him about that would be really interesting. Okay, let's continue with this. Yeah, they do. It's true. Nobody is free from blind spots. There are definitely... There are probably blind spots that I have and that I would need to be, like... Completely yeah. isolated in its war on Ukraine. The legal diplomatic agreements between nations have allowed us to give Ukrainians the means to defend themselves against reckless acts of imperialism and, incidentally, genocide. This is a video giving the case for why the Russian war in Ukraine is genocidal. This is a protection that people in Eastern Europe unfortunately didn't have when they were attacked by the Nazis and the USSR. Well, technically speaking, because Poland was in a uh, pact with France and uh, the British Empire, and that did not do much, okay? Oh, Sister Rose, I am a very anti-Marxist-Leninist streamer, if that makes you feel any better. And I will do a lot of anti-Marxist-Leninist content in the future. With that, these are my reasons for not describing the situation in the U.S. as an ongoing genocide. One, descriptively, I don't believe it works. Horrific as they are, I see no use in putting the actions against trans people in the US under the same umbrella as what happened in Bosnia, Rwanda, or the Ottoman Empire. Nor do they think they have much resemblance to the historical acts of, hmm, of cultural genocide, such as Canada or Korea. Like, I think that calling the genocide in Canada and Korea just cultural genocide is really underplaying it. That's one thing that I would like to say. And second of all, it's not a comparison game, you know? It's really not good to underplay something um, that is happening because you cannot do a one-to-one -one comparison to a different thing, you know? You must look at the thing and you must analyze it as it is without trying to draw one-to-one -one comparison to other things. Does that make sense? Does that... Yeah. Two, because of this, the ways we respond to something like discrimination and the ways we respond to genocide 
are radically different. Likewise, the ways we avoid a genocide are also different from the ways we stop one which is ongoing. If a state yeah. is committing genocide, it's very unlikely that acts of civil resistance are still an option. Bearing in mind, genocide is an international crime. Historically, genocide has justified economic sanctions or even military intervention from the international community. That's great, but nobody's going to do an international intervention to the U.S. Like, let's forget about that dreamland when you suddenly imply that calling this a genocide could anger you, the international community to the point of what? Of... Um, Invading the U.S.? What is the... Whether you agree with it or not, one of the justifications given for the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia was that it prevented a repeat of what happened in Bosnia. Like what? The NATO is gonna bomb the U.S.? Is this... Loner box worry that calling it a genocide would justify military intervention is very theoretical. No state would intervene even in the case of transgenocide escalating further. That's right. Nobody would dare. That's the truth. Is this a real argument now that we should ignore because it is not yet awful enough? Yeah, that's... It's like what I said before, Karasu. If we were just waiting for the genocidal massacre to start, then what are we even preventing at that point? You know? Nothing. So, yeah, that's not really a good argument to make. That's like the whole. Um, that sounds like an excuse more than anything, to be honest. The whole intervention thing. Genocide. At a domestic level, genocide typically describes a situation where it's perfectly acceptable for people to take up arms against the state. It would be difficult to condemn the Rohingya rebels in Myanmar or the Jewish partisans in Eastern Europe because theirs is slash was a position where the only means of combating the state's actions is to fight. Though I can imagine scenarios where violent resistance against the state or even other civilians would be acceptable, I don't believe the US is quite there yet. This is a really narrow way of looking at these things, you know? Like, it's not either we agree that it's not a genocide and just move on, or we agree that it's a genocide, therefore we should all take up arms against the state. That is not how it works. If we agree his argument though pushes this stance. I don't think Loner Bonks wants you to ignore the repression of trans people. I think he wants you to think he is a very smart and correct boy. Mm. What I want to say is that if we agree that this is a genocide, then it's not really a call for people to take up arms against the state. What it is, is a call for people to, one, take the situation much more seriously than right now and to really aggressively push against the rhetoric that is being spread about trans people. You know? For society as a whole to sort of push back against the laws that are being proposed, to aggressively push for laws that would protect trans people, to really aggressively, with great urgency, to push for trans rights. 
you know? Like, yeah, exactly. This is in a way even worse than inaction. Like, yeah, because it makes people think that the situation is not as bad as it seems, you know? Loner Box conflates people discussing community defense with plotting a violent uprising against the state. Yeah. This is effectively policing and pointing the blame on people describing their existence as a genocide. We need to protect Lucia. Thank you. Like, it's a call to aggressively push for rights, you know? The same way that we should organize and aggressively push for the rights of the Romani people, in my opinion, and other marginalized groups. The same way that we should aggressively push for things like reparations for black people, you know? Like, we should look things in the eye, not be afraid for calling things as they are, and to aggressively organize and fight for the rights of communities. Can we not just pull people to come give him head pats and kta with chicken and mayo? You know? Thank you very much. I have not had dinner yet. This is my first major meal of the day. You know? But I think this is what the whole point of noticing that it's a genocide. It's not about fighting the state. It's not about violence. It about, it's, it's about urgency to stop it, to stop the escalation. That, that is the main point, to stop the escalation, to prevent, you know? This is the main point. Do you know what I mean? Is to treat the thing seriously and urgently. To address it seriously and urgently. That is the point. Because, and this is an important part, this is actually a crucial part. This is the, mm, this is actually what Loner Box himself was telling, that in these points, in these points, we are not in the genocide massacre yet, we are just in systemic discrimination, which means that at this point we can still do prevention, and that it means that at this early stage we can do prevention without the need of the violence that Loner Box describes here, which means that we can do so through via like uh, advocacy, through acts, action like that, you know? You know what I mean? It's all about prevention while it's in the early stages. That is what it's about, you know? Do not be indifferent, basically, once again. Three, I believe that in order for us to engage with each other, a shared understanding of language is fundamentally important. If you've ever been called a communist for supporting socialized healthcare or a neoliberal for supporting the arming of Ukrainians, you should know what I mean. Likewise, if a community online decides in its own in arbitrary interpretation of what constitutes a genocide, then goes on to accuse people who disagree with them as engaging in genocide denial, I believe that is a problem worth talking about. This is a stream from uh, Demon Mama titled Destroying Genocide Denial with Facts and Logic, which she gives her case for why there's a transgenocide in the US. And of course, it's really dishonest to frame this topic as, as, as Loner Box said, internet bullshit. It's really dishonest to frame it like this. In my research on this topic, one of the things I've noticed is that none of the major organizations who are fighting these laws have been using the word genocide. 
At the moment, it seems like something that hasn't really escaped the confines of Twitter and a few online leftist spaces. That's but not the true. Arguments people have made for invoking it have been varied. Some are just clear misinterpretations, but I've also heard people arguing in favor of calling it a genocide, not so much for descriptive accuracy, but as a means of shocking people into action. The problem is that once a word like genocide is invoked, every other term feels deflating by comparison. No. In spite of this, I do think it's worth stressing the point here. To use a term other than genocide... Interestingly enough, we have already read a whole fragment of a document about the genocide in Iraq done by the U.S. that actually does address this point. Aside is not to downplay the situation. Despite not having the same rhetorical flourish, discrimination kills people. It causes trauma, hate crimes, suicides, and murders. People have a human right to flee their homes as refugees to escape persecution, human rights abuses. Only two years ago, millions of people rose up in protest against systemic discrimination towards black people. For all the pain, suffering, and death that was highlighted by the BLM protests, I don't remember anyone ever using the word genocide. That's because genocide is a different crime which requires a different response. Let me read it once more, okay? Once again. Once again, okay? Listen to this closely. <clears throat> Looking closer, we find that the word genocide has two lives, its common meaning and its legal substance. Commonly, genocide is taken to mean the total annihilation of people. Nothing less counts. Hence, skepticism in using the word. On rapid reading UN General Assembly Resolution 96 of 1946, authorizing the drafting of a genocide convention, suggests the same understanding. Genocide is a denial of the right of existence of entire human groups, as homicide is the denial of the right to live of individual human beings. But this definition bears reading again, for it is not the fact of annihilation that constitutes the crime of genocide, but rather denial of the right of existence of an entire given group. This nuance is important. Okay? And, of all terms, in the lexicon, genocide is the true word for what is happening in Iraq. The controversy, the word elicits, reveals its potential. Some warn against using the term as not to debase its currency. This is a misunderstanding of what genocide means. Others fear that if used wantonly, anti-war protests may appear sensationalist. In reality, any other word for U.S. actions in Iraq is dishonest. See? This is what Lonerbox is doing. The, con the controversy the word elicits reveals its potential. Some warn against using the term as not to debase its currency. You see? This is literally what is happening. Lonerbox is saying that using the term here debases its currency. As an example, take the situation of European Muslims, a group that has been systematically othered by governments and media for decades. Since 9-11, they have been routinely dehumanized, branded as terrorists or terrorist sympathizers. They are banned from wearing their veils in France, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Bulgaria, and the Netherlands. In the UK, the Prevent Strategy Counterterrorism Program has placed an expectation on untrained citizens to out potential extremists to the state. 
This policy is so hawkish that it has resulted in children being detained by the state because their teachers mistook the Arabic writing on their clothes for ISIS symbols. Muslim girls face the common bullying routine of having their hijabs ripped off of them in schools. Hardly surprising when their biggest representative <laughs> in the British media in the last decade was Shamima Begum. Boys are blamed for the most recent terror attack and assaulted by their peers for so much as having a Middle Eastern name. On the week of 9-11, this also happened to me. Muslim men have been murdered on their doorsteps by far-right thugs after being falsely accused of grooming. Mosques are the frequent targets of arson attacks and vehicle rammings. All the while, conservative politicians will run entire campaigns on anti-Muslim messaging and describe the Islamic faith as a virus. Almost half of the Conservative Party sees Islam as a threat to the British way of life. They are encouraged to be discreet about their faith when seeking employment, and their overrepresentation in frontline services and deprived areas led to them having a significantly higher death rate during the pandemic. The Christchurch shooting, which took place in New Zealand, led to a 600% increase in hate crimes across the UK. Pundits like Tommy Robinson and Paul Joseph Watson barely waited a day before going back to pushing the same great replacement rhetoric that inspired the shooter a theory which has been the key talking point for the second largest party in France for mm -hmm. over 10 years. Okay. This is a level of bigotry that suppresses a culture, destroys lives, and all too often gets innocent people killed. Okay. Does it, however, belong in the same category as what is happening to the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar? No. One is discrimination and human rights violations, the other is genocide. This is interesting because 9-11 has led to the war in Iraq, the war on terror, and the rise of Islamophobia all around the world. And I will make the opposite case to Loner Box here. I will make the case that it has led to genocide. That, that, that what is being described here is genocide against the Muslim people. And I will bolster the claim with a quote. Okay? I will bolster the claim with a quote that I have here. Um... The illegal U.S. invasion of Iraq was and is a humanitarian catastrophe. Some try to explain this catastrophe as a byproduct. They justify their concept of the absence of intent. Reviewing applicable principles of international law and the U.S. policy towards Iraq, this chapter aims to prove that the Humanitarian catastrophe present in Iraq is an essential component of U.S. policy constituting, constituting premeditated... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry about that, okay? There is a difference of black American industries in the distribution of trans people. Uh, yeah, if you look at the rhetoric used in a lot of countries, it mirrors Western war on terror type language. Yeah, let's see. So, uh, constituting uh, premeditated genocide against the people of Iraq... The intent that some propose is absent is flagrantly evident. Consequently, this chapter constitutes a call to jurists, law associations, and individuals from all walks of life to act on ending genocide in Iraq. This study was made not only because of the horrid consequences of the illegal U.S. invasion of Iraq, but to lay a basis for stopping imperial adventures and to enrich the political thinking of 
instruments that can save our civilization. And it is here. One more quote, okay? This, misun this is a misunderstanding of what genocide means. Other Others fear that if used wantonly, anti-war protest may appear sensationalist. In reality, any other word for U.S. actions in Iraq is dishonest. It is dishonest to claim that the U.S. did not commit genocide in Iraq. And I would make the case that the so-called war on um, terror, that the rise of Islamophobia all around the world is an extension of that. Yes, the crisis on the Polish-Belarusian border is part of that, and I will make a whole video about it. Yes, I will make the opposite claim to Loner Box here. It is genocidal action, 100%. See what is happening in the English Channel or what happened in Belarusian Polish border. Yes, exactly. So, my claim is the exact opposite to Loner Box here. It is genocide. Yes. We need to call it for what it is. The destruction of culture, the leaving people to die on the border without food, without shelter, without medication. It is 100% genocide. Yes. Though they both stem from the same hatred, they are descriptively different and they warrant radically different responses. No. These are my views now, just as they were a couple of months ago before my first debate on the issue. Now, for the internet bullshit. You guys- We do not agree on this, I'm afraid. People pushed back to Mediterranean Sea to die. What is that if not a bloody genocide? Yeah, exactly. Like, we need to be able to call things as they are. Because it's really convenient to not call acts like this genocide. When they definitely are. You can feel free to ban Ellen DeGenerate until after the stream, if he's being annoying. Okay. We have talked to Ellen DeGenerate today on stream, by the way. Very nice discussion. I will release it as a segment. Poly people. First of all, I am very aware that having this discussion at all is bound to be an optical loss for me. If I'm taking the position that what's happening is awful, but not as awful as genocide, it will inevitably look like what I'm doing is downplaying. I mean, it is. This is especially the case when half of the audience has an interpretation of genocide that is radically different from my own, or from any that I've ever observed in law, history, or common parlance. I accept this. This is dishonest, okay? This is dishonest. Like, I would have accepted this if he would have said, this is especially the case when half of the audience has an interpretation of genocide that is radically different from my own. If he would have left it at this, I would have said, fair enough. But, if he says, or from any that I've ever observed in law, history, or common parlance, this becomes dishonest, and I would ask for sources that would prove this claim, okay? Because we know that this is not the case, clearly. You know? This would, like, this becomes... The thing in the brackets is what makes this claim dishonest. You know? This is the so-called appeal to faith. We all know, everybody knows, everybody agrees with me. Like this sort of talk, basically. That all the historians... All the lawmakers, 
and everybody in common parlance agrees with me. Okay? Seems like I need to... Yeah, I knew that this would happen, but I did it anyway. Like, well, let me check something. Seems like I'm being... Um, I'm being bullied, so I need to... Mm, I'm being bullied here, so I need to do something. I'm being bullied by Chad. There you go. I have edited the title so you cannot bully me anymore. There we go. Okay. Uh, my partner laughed when they asked if this was... Yeah. My partner laughed when they asked if this was all day, and I showed them that, no, this is a short stream. <laughs> Shall we give a shout out to the friend of the channel, uh, B, who read your text for this Iraqi case? Yeah, 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 sure. Like, say, I would like to personally thank um, Bar Empanada and apologize for making fun of his name, you know. He has uh, led me to exploring the case of Iraq by pointing out that it was a genocide and that, well, basically that. I did not expect... Um, I did not expect Bad Empanada to... Um, the bad empanada to um, become such a good friend to this channel. But you know, you find unexpected allies in unexpected places. Um, it is 100% correct that what happened in Iraq was a genocide and that the whole broader war on terror and anti uh, the Islamophobia, broader Islamophobia, is an extension of it. So, once again, thank you very much, Bar Empanada, for be shining light on this important topic. And I will gladly contribute to talking about it and to calling out genocide when it happens, okay? So look forward to my video about the Polish... Um, the Polish-Belarusian um, border crisis in which we will explain one facet of the genocide that is happening, you know? It's like important. Like as I said, um, taking something that's important and exploring it is like very crucial, you know? Okay. So let us continue watching the loner box thing. But yeah, thank you for reminding me, Karasu, to thank BE for contributing to this very important topic and for um, leading me on this trail. What I absolutely do not accept are the following accusations. One, that I was overly cruel to a scared trans person who was only asking for my empathy. Two, that I tried to bait her into breaking TOS so that she would lose her Twitch channel. And three, that I expressed some sussy baka opinions about the Holocaust. I mean, so far my opinion is yes on all three of those accusations, but maybe you will defend yourself. I don't know. Well, let's see. We will see what happens. Here are my issues with the first claim. Okay. In case some of you don't know, Polly People is, at least occasionally, a debate streamer. 
Okay. She has appeared on extremely combative debate panels with Christian conservatives, as well as the likes of Alex Stein and Sean Last. That is irrelevant. That is irrelevant. It's, uh, it's very different being a debate streamer um, and being a combative debate streamer is very different for being afraid for your life about a genocide. So poly people being a debater, even, a, even an aggressive debater, is irrelevant to the accusation. So, talking about her being an aggressive debater is actually irrelevant when refuting the accusation, okay? Pregnant. Polly, is it possible for a man to get pregnant? Yes. How? Is it with his penis will have a baby? A baby will come out of his pee hole? Trans dudes can get pregnant. Trans dudes are dudes, my guy. I know you can't, you know, you don't like that, that reality, but it is reality because we are who... We, are you your brain or are you your dick, right? You think... Does your dick talk to you? I mean, maybe it does, but I get my Mine idea does. of who I am and... <laughs> okay, well then, well then that's because you're kind of a freak, but like I... Like, this is not an argument. This is just... Mm, distracting from the issue, to be honest. It doesn't matter how aggressive a debater poly people is, because it has nothing to do with the accusation. I, know I am a freaky freak. My brain freak. tells me so. Yeah, I can see that. You know, I can, you know, you got that vibe to you. Uh, but you know I'm a me, on the, me on the other hand, my brain tells me who I am. And so... Uh, do you still have it? Do you still have, male, do you still have a male penis? Ask your mom. So I just... Yeah, basically, Brina. My client is an MMA champion and so could never have f fair, feared for their life. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's irrelevant if she's an aggressive debater. I wanted to illustrate. Um, I could have probably got like 50 million more clips of this, but. Like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Okay with very combative panels with people who are very, uh, <laughs> let's say, out there. It doesn't matter. Transform, like, Alec, we all don't know who Alex Stein is. I think this shapeshifter person is like a very famous... Um, like this is, this is the only different thing. Like being afraid for your life and discussing your fear with someone. Like on... Discussing your fear about a genocide is different from debating things during a panel. It's like totally different. Like... I'm not sure what this is supposed to prove. Right-wing detransitioner. Sean Last is like, he's like the final boss of um, internet uh, race realism and great replacement stuff. So you know, probably not the most, uh, probably not the most friendly to trans people either. Anyway. When she came into my chat, I was already in the middle of a heated exchange with my community. Her input was not to ask for an empathetic discussion, but to argue the specific case that there is an ongoing genocide in the United States. So this is strange because that is not what she said during the discussion proper, right? And also having a heated debate with your own chat is uh, pretty strange and on you. We've seen poly people be com combative like five days in a row about Sunday but she was not like that at all with Loner Box. This is partly why the Sunday stuff is so weird, right? Throughout this debate, she was not ambiguous about what she was there for. She made it clear that what she wanted from the mm -hmm. conversation was for me to at least call it a genocide. But I guess if it's a genocide, that action is insufficient then, is it? What, what, what should I do? What, what more should I do? Uh, you should at least be willing to call it a genocide. That's at least. If I don't call it a genocide, what? I'm insufficient. Well, you're you you are you are you are not accepting uh, uh, the truth of what's going. But going on. Sorry. Um, streamable is really annoying for not moving the clip properly. But okay. She even went so far as to say that my disagreement over the term genocide was an indication that I don't recognize the threat. Yeah. So pay attention to. The threat that she's talking about as well. The problem, but you're saying the problem with me is that I'm not calling it a genocide. Then it goes both ways. 
if the only bar I'm not crossing is calling it a genocide, we're just talking like what? Well, I don't know. I'm just not using to your level of like you, to your fair. tone or what? To be fair, I don't know much about your position on trans people, right? Okay. Right. When I saw your last video, you know, and I had critiques about it, but 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 uh, um, you know, I I I didn't come away with the feeling like you didn't recognize the threat that exists to trans people until until well i guess this very moment and now it you know like your your sort of over reliance on um i'm not so sure like the need for people to start dying before you're willing to call something a gen or visibly dying in a way that you would recognize as opposed to just dying invisibly that's going on right now a way that's going on right now I can tell you very, I can tell you very clearly though. Or an intended genocide. Yeah, I was thinking of the wrong clip, but yeah, like, it's like evidence that I don't recognize the threat. To address what Karasu has said quickly, like, um, the point is that we can, the point, the, the important point is that we can take a response to us that is pretty aggressive and even bigoted and even like very toxic and we can take elements from it that are actually true and we can turn that into something positive and we can move the whole thing in a more constructive direction because it does not take much effort to mm, respond with insults, to continue the cycle of insulting one another. What I would rather do is to take the things of value and to sort of move the important conversations forward, if that makes sense. You know? After I had made my positions on anti-trans legislation clear, she once again said I should at least call out what was happening, and followed up to say that the core transphobe wanted to eliminate trans people just like the Nazis did. So yeah, you're kind of getting the true. impression here is that the debate is about her trying to convince me to use certain language and use the same descriptions that she is, okay? So uh, real I don't think it's about using a certain language you know yeah but the anti-trans rhetoric does not only exist in streams and panels exactly exactly but in every aspect of us parliamentary groups like i think it's more about the urgency with which you address issues like laws being pushed like karasu said here like prevention that's the name of the game prevention if you know it's a genocide even if it's not in the late stages you know what your goal is it's not really about the language if i'm to put it into words it is about identifying what your goals are and your goals are prevention you know to push against the thing that is going on right now. You know? In fact, way easier to stand strong in online. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But I think we can combine the two. I think you can combine the online with offline. Still, trans people don't talk about these ways in the ways that, like, you know, uh, Vosh, for example, does, or the people that talk about, you know, self defense with fucking arms. You that's know what crazy. I mean? Like, that is not going to help us. Uh, it, the thing that will help us is if you at least call out what is happening, right? Instead of like, uh, you, you know, you know, saying, well, it's not quite as bad as you think. Like, just because there's some libs that like maybe fall prey to the idea that, uh, um, you know, there's there's like an overtreatment of gender dysphoria, right? Mm. Uh, doesn't mean that the core transphobe wants to. Uh, do nothing short of eliminate trans people, however that happens. Just like the fucking Nazis did. Right. They didn't necessarily need to cart every person off. Uh, they were happy with emigration, they, which will happen. Uh, 
people will at least move states, right? Because only yeah. certain states right now are genocidal. Uh, some states are not. So, you know, forcing it is important as well. Yeah, force, uh, making people's lives miserable such that they kill themselves. Uh, that's that's all in the playbook. The 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 core intent of these these uh, laws is to kill or eliminate by by whatever means necessary yeah. trans people. Exactly. There's, uh, if you don't notice that there, that's a. Uh, they said this in chat as well. That's like a that's a Jewish trans person getting very irritated by the Holocaust comparisons. But yeah, that, if that's what we mean by at least call out what's happening, and that what's happening is that the core trans world is just like the Nazis and the um, the core. But I'm a Jewish trans person, and I'm not annoyed with the Holocaust comparisons. Okay, we can play that game many many ways. In fact, the Auschwitz survivor whose speech I have uploaded on my channel is not annoyed by such comparisons either. So this little, this little jab that you inserted in your little manifesto video is not exactly very substantial, you know, at the end of the day. Or intent of the policies is to kill, try, like, yeah, I mean, if I don't, yeah, um, like, just for, we'll get to it later, but like, the Nazis in the 1920s, openly very loudly said that they wanted to remove every jew from europe like hitler in mein kampf said that if like at least if like 10 or 15000 jews died in the first world war um it would have been worth it it would have been worth the loss like so uh, it's a little yeah oh sorry that's great but in poland the minister of education openly said that we should cut the crap about human rights and that LGBT people, people, LGBT people are not equal to quote unquote normal people. So you have explicit rhetoric of this kind among the far right already. So let's not pretend that that's not the case. Like, should I go hunting for quotes of people in the US, of politicians saying that they want to eliminate? Trans people. When she asserted that Republican legislators were trying to get trans people killed, I asked her if she had any examples. She seemed outraged that I asked the question at all. You're not going to be uh, frozen in fear. President Sunday and Demon Mama have provided many examples, so. Fear if you really kind of like use the the you know, in my judgment, would be the most correct words to describe what's going on in a way that people will hear and be like, oh, maybe I Isn't Florida like a prime example of this? When um, those, when the, like the, during the hearing, some person said, your blood will be on your hands, and the response was, that's okay? Like... I should look into this, because, because uh, I'm not wrong in the way I describe it. I think that that uh, that 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 proves out when you when I you know it's not we're we're not just arguing about a word it seems yes it seems exactly like we are arguing about what these anti-trans laws are really about and what they are intended to do it seems like you're unwilling to accept that uh, uh, the laws are being passed because they don't they are dehumanizing us and demonizing us in a way that you <laughs> that is necessary and sufficient create genocidal intent in a population mm -hmm. so you're saying it's not over a word but it is though we agree on what people should do to stop it we agree on how bad it is we agree well you don't really agree exactly what people should do to stop and it where it's do you? yeah like it is just the word you don't think they're trying to kill trans people you, no, I don't think you they're... Told me wait, 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 wait. wait. Can yeah. you, okay, can you tell me which legislator is trying to kill trans people? Are there any specific ones? Any out, any like Wait definite? a second. Are you telling me that the only way I can prove to you that there's a genocide is that if I find a find a legislator, hook them up to a lie detector, and the legislature says, oh, I don't want to kill trans people, and it beeps red, and then you'd be like, oh, because you found one, one legislator, and you proved beyond a reasonable doubt that person has, has 
genocidal intent. Will you then agree that's to genocide? True. No, you wouldn't even do it then. You'd be like, well, that's just. So I don't know. I feel like I agree with that. that. I wasn't asking for it again. Even when I tried to give her leeway here, citing Hitler as an example of how intent can be inferred, she moved off the point and asked me about my views on the Holocaust instead. So after mm -hmm. I've asked her which Republicans are trying to get trans people killed, she's kind of outraged that I asked the question. I give her leeway and show how you can infer intent. And then she just tries to move. It's like, on, no, so. you wouldn't even do it then. You'd be like, well, that's just one. Well, I can say with, um, for example, there's. I, I don't know, there's, there's no a, way to wait, prove no, 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 to I can, you. Oh, wait, wait, I can give you a lot of leeway here. Um, there's the because there, there's like these kind of discussions that they'll ask like when it comes to. Uh, studying like in law like genocide they'll say um can we see genocidal intent in hitler before 1941 and some people will say yes because he's talking about removal by any means even though mm -hmm. there's no sign that he wants to kill people it's like well if you want to remove millions and millions mm. of people how else are you going to do that apart well, from killing them so that's that so i'm bringing up because she brought up like she was the first person to bring up nazis in this as well i'll have the links uh, after in the video description um yeah, because it's yeah, an apt example. Nazis like quite a lot. So I just thought I'll just give her that example to show like you can show intent without it being explicit. So I'm just trying to give her leeway here to the original question. But I think instead she tries to move on to like this different. It's just really weird. That's why they would no say. There, but that's how, no, that's how like, you would say. Like, like, that's how you would matter. say. That's how you would say that there was warnings of genocide. There was plenty of it. I say that I would say there was. I would say you couldn't say. What? 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 Of course. What did I just say? I, wait, wait, what did I just say? Okay, so uh, what I think you said is that Hitler had genocidal intent before. Wait, wait when would you say the. Ge, uh, when would you say the genocide of the Jews actually happened? Or, or started? No, no, wait, that's not the, the question is whether or not the intent, when the intent showed, right? So I'm trying to keep her on topic here, but and well, now I'm interested in your answer to my question. Well, the signs of the intent were there from like 1919 when Hitler wrote that thing about yeah, removal. Yeah, yeah, but when war. would you say? When would you say, according to you? Mm -hmm. We'll come back to the Holocaust stuff a bit later, right. but um, I think the impression here is just that like people were saying okay. I was being really cruel to this person, or I was being really bombastic or debate bro. Like I don't know, I felt like I was letting her go off quite a a bit and I was letting her kind of take me into all these different directions in the debate and like steering off topic. I mean, I, uh, it's okay. I mean, it's pretty rare that you will find a person that will just say, oh yeah, I feel that I was a mean, cruel person, you know? Quick and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. Um, I think there were maybe a couple of points where I got slightly irritated, but for the most part, like, I feel like the debate tactics are more coming from her end as well, but, um, more debate than mine, tactics. Anyway. Like, um, that's, this is, like, strange to me. All right. Near the end of the debate, she seemed to be arguing that any form of systemic discrimination which gets people killed should count as a genocide. If you were on the ground in... This clip's quite long, so I'm going to use it a few times, but we'll just move to here. <sighs> a genocide yeah. Wait. Of law Wait, here, sorry. wasn't done in the way that you would specifically call a genocide yes that's why that's why we have a definition of genocide yeah if they're dying if people die oh, because of if people Jesus die because Jesus. of systemic discrimination that's not genocide no it, how is that not genocide if people die because of systemic discrimination then it's not genocide Interesting take. People die as a result of systemic discrimination. Okay, can we? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can we just? Okay, can you just admit to me right? Can you just? Wait, I've got. I leave the clips quite big just for context, but yeah, that's. At that point, I'm just. Um, I don't know. I think you could probably argue that all systemic discrimination against minorities gets them killed in one way or another, but we'll get to that. What? It seemed mm. apparent that what Polly wanted was for me to accept her claims without providing any explanation for them. Mm. By asking her a couple of questions that she didn't have an answer to, I was doing it wrong. This is because Polly is not someone who is just afraid and looking for empathy from other streamers. She is someone who believes that people on the left should agree with her positions on trans issues uncritically. She is very open about this on her streams where she explicitly said, whilst reflecting on our debate, that you don't have to understand, you can just believe what we're telling you. We don't need empathy. Yeah, I mean, well, we don't, <laughs> we need people to fight for us and believe us. Like, you don't have to understand us. You, 
You don't have to like like the require the fucking requirement that somehow we have to make you understand. That's that's not that's not good. Like that's bad thinking. You know, if you're pro trans people, and uh, you know you have somebody like me, uh, you know, explain to you why there's a trans genocide. You have a, you get an un, unexpected backlash from your take. The correct thing is to just assume you don't. You know, if you don't understand. Uh, uh, it's, you know, that's not on us. That's on you. And you don't have to understand. You could just, you could just believe what we're telling you. She streamed about me for about five or six days after this debate. There was quite a lot to go through, but I don't want to drown in sources, right? You might think I'm being hyperbolic when I describe mm. her as a puritanical ideologue, but she wouldn't. Right, but right. they don't like me for some reason. I'm sort of the odd one out on the target list, right? Because I'm, I am. I like it's strange that it becomes instead of uh, like this is why what makes the problem that it's about prevention, but it becomes an argument about technicality. Yeah, exactly. This does not say exactly what you think it does. That's the problem, right? I'm like by all respects like a like a like a like a pure puritanical like you know uh, 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 um, uh, ideologue right you would say you would say that certainly right so like you know to have an attack on me from the left it's got to be personal as opposed to ideological right I think Stardust's response to that to that is quite funny. right so like you know to have an attack on me from, right you would say you would say that certainly right so like you know, to have an attack on me from the left. <laughs> okay. Um, by the way, if you're a, if you want to be like a puritanical ideologue, I think that's fine. That's that's cool. You know, I like having. It's good to have variety in the Twitch space. We're we're like a you know. That's where we. This is where you get like the more weird political commentary. That's cool. So basically, it's just a game to you. It's all cool, right? This is like a fun game of Twitch. The problem is, is that being like that but then people trying to frame you as something completely different to that is just weird but you'll notice that um a lot of these complaints that were made about my debate with polly didn't actually come so basically upper right corner is this chat our chat left corner is loner boxes chat the one behind me is loner boxes chat You know, basically. Okay, one moment. I have to accept the phone from my mom. I will tell you how it went. I will be right back. Okay. Yeah, she's doing pretty okay right now. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, as I've said, like pretty... Mm, like this is like a game to him, I guess. I'm from Polly. We'll get to that though. Yeah, we'll get she to that. She believes that any pushback on her claims about genocide is a form of tone policing. I mean, in this case, it is. One of the things people are saying uh, is that people like me who say there's a trans genocide out there uh, should not do that um, because it's not just about whether or not there's a genocide. They'll say, like, this is about a word, right? Are you using the word properly? And, you know, where I come from, 
we have a we have a we have a saying for that. It's it's tone police. <laughs> so like the debate seems to be is it's not inaccurate. Trans people and people aren't picking up that I'm trying to like say, look, you shouldn't have panels on this because it's essentially a question of should we tone police trans people? Should we tone police? Yeah. So we shouldn't have panels on this, although she's happy to have debates about it. Um, so. I think I, in the debate, there's a spot where I even asked if the whole point of it was just for rhetorical flourish. Um, she said no, though. She said it was descriptively. Also, true. I don't really know how that would count as tone pleasing. I've also, just... mind you, that very conveniently. Very conveniently, Loner Box also omits the part when Dylan Burns agrees that there should not be panels made on this topic, okay? Keep in mind that while Dylan Burns did not exactly agree about genocide as the phrase being used, Dylan Burns did agree on a lot of things. And he said that he would not try to tell um, trans people how to describe it, okay? So this is like there a lot of from Dylan Burns himself is being omitted in this conversation. Yeah, the way he talks about the politics space shows that he sees he's he sees it as a game. It's all gay fab baby, except it's sexual trans people's lives. Does he have no comprehension of what genocide actually is? I think we covered it earlier, but I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. We have covered a bit of it. Like, pretty sure tone policing is when you like have a go at like a black woman for being aggressive or like a or uppity or something like that. Like it's more yeah, it's about tone, not about a disagreement on an issue. But yeah. I can of be course, arguing that someone is using a term incorrectly is not anywhere near the same as tone policing, especially when you are the one implying that others shouldn't be publicly voicing those disagreements. In her own words, real allies don't quibble with the definition. This is a tweet. Um, real allies don't quibble with the definition. All right. Okay. Um, if this is the case, I am led to wonder, why would she come on my stream to debate the topic of genocide if the only correct response I can give is to agree without challenging her? Of course, Polly is not the representative of all trans people, nor is... Of course, the real question is, why are you so invested in challenging it? Like we could turn the question around on its head and ask why are you so invested in challenging this? Like, that's the interesting question, isn't it? What do you, what is there to be gained by challenging the notion? I can, of course how that would count as tone pleasing i'm pretty sure tone pleasing is when you like have a go at like a black woman for being i think there's gonna like a, i think it's good we're gonna see it like again like it's more, yeah it's about tone not about a disagreement on an issue but. we're gonna see it again i think of course we... arguing that someone is using a term incorrectly is not anywhere near the same as tone pleasing especially when you are the one implying that others shouldn't be publicly voicing those disagreements in her own words real allies don't quibble oh with i think it will be like here there you go Using the word genocide to describe what is going on with trans people has had an unexpected benefit. People who are with trans people stand out. The real allies don't quibble with the definition. Fake allies tell me I'm fear-mongering, insane, or even dangerous. Yeah, it is being obstructed. Because it's about the goals. It's about having your goals in mind. You know? Um, real allies don't quibble with the definition. All right. Okay. Um, if this is the case, I am led to wonder, why would she come on my stream to debate the topic of genocide if... Yeah, I would agree, Karasu. It is worse than tone policing. Yeah. The only correct response I can give 
is to agree without challenging her. Like, once again, why are you so invested in challenging her? Of course, Polly is not the representative of all trans people, nor is the group of trans people she surrounds herself with online. LB is effectively victim-blaming and pushes the argument that calling it a genocide is calling for a Yeah, exactly. Which is very strange to say. This makes it especially inconvenient for her when she faces disagreement from other trans people. When Vivian Wolf challenged the idea that I pulled out of a conversation with President Sunday... So also does contradict himself, saying, one, on one hand, it's fine to say such, other hand, he argues it is not. Agreed, Karasri. That's exactly where he got to very aggressive in this first debate, yeah. Because I was afraid, Polly almost sparked an argument with this over, Vi over this with Viv, before Viv had even watched the debate. Well done, Dolorbo. Read it. Um, pretty sure it's not because he was afraid. Uh, Lorner Box is not as well versed on genocide as he tries to appear. He may have felt unprepared. Uh, I mean, it's true. It's not my experience. He's a non dishonest person. Uh, I haven't seen the discussion. So she says she hasn't seen the discussion. Polly says, yo, are you saying I'm wrong here? I'm not. Wait a second. Lorner Box is not as well versed. Okay. It's not been my experience that Lorner Box is typically a non intellectual dishonest person. But my read could be off, and I haven't seen this discussion with you either, so whatever. I'm not sure I like the tone of whatever, but... Dylan Burns also n did not push this argument by calling transgenocide uh, will push or call for violence against the conservatives. Like, I think if you're gonna talk about being uh, honest, I think Dylan Burns was a lot more honest when discussing this, you know? He, he said that he was worried about using a certain language, but I could tell that um, to Dylan Burns this isn't just a game of definitions. I could tell that when it comes to Dylan Burns, his goal, at least, is still to prevent bad things from happening, if that makes sense, you know? So I would say, I would say that Dylan Burns is a lot better on this whole topic than Loner Box, if that makes sense. Does it make sense? You know? I think Dylan Burns was a lot better on this whole topic. I mean... I think Viv went on a stream later and t and spoke about how um, she almost got like into a fight with Polly over this like thing here. But even though I think Viv actually came out against me after this anyway, so yeah, just yeah, he's right. Toast. One more example: Lexi Bat is another trans streamer who mm -hmm. argues against using the word, but only for tactical reasons. As he was trying to explain his position whilst reviewing our debate, Polly was typing in Lexibat's chat saying, call it what it is, and Jesus Christ, just say genocide. Okay. This clip's a little bit long, but... Murder or suicide, mass suicide, caused by policy. That's what a democide is. I would use that instead, personally. There are other definitions, Polly, yes. So you can see, oh, the chat here is really difficult to see, but uh, okay. on the side here... Oh, I can just do this, sorry. In the side here, she's saying, um, this is when she came in, call it what it is, uh, Jesus Christ, just say genocide, just as Lexi Bat's explaining his position. Like. Yes. But the problem is, most people don't know the other definitions. Your average Joe on the street doesn't know the other definitions. Like, at all. Like... I the problem of this example is that it does not exactly bolster Loner Box's case, you know? This example does not bolster Loner Box's case at all. You know, if, uh, if this Lexi person is just does not use the word for tactical reasons. Like, is Loner Box admitting right now that he's just not using it for tactical reasons? I don't... I'm also trans, Polly. I am also terrified by all of this, right? I am also at risk. But at the end of the day, it's a tactics debate. That's what we're having, right? We're having a tactics argument. Do we use an emotive word that causes people who don't know any better to book, or 
do we use a term that is at least technically more accurate, even if it is by all intents and purposes, as I said, a genocide, right? Do we make people balk or do we say, this is a thing, this is what it means, this is why this is that? So, in other words, in other words, of all terms in the lexicon, genocide is the true word uh, for what is happening. The controversy the word elicits reveals its potential. Some warn us against using the term so as not to debase its currency. This is a misunderstanding of what genocide means. I have to go back to this quote time and time again because it seems that it's really applicable, you know? This is what's happening. And is leading to genocide. That is the biggest pile of horse shit I've ever heard in my life, 255. My daughter was using non-binary pronouns for me when she was four. Also, they, them is not a neo pronoun. Fuck off. Yeah, like, the, at the end of the day, this is like a, a tactics conversation more than it is a terminology one. Yeah, especially since the survivors of the Holocaust warn us against it repeating. Because you're right. It is. But legally, like, on the world court. I think this is what Polly said to set Alex off. Okay, this is nuts. I don't get your take. Because it's here, broken yeah. and the definition is nonsense. It doesn't work. And if anyone is going to fucking refer to it as a genocide, if anyone does know the definition of genocide, it'll be the UN definition they know. That's because you're not cunting listening, Polly, for fuck's sake. You're hearing the shit you want to hear or the shit you think I'm saying, and you're not listening to what I'm actually cunting saying. Try open your fucking ears. Jesus, my seven-year-old can listen better than this. My take is, yeah, amongst us, it's a fucking genocide. But when you are talking to people who don't fucking know any better you yeah that's right that's right Carasso. exactly exactly Emmanuel and Dylan Burns is a good example you have a disagreement in a meaningful way yeah because Dylan Burns strikes me more as a person that actually cares you know it's not a game to Dylan Burns. At least that is my perception. Like, my perception might be a bit skewed because I think he did amazing work by going to Ukraine and doing a lot of things. So I will admit that I will give Dylan Burns a lot more um, charitability, you know? Do you know what I mean? I am willing to be very charitable towards Dylan Burns. You cannot use the word genocide because they have been taught to be fucking balking at us. They have been taught to not pay attention and to tune that shit out. They have been taught that that word means something very different than what it actually fucking means because the legal definition by the UN is bollocks and useless. Yeah, Alexi about some help right now, too. Loner Box here is arguing from a stance of exclusively the UN definition. You are using prescriptive language. He was using descriptive language. It's not fucking hard to understand. No, because you don't get to come into my chat and fucking talk to me like that. You just don't get to. You can ask questions and you can listen and you can actually pay attention to what I'm fucking saying. You cannot come in here and put fucking words in my mouth. And just purposefully hang on to your damn ignorance because you're too damn prideful to let it go and listen to somebody else. If you want to be that prideful, that's up to you. It's not my cunting problem. But at the end of the day, you are not the only trans person in existence and you are not the only person scared and you are not the only person at risk. And you are not the only person who has ideas of tactics and how to deal with things. This is why the fucking left eats itself. Because people like you are incapable of listening to other content. Hey, tactics. Like, also, 
Uh, saying that what loner box is saying is purely descriptive is, I would argue, not the case, but, you know. And I'm not sure getting into this di tactics discussion is useful either. As I, have as I have read this quote over and over again, that some say that using the word genocide debases its currency. Isn't the UN definition is using pres uh, prescriptive language? This person is rude and wrong. Exactly, Pipa. People. Murder. I like that guy. He's cool. All right. Ooh. The second claim. TOS baiting, brackets, Fed posting. Mm -hmm. During this debate, I allegedly tried to manipulate Polly into saying something that would break the Twitch terms of service. This allegation would suggest that my intention during this debate was to get this person, who I'd never met before, to lose her channel. Male pronouns, yeah. I find this accusation especially strange because it certainly doesn't speak to any pattern of behavior on my part. My views on deplatforming are generally more permissive than those of most leftists I associate with, okay. and I don't typically celebrate when other people get banned. If I was trying to get Polly banned, it would be very out of character for me, and I would imagine the burden of proof for such an allegation would be fairly high. All right. Here are the two instances that are referred to. I'll just read all of this and then we'll watch it. In the first, I asked the question, if you think it's a genocide, why aren't you trying to get legislators killed? The purpose of me asking this question was to illustrate the difference between discrimination and genocide. This is ridiculous because it would be like I asking Einstein before he... You could ask that same question, Einstein, before he fled Germany, you know? And it would be ridiculous. It's a ridiculous question to ask. We justify the acts of the Jewish partisans and Rohingya rebels because the regimes they were and are fighting are genocidal. They're in a position where besides fleeing, that is their only recourse. It's a descriptively different problem with different prescriptive solutions. So. Oh, God. A ridiculous know. question to ask. I think I have it somewhere. Hang on. Huge L owner box. I think I got a backup though. Oh, I see Sister Rose. Uh, I think some of these things have been self-deleting, but alas. Here we go. Think legislators do this because they want to kill the trans people. Then the way you respond to that is, well, what would you do? What would you do if the Nazis took power? You wouldn't oppose like Jewish militias trying to assassinate Nazi politicians, right? So... I don't know, like, if you're calling it a genocide, then why are you not trying to get legislators killed? This is like a dishonest question well, to ask, I'm in not, my opinion. You know, I would never talk about that. Uh, so, when someone answers that question, that's a good question. I, would never I don't talk know. About that, it kind of sounds I don't know. like, again, I could have been wrong. Um, it kind of sounds like they're saying, yes, that's just my first reading of it. And. My response to it was just to, in, again, just engage with it, because obviously I think that's a really stupid thing to advocate for. Um, but, yeah. Like, she could just reject the premise if she doesn't like it, but we'll see. You wouldn't you know, talk about that, it, but yeah. you... Okay. Well, 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 I wouldn't do any... I would personally not do anything like that. Like yeah, that's just, If I was feeling mean here, if I was talking to, like, a right-winger, I would probably keep asking the question, but... I'm just accepting her answer and just assuming it means what I think it means and then going off with it. So you can say other people to right. fuck up their own lives that's, and go to jail and just like ruin everything just because and actually probably fuck the movement even more. Like you could literally ask Einstein the same questions when he was preparing to flee Germany, you know? That's exactly how it could be done. But that's the logical conclusion, right? If someone is has genocidal intent, and is trying to action it gradually, they are fair uh, game, right? So I think you are, you are, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're now, you're being unfair. Uh, you're, you're painting me as somebody who is now trying, God, you're doing the thing. You're saying now I'm the murderer trying to get, because I am calling something what it is. You're now 
saying that I'm trying to get people killed in the name of trans people. That's fucking ridiculous, my guy. I am just trying to get you to to use a word that accepts the 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 very risk uh, to people like me that is out there right now. There right. Is Again, I'm trying to get you to use a word, but legislation being being proposed. There is legislation being passed. There are children being taken away from their parents in the state of Texas because they are they are treating their kids for who they are and you you're saying if i call it a genocide i am therefore uh required to what now go out and kill people uh that are trying to kill me like like i don't understand oh my god if that's your standard then i guess uh there will never be a genocide yeah, because you exactly. know i'm always going to be too afraid uh to fight back against you know the 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 powers that be that are trying to get me yeah. i would yes what if somebody like me would rather run and hide, uh, you know, in in a fucking attic somewhere? Does that make it not a genocide because other people are going to fight for me instead? So where do we? So I. So wait. So I, I'm going to assume you're saying then. So you don't want to be pigeonholed into the person. Who like I'm not a bit. Like I'm not a big fan of this argument because it could be made about people uh, who were fleeing Germany in the thirties, and it's not. It's not helpful, you know? It's not a very good argument to make. Who wants to kill legislators? I'm just, you know, I asked you a question. No. You're saying no. no okay, I, okay. You, you asked me a question. You asked me a question. That's fine. You said no, okay. Personally, um, so, I mean, if you think that's me trying to get someone banned. Um, I sort of, I mean, that's what it looks like. Okay. I don't know if um, you're trying, but. So that's the first time. The second time I bring it up, is to argue about the effect her rhetoric might have on her audience instead. So I've, I've, I've accepted her answer at this point. I've accepted that she mm -hmm. doesn't want to advocate for anything herself, um, even though the initial answer was a bit odd, but whatever. I'll take people at their word. Um, this is the second time. And the problem is, the reason I have a problem with the word genocide again is because mm -hmm. when you use that language and you look at the way historically genocides have been responded to and the way that genocides are handled, and the best way to handle genocides is that you've got people in your audiences who are very like vulnerable and are very like scared enough are very scared as it is and when you say these people want to kill you then you are kind of quietly saying if someone wants to kill you um the things that you should do in self-defense are things that you're it's not wrong. willing to say they should it's do wrong. so she's already started saying run here again that's an opportunity for her to say no i'm not up for violence i'm just i would rather run so you can just okay i'm gonna give my own reading okay um my own reading is if you're saying there's a genocide going it doesn't need to be uh, neither it can be neither it can be neither run or nor do violence it can be let's prevent it by you know let's prevent this we must stop this from going any further and that does not mean violence okay it does not but it means taking one taking the topic very seriously and aggressively um, advocating for laws for blocking the laws that are being pushed right now combating the rhetoric that is being spread right now very aggressively okay do you know now, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense, what I'm saying right now? Like, does that make sense? Am I making sense? It's about prevention. Prevention is the goal. And prevention is not a synonym for violence. Just reject what I'm saying. Instead, uh, she says this. No, well, okay, well, one, I don't want to violate terms of service, right? People, people who want to defend themselves. Well, there themselves, you go, though. You just say you don't want to violate terms of service, though, so we know what you are okay with, right? No, 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 no. I do not want to violate, no, no. Uh, look, look, please do not push me to this direction. I told you my personal story. I think I talk to trans people all the time. Many of us are figuring out where the fuck we're going to run to. If she disagreed with my framing, all she needed to do was reject my premise. Instead, she said, I don't want to violate terms of service. 
When I responded by saying, we know what you are okay with, I deliberately spoke indirectly, precisely. So basically, this is just debate strategy, you know? Catching people on mistakes. I think he's in the DGG orbit. There is just so much gravity that pulls anyone who doesn't have convictions or cannot ever handle, ever handle being wrong. I, I guess. ...to avoid TOS yeah. violations. If she had said yes to this question, she, she would have been able to voice that opinion and it wouldn't have broken TOS. When she answered with no and asked me not to push her in that direction, I accepted her answer and we moved on. The question of political violence never came up again. Th those two clips are me apparently for no, for some unspecified reason, just randomly trying to get a trans streamer banned. Those two questions. Now, if you talk about genocide, I think genocide typically, at least in every historical example I can think of, every genocide I can think of in history, the people who were victims had every moral right to basically use whatever means they could to um, stop the perpetrators. I don't That's great. So um, that technically, like, the, no, that technically, that just means that you would have asked Einstein in 1930s, why aren't you for attacking the government? This is what you have that this is what you would have asked, you know? This is what sort of exposes your argument as not being very reasonable. I don't think there's any example of a genocide where you would say that's not okay. So I think you kind of have like I think it's perfectly fair to bring up that question. Um if you want to advocate for, I don't think it is. for political violence, you know, you can use euphemisms or you can uh, do indirect in indirect ways the same like I tried to do here just to at least see if she had a position worth engaging with. But again, like if I if I say it's you're implying like violent action I don't against think the it's legislators okay. and she says, I don't want to break TOS. Like, to me, that sounds like a yes. But again, yeah, she said, that's no, right. Don't Zara, push Zara, Zara, I, just left her, I think so I as well. To, Go on to the next topic. Like, I believe so, so as well. I don't know if you think if like if, if you think that's me trying to get someone banned. Um, I think it's you it, trying to win a debate. It would be it would be worth asking here if the only point in me bringing up political violence was for TOS bait. Why did I also mention it before the call? Cultural. I don't know. I don't know what it would look like for trans people. I think. I think. No, actually, I do. I think what you could call a cultural genocide of trans people, and I think this is the only, and I'm saying like a less than 1% chance, but the only chance I think of that happening is uh, like states start to sanction some kind of like forced conversion therapy for trans kids. Like they'll say that there's a big, there's a, there's a crisis of like a mental health crisis of trans kids. And Not wanting to, well, let's see. So yeah, yeah. Uh... Let me see, Clara, so what's this? Uh? So yeah, he's arguing poly inact inciting vi inciting vi inciting violence. LB is here exactly victim blaming, yeah. Not wanting to break TOS also includes discussions of things that you disagree with, and he's trying to get an easy win when he chooses a terrible position. Yeah, exactly. It's about winning a debate, it's not moving, it's not about discussing the goals in a meaningful way. This argument that he wouldn't bring it up if he thought it was problem also shows his bias. Smaller trans creators don't get the same grace extended to them when it comes to getting reported for TOS. Yeah, exactly. Like, I will say, like this is not about discussing what to do and about the goals. It's just about winning a debate. We need to save them by uh, finding trans kids and bringing them to conversion therapy camps so that they can like, uh, they can you know purge their fucking demons or get rid of the social contagion or whatever. I think that would be, I'd be like, fuck, you know? That would be, yeah, that would be a cultural genocide, yeah. Also banning social, banning any form of social transition is for the trans youth is a form of uh, forest conversion therapy. Like, I would make that case. 
Betting, any form of transition, social or medical, is a form of forced conversion therapy. And if people wanted to take out, like we're taking up arms to standing in front of the, like the front doors of trans kids to protect them from that behavior, I'd be like, yeah, of course I wouldn't oppose that. Yeah, they would, it's like the only chance they've got, right? Um, I know some people are thinking about Texas. Don't worry, we'll talk about Texas. Okay. Exactly, um, Birina, exactly. Why did I willingly stake my own positions on political violence, which were very close to being TOS violations? I think this is probably, of this entire debate, the closest anyone came to breaking TOS was actually me, but okay. So Ooh, okay. when it comes to domestically, the difference is, is that I, like, I, I feel like I'm more radical than you now. I think if there's a genocide happening, hold on, hold on. you should fucking, like, video game okay. the people who are doing the genocide. Hold on, hold on. So, so yeah. President Sunday, among others, seemed convinced that my only... This is a childish take, by the way. No, if a genocide is happening, you should just video game the people. No, you should prevent it. The only intention with these questions was to get Polly to lose her channel. What's interesting to me is that this complaint, as far as I know, was never made to me by Polly herself. But we'll return to that later. Okay, what does it matter? This is Doe. She didn't commit the violation. She rejected it multiple times. She said, no, I don't want to fight anyone. I want to run away. And he pressed her repeatedly. It was a disingenuous TOS bait. Yeah. If you think, if you're starting to think this might be a little bit... Um, misrepresentative of the clips we just watched um there might be a common theme there okay. it's not though i'm gonna say this is i don't think it is representation of what we just watched i mean uh, you would say that yeah, you're yeah. like the this is what we commonly say say this is what we commonly in the law why we are being legal this is what we call conflict of interest okay you're not really in the position to judge whether or not if it's like, you know, of course there's gonna be, you're, of course you're gonna say that you were perfectly clear that you were not, um, like, of course you're not gonna incriminate yourself. There's a conflict of interest there. You're not the best judge of this. So don't even, okay? Might as well read this whole thread. Uh, Loner Box is now using a sound by it is actually accurate descriptions of the effect of the convo, yeah. You know? Right of me saying, you laughed in the face of your last interlocutor on this issue in reference to his conversation with Polly, where he tried to bait her into a TOS violation and ridiculed her as a notification sound on stream. This is actually so dumb. If your belief is a TOS violation, why is that anyone's fault but yours or the platform? If I had an argument with someone who told me words don't mean anything and then they got banned because they said the N-word with a hard R, not my fault, theirs. Oh, I had, sorry. No one's belief for TOS violations. That's not what people are upset about. Please True. refrain from engaging until you've <laughs> caught up with, at minimum, the initial debate that sparked this all. Wow. Doe, I've watched the debate. I agree with Lona's position. I know Polly didn't violate TOS. She answered the line of questions where they were going and very strongly said she wasn't calling for violence. Villainizing a clear ally for asking reasonable questions for a serious topic is cruel. And this is Sunday. Mm -hmm. Don't play dumb. He framed his questions to get her to assume his premise that the term implied retaliatory violence as a given, so she I mean, yeah. TOS even by answering. That she had the wherewithal to avoid this isn't a defense of what Lonerbox was transparently trying to do. She's a fucking adult engaging a debate. If you want to cry that Lonerbox didn't go easy on her, say that with your chest. You and everyone alongside you are fucking disgusting for soaking these flames. There's plenty of real transphobia in the world, you bored fucking losers. Um, like, cherries, like... Is Cherry part of the DGG sphere? Because it does seem like it, the whole... She's an adult engaging in a debate. The sacred ground of the debate. It is irrelevant. It is irrelevant if Lunar Boy Sargate cons uh, consciously to TOS bait or justify or just used intuitively such techniques. He does know the other people can have opinions on a publicly broadcasted debate on topics that affect many people, right? Like, this is like, like, this is so Steven Universe, the whole, 
She's an adult engaging in debate. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen and stuff like that. Ridiculous. Okay. This is just silly. This is just silly talk. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, okay. If you cannot take the heat, get out of I the imagine kitchen. People might have been a little primed to assume Sheesh. that the reason for asking this question is to Fed Post because of this debate between Vosch and Rose Rest, where Rose asked the question if it were possible to kill Republican lawmakers with no consequences, would it then be justified? Mm. Um, if you could, if it were to be possible to get away with, um, yeah, killing Republican lawmakers with no consequences, uh, would it then be. Are you Rose wrist. Rose wrist is a whole other thing. Helping Stephen with his magnificent manifesto. Manifestos all around. I am really losing out on not writing my manifesto. Wait, are you actually fed posting at me right now? You're glowing in this convo. Wait, are you being fed these questions? So you'll notice there that Rose said no consequences. The question's a little bit different, but yeah. It's likely the well might be a little poisoned around this issue because we now know that this question was sent to Rose by Destiny. I've been uh, given permission well, to share well, this. Well, well, so. well. Um, oh dear. Oh, well, well, well. Steven, I knew that Steven Universe was at play here. You're welcome, Loner Box. You're in good company of people harassing people who don't suicide and people who are victim blaming are really progressing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My gosh, Steven, Steven, the sacred debate. Maybe chat can go off for a minute. This is Destiny, ask him this. If it did work out, if they were able to kill lawmakers with no consequences, would it be morally justified? Um, well, I'll ask. So. Wanna chat, babe? You can see there, that's when the, this mm -hmm. uh, line of messaging starts. Okay, that's really important. You can also see uh, Destiny sending the question or typing Ask him. There's no hiding it. This. Of course. Of course, all roads lead to the Steven Universe. Like, why am I not even surprised that all roads lead to the Steven Universe? For sooner or later, everything leads to Steven. History of lawmakers. If it did work out, if they were able to kill lawmakers facing at the very least with no consequences, would it be feel that morally justified? Violence. Question um, mark. You know, are are a legitimate component Ask of democracy. Let's hear it. Process. Make them answer our question. Our very excitable question. All right. Um, interestingly enough, See, this, this is, is all a follow up. This is all about just this is all fun and games to those people. Question. The first time Rose asked this, albeit with the no consequences part, Vosh had no problem Loud answering. Loud clap. And he also said he didn't feel like the question was TOS bait. Now this Loud question, clap. you'll notice, is a bit more similar to my one, right? Okay. So then if you believe that the Republicans have intent right now to, to, to bring about an LGBT genocide, uh, how can you morally object against people right now taking up arms and going out and killing Republican lawmakers? Uh, Republican lawmakers? That's okay, Karasu. I think it's best for us to focus on the important topics and on the positive um, things that we can do. So I think it's okay to not watch this. And I think it would be best to focus on the important topics and focus on um, working on the Romani people topic and working on the border crisis topic and on developing uh, things that we can translate into real life positive action, you know? I think it's more than okay if you don't feel like uh, watching this to... Uh, not take part like the most important thing for us is to when we watch something like this is to take as much useful information from it and to focus on our goals you know 
to have the goals in mind and to just like with the BE situation to instead of focusing on throwing back insults or um, you know shit turning it into a strange debate we should focus on making something positive out of it see you see you yeah I am going to make plans of my sculpture for robotic reasons. Yeah, sculpturing is great. We will talk about that as well later. Okay. Let us... I might need to break this into a few streams, maybe even, you know? Because... This is a long, like, this is a whole manifesto, like... People should get over themselves with their whole manifestos. People are so self-obsessed. Like, a whole manifesto that does not um, further anything. It's like all ego-driven. Imagine doing whole manifestos that are just big ego trips. This, just, this does not further anything. I can't imagine writing a 30-page document that I present to a live audience in which I cite the machinations of destiny against the evil Vosh as a salient example. The manifesto trend is pretty unproductive and super ego-driven. Yeah, it is. Like, it's like... I can imagine, like... I can... Um, that's not a bad idea. This short stream has been going for a while. You gotta pace yourself too, yeah. It's like, I can, uh, I, I would understand writing a manifesto on, okay, I'm now writing a manifesto on the, um, I don't know, like we've discussed today, I'm writing a manifesto on the situation of the Romani people in Europe and what should be done about it. Like, I can understand writing a whole manifesto about such topic with points, examples, with action steps, what can we done, with ideas for organizing, like a whole actual manifesto about that, that's 30 pages with, uh, that's instructive, constructive, and actually has some sort of a purpose, you know? But writing a 30 pages document that's basically an ego trip about using the word genocide feels a bit redundant to me. I mean, uh, I think all of the manifestos had at least one chapter dedicated to trans issues. I can tell you that. I can tell you that much. You know? So, yeah. I think we might... Uh, write down a code, a timestamp, where we are. Mm, I will write it down in my notebook. I think I've got a pen. Because I think we might take a break for now from the manifesto thing because it's like loner manifesto time. Stamp five twenty fifty two because this is getting a bit long, and I think we will continue the manifesto next time. And I think we will do take a break to play some video game for a bit, okay? I think we have earned it, I think we have done a lot of emotional labor. So browser off, I think, what do you think? Do you think we, I th do you think it's like, <laughs> Lucy, she drew that 37 page manifesto against manifestos. No, no, it's the stream is still on. We're just playing a video game for a bit. Like. We're still going to do it a bit.
There was a video blur by Ikea Manifesto. I think good that we have to include B on Lucy and DM too. So we will play a game a bit. I think we deserve a game. We deserve a game, right? Do do da do do da boo. Drink. Samong. Dance, dance. Dance, dance. Boom. Come on. Yeah. I think I'm ready to place myself back. I'll make myself a bit smaller. I'm ready to turn back the mirror motion. There we go. Come on! Uh, ooh. Finish done! Do do da do do da do sama. Come on. Come on. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh. Hmm. Blah blah blah. A lot of random encounters. Dance, dance. Taita. Be careful, Mr. Mughal. Kupa kupa! Come on! Dinosaur! Come on! Samo! White magic! Oh no! Ooh! Uh oh! Okay! That just happened. What the hell? Did you see that white hat just... <gasps> That's not fair. It's okay, we can explore the cave. That's horrible. That's horrible what just happened. Did you see? Would you like to comment? Destroy you. Hey, there's nothing here.
Bye bye. Boom. Dance, dance. Dance, dance. What the hell? Uh oh. Hold on. Let's see through. What the hell, immortal? You're quite a boss. It's like bosses. Uh -oh. Die! What the hell? I can't believe! What's going on? <gasps> okay, thank you. Come on! Na, 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 na. Drink. Level What is the new game? Ooh! Toinkos! Toinkointos! Toinkos! Cointos! Run away! Come on! Okay, let's go. I destroyed the enemy. Mr. Mugu! I destroy you. I destroy you! It's a... Come on. What? <gasps> this worked? Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Okay then. Oh, you must have been so scared. It's okay now. Don't worry. Come closer. Come on. Oh. It's all right. Come on. 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 Come 
What's going on? I think it was too far long. Uh, where are you going? Pa -pa 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 -pa? Save the giggler. Drinking. No drinking. Dance, dance. Oh. Desert is always so dangerous in this game. What the heck? Thank you. Thank you, Toast. What's going on here? Samo? Enemy. Oh no. What? Defeated. I make myself smaller. Nice. Cottage for sure. And I saved the game. Alright. Oh. 
Come on. Uh, It's locked. It's locked. Pa 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 pa. It's locked. Pa 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 pa. Copa. Mm. I think it's the mocha we had before. Copa pa 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 pa. Are you thanking us? Things done. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, papa, papa, papa. I think he's telling us we can keep whatever is in the chest. I we we. We have, thank you. It's empty. What's it doing? What's going on? Why are you so excited? Is something the matter? It's Grandpa. He's in the Mughal village. Mughals cannot communicate through telepathy. Even when they're far apart, they can keep in contact with their minds. The Mughal village is pretty far from here. I know, and the wind drake is too tired to fly. So that means I see. Thank you. He says he has just enough energy for one more flight. If you're certain, it's all right. What's going on? Forest, anyway. Ah, the nose. Grandpa. 
How did you find us? The Mughals told me you were here. Grandpa, we should hurry back to the castle. I take the wind drake back to his roots so he can rest, okay? Okay, doke! Thanks for holding down the fern while I was gone. This is an incorrect expression. King Aloof. Maha. Hello. Yeah. Am I not a hardcore streamer? Maybe, maybe after this cutscene? What's the situation back there? There's been no activity since the barrier went up. I see, and our troop? They've been almost entirely wiped out by its death monster hordes. Oh no. I'm sorry, Sare. All this time I thought you were just some crazy old man. You were never said anything about being a king. Must have slipped my mind. Oh, it sure is a surprise and a half. Good job, man. Get some rest. Yes, sire. Come on. Boots, what is it? You've still got that funny look on your face. It's you, a king. I can't get over it, that's all. You saying I'm not the epitome of kingliness? What? Bonk. Just kidding, but I guess I'd better mind my P's and Q's around you. King Aloof. Listen here, before you knew me as a king, you knew me as a friend. Just Galoof is fine. Understood, just Galoof. Don't push it, kid. Killing ball, bad jokes like that will get you punished. <laughs> Hero cocktail. Okay, it's time to take, uh, save the game and then we take a break. Pa -pa 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 -pa! Lady Kira can speak with the Mughal as if to a person. What a mysterious talent. Talent! This is my bed now. This is my bed now. The wind wreck is dying. What? What happened? He pushed himself too hard. He was wounded and I shouldn't have been flying, but he took me to find you anyway. He suffered hands himself to rescue us. Is there any way to for us to save him? We need dragon grass. Dragon grass? Will that heal his wounds? Yes, but I wouldn't know when such a thing even exists in this world. 
Back home, when drakes always nest near dragon grass. I expect these drakes are no different. If you go to where drakes roost, we ought to find dragon grass nearby. And that's the case then. No place. Our best bet is Drakenvale, the valley of the Windrakes, however no one is entered has ever returned. Guess that means we'll be the first who do. What? Drakenvale is north of the castle, it's just pay square, the world was down. But what about the monsters outside, there are so many of them. Don't worry, no monster is a match for the four of us. Right, together we'll be alright. And we'll bring back the dragon grass, never you fear. Okay, it's time for a break. Come on, come on, come on! Hee 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 Ah. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 package! Teleport! Come on! Castle Boy has learned a rich history. I know all of its secrets. Open the gates, but see, like, there's monsters are waiting right outside. Once we're clear, shut the doors and seal them tight. But why, how will we return? That King Aloof, how do we return to with the grass? How do I save the game? Dance, dance! Okay, it's time for a break. Thank you for coming to the stream. Love and solidarity to all of you. But now, it's time for me to press and stream. Come on. And stream. Yeah. 